Hello everyone and welcome to this free Shopify dropshipping course and in this video I'm going to be teaching you absolutely everything you need to know to go ahead and make money with dropshipping in 2023. It covers things such as building and designing a high converting dropshipping store, how to go ahead and find six and seven figure winning products, our strategies of generating consistent traffic so that we always have sales and lastly how you'd go ahead and outsource your operations and grow your team. Now it's literally taken me and my brother the beast of ecom weeks to go ahead and put this program together and collectively we've done pretty much eight figures with drop shipping since we begun so make sure you guys go ahead and get a notepad and pen and also take action on what we're about to teach you so without further ado let's dive right in so module one, and this is all about designing and creating a high converting store. We're going to be showing you the exact theme we use, the exact layout we use. It's also free and you don't have to go ahead and pay for any premium theme. So I hope you do enjoy this module. And if you have any questions, just drop them below. Hello everyone, Otis here and welcome to this lesson. And in this one, I just wanted to quickly show you how to go ahead and open a Shopify store. So you just want to come over to shopify.com and it will take you to the correct country that you're in. Come over and start your free trial so just click start free trial now it doesn't really matter um, too much you can just click i'm starting uh, and then click next you want an online store just go ahead and hit next um, do you want to sell your products through drop shipping uh, you can put yes as well now in terms of your store name uh, you can go ahead and just you know input for example we will just do one of the ones we did before so we'll just do like beyond junkie um, and then we'll go ahead and hit next as well now once you've done that where will your business be located you can just click united kingdom uh, and then you're going to have to obviously create a Shopify ID. So just go ahead and continue with email. Uh, then you want to obviously go ahead uh, and put in your email as well. And once we've done that, that is literally our store open now. So we are ready to go ahead and start designing it. They will send you a confirmation email. So do just go ahead and check your email address and just confirm your email. So that is it for this one. And I will catch you in the next one. Hello everyone, Ecom Wizard here and welcome to this video. And in this one, I'm just gonna be quickly showing you how we can go ahead and find names for our new Shopify store. Now there's three tools that we go ahead and use for this. They're all free uh, and very useful. The first one and probably the best one in my opinion is NameQL. This is basically going to give you ideas of names and also let you know whether the domain is available. Um, Namelix, again, this is going to give us some name ideas, but it won't tell us directly whether or not the domain is um, available straight away. Uh, and then Shopify's business name generator as well but that's probably my least favorite, but it does still give you some good ideas. So the first one is actually name QL. And what I usually do is just type in two random letters, right? Something like L A um, and just see what comes up. So firstly, we have something like uh, Umpola. I usually like my store names to be like six letters long and just a random word. It doesn't have to mean anything. The reason why it's random is because with concept stores, we don't want it to be a specific name. We want it to be able to apply to anything, right? So something like Xcooler, uh, I would probably name it something like that. Really, really simple. Uh, Unsula works uh, as well. Uh, Rodula, again, that works as well. You can try this with a bunch of di different letters as well. Uh, Irela last you know there's a bunch of different ones you can do you can do like su as well see what comes up uh thirdly again would be kind of another name which you could go ahead um and potentially call your call your store or your brand or something uh if i just keep going along we'll see if we can find anything else um subsol is another one as well right so you kind of get the ideas they can just be three random letters or so um, three, I mean, sorry, six letters with a random word. Uh, another one is, uh, we'll just do like BAR for this one. Um, short brandable names. We want the right, the random ideas to be quite high. Brand info, don't worry about that. Now, the only thing with this is you're going to struggle to get um, maybe some domain names for this. Um, so, you, you know, do bear that in mind. Invitora is quite a cool name. Um, actually, I like that name. Um, obviously, things like Dramatic, you're not going to be able to get. Vinox, that's quite a cool one as well. Um, Dublu, again, you might be able to get something like that. Um, uh, Kazevi, that's quite a cool one in my opinion. So, again, you can literally see how easy it is to go ahead and find a bunch of different names, right? We've literally used name QL. 
uh, name licks. Literally, I most of these names would work would work perfectly fine. Shopify's business generator, I usually input one word, a physical word, and then just see what it comes up with suggestions. So we'll just type in something like beyond um, and see what comes up. So it can be two random words, to be honest, um, that you can have for your store. Something like surplus beyond, um, vivid beyond, something like that. I personally prefer just having one word, but if I'm really struggling to find one word, then I might put two words together, right? Uh, like beyond cube and see if, you know, that works as well, right? So that's how you go ahead and find uh, a brand name for your Shopify store. Uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Hey everyone, Ecom Wizard here. And now I'm gonna be showing you how to go ahead and quickly purchase a domain name. So once you've went ahead and found your brand name, you need to obviously go ahead and purchase a domain name um, to cover our .shopify name up here. Uh, personally, for me, I always like to use Google domains, right? And the reason being is because it's easy to just go ahead and get a professional domain name with a uh, professional. Hello everyone, Ecom Wizard here. And in this one, I'm gonna be showing you how to go ahead and get a domain name for your store after you've already found and decided on a brand name, right? Now, we always need a domain name to go ahead and cover our dot my Shopify. You don't wanna obviously keep that. Um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I always use Google domains. The reason being is because it's just really easy to get a professional email with the domain name while you're actually buying it. Um, as opposed with some other providers and stuff like that, right? The cheapest email is like $5 a month or five pounds per month. So it's literally really cheap. You only need the starter pack uh, and you can answer, answer customer emails professionally with that as well. So we're just gonna say, for example, uh, our brand name is called Caveza, right? Uh, it was Cavezi uh, or something like that, but um, Kazevi, but we've not been able to uh, go ahead and find a .com for that. So we'll just do kazeva.com um, or we'll just do this one actually, see if this is a .com, right? So it's 10, 10 pound a year. What you're gonna go ahead and do is just add it to your basket. Uh, then just go ahead and hit checkout. Now, personally, you always want to go ahead and keep your, tick this Google workspace. It's six pound per user uh, per month. Keep privacy protection on so your private info um, isn't available. Also, auto renew, um, you can turn this on or off. It doesn't really matter too much. You might wanna turn it off just because you don't know if you'll still be running the same domain name in a year, um, but you can still turn it off after. It doesn't really make, make a difference, right? Tick this Google business starter um, and basically what you're gonna go ahead and do is input a first name, a surname and a username. Now username, I always like to do support at and then whatever your um, brand name is. Uh, first name and surname, I like to go ahead and set it up as you would be a customer service VA, right? So don't put your real name in here. Uh, you can just put something like, I don't know, Lucy Watkins, right? Uh, then go ahead, hit checkout and it's gonna come up with all your details uh, and everything like that, that you have to put in, such as card information. Now, if for example, you are running in Germany, right? You would obviously just do something like kazevi.de, right? Uh, and if you're running in Sweden, uh, you may do something like um, kazevi.se. Um, and if you're doing nl, it would be um, .nl, right? N um, Netherlands names, you can get on Google domains, um, uh, German names you can get on Google domains as well. Um, for Swedish names, uh, you will need to go ahead and purchase directly through Shopify, uh, works perfectly fine. Um, and also for Danish names, you'll have to go ahead and use GoDaddy um, to purchase your domain name, right? So what that would mean is you go on GoDaddy uh, and then you have to use DK Hostmaster as well. I personally, for uh, Danish names, you can just do something like uh, kazevi.danmark.com it basically saves you from going ahead you could just get a domain name like this it saves you from going ahead uh, and having to go through dk hostmaster right with dk hostmaster this basically is denmark's way of trying to clamp down on obviously people buying domain names and just running spam on them uh, as in like bad products no shipping, all that type of stuff. So they make you basically verify your business 
um, and your ID when you purchase a DK uh, Hostmaster domain. You get 30 days to verify it. If you don't verify it in that time, they just pause the domain. So that's personally when I'm running Denmark. I don't really like to have .dks. You don't have, you can if you want, but it works without. You can just put your name and then you can just put danmark.com uh, or you can just put dot like dk.com and that works fine as well so it's up to you guys depending on where you're running uh, in europe once you've purchased a domain uh, come down to settings uh, go over to where's the domains names here uh, domains down here then you just go into connect existing domains um, type in your domain name basically kazevi.com or whatever it is hit next and it will redirect you to google.com um, if you've already purchased it and you're logged into Google, it will redirect you out and you can just follow the instructions. So that's how you go ahead and purchase a domain name where you get them from and your email and then connect it to your store. Hello everyone, Ecom Wizard here and welcome to this lesson. And in this one, I'm just gonna be quickly showing you how you can go ahead and create a logo in literally two minutes for your Shopify store. Now, a lot of people think you have to have this crazy designed, you know, paid for logo that, you maybe get from Fiverr. All we do is literally create a word with like a full stop at the end or an underline in it or something like that, right? And it works perfectly fine every time. So I personally like to use uh, Photoshop. It's just what I'm most used to, but I'll show you in a second another site that you can use, which is basically like Photoshop, but it's free. Photoshop is around $10 per month, right? So I like to keep my logos like black or put them as the same color code as the store. So if the store color is like blue, you can have a dark blue logo like that as well. Just find the color code in Shopify um, and then do the same one. But for now, we're going to do this. So usually what I do um, is will be something like uh, Kavezi, uh, if that's what we're calling our store. Uh, and then I'll put a full stop, right? Now, what I'm going to do is just make this a little bit bigger. Uh, drop it in the corner there just so that it's right on the edges because you want it to be um, as kind of to the edge as possible. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and crop this uh, and crop this all the way here. Uh, then I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, turn off the background so that it is transparent. So we can go ahead and put this on any background um, and it will look perfectly fine, right? Now, I usually have a black one for the, for the um, header of the website and then I'll usually create a white version for the footer of the website as well, right? Because you have to remember the footers are usually dark. So if we have a black logo on like a black footer or a dark gray footer, it's not gonna look good. So you wanna go ahead and create a black one and a white one. Or um, if your header one is, you know, maybe like a navy blue like that, uh, then you'd still go ahead and create a white one for the bottom of your store as well, right? Now, another quick thing you can do if you wanted to, um, I personally don't always do this, but you can just highlight it uh, come on to here uh, and just click underline as well. So if I make this uh, command T and just make this a little bit smaller here, you'll be able to see uh, a little bit smaller. We have actually underlined the logo, right? So again, I wouldn't really underline most of my logos, but if you wanted to, uh, you could go ahead and underline it as well. But this logo literally works fine, guys. Uh, this is what we do for the majority of our stores it's either just a full stop or even just the word on its own uh, you can have you don't have to have no extravagant logo or anything like like that um, the font I'm using is usually Trueno um, extra bold um, something like Arial black works fine as well um, and that's the main ones we we'd basically stick to when it comes to designing a logo so um, just to show you another alternative to Photoshop is basically an exact ripoff of Photoshop, but just the free version. So this is called photopia.com. And again, it's the same thing. Uh, you can go ahead and just create a logo on here. Uh, I'm not gonna show you how, but again, it would be pretty easy. You just do the same as Photoshop, uh, make it a little bit bolder, change the font uh, and increase the size and stuff like that. And then obviously just turn off the transparency. So it's the same as the background as well, but this is a really useful tool to have. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Hello everyone and welcome to this lesson. And in this one, I'm gonna be showing you the exact apps that you need for your Shopify store. So the first one that you need to go ahead and use is Sendvio. Um, this is essentially just an email marketing 
app which will allow you to basically send an abandonment cart flow automation in email terms um, once a customer basically goes to check out but doesn't actually complete the purchase. So you just download it, set up an account, come over to email automation um, and then you'd click on abandoned checkouts, uh, edit email templates. You want to make sure how many emails do you want to send. This should always be on three. It will allow you to put three once you've created three different templates. Um, the kind of cadence for what we send is usually five minutes after they've abandoned their car on email. It can be five or 10 minutes. After that is the second one at about five hours. Uh, and the third one is about 19 hours after. So they'll get three emails, uh, one within five or 10 minutes, uh, one within five hours, and then one within 19 hours as well. So within kind of 24 hour period, they'll have pretty much three emails, right? And if they don't come after that, then that's fine, right? So you're gonna come over to edit email templates. Firstly, you have to choose a template. Um, we just choose like a plain one and then we kind of build it up ourselves, right? Now, in terms of the subject line, we put, hey, still want this. Um, for the pre-header, we put something like, you forgot this, no worries, we saved it for you. Again, for the actual email book, Serene is an example name of what we'd call basically our store, right? Just a random, like I said, six letter word um, is typically what we do. Then it would have hey client name with obviously what they've put their order name in. Um, I saw that you didn't complete your purchase. We're running low on stock. Uh, jump right back off and click yes, I want this, right? Then we have the product. We have yes, I want this. This is where they click and it will redirect them back. Uh, and then if they have any issues, they can just reach back, right? And a random name, customer service, etc., etc. So what this looks like in mobile form, you can see it's quite nice. Again, very clean and does the job right if you want you can put this banner in a specific background color as well so you could change this to a different color um this one here again something like this um you know obviously not you'd want it to match this orange here but again if you wanted to do that you could do that as well right i'm just going to leave it as white for now now after that what you want to go ahead and do is the second email now, the second email is where you, where we usually offer our first discount. So this is where we give customers, the first email is just like a reminder and you'll get a lot of customers come back from that. The second email is like a discount. So for anyone that didn't purchase because they thought it was too expensive, this email will kind of try to get them back. So the first thing is a subject, which is come back, here's a gift. This is quite a good subject because people are gonna be thinking, what gift is this? You've not really revealed it, but you've given them an idea. Then it says, we want you back. So here's a personal something for you again. And again, it's the same similar type of email, but instead we have wrote, uh, uh, we wanted to offer you a welcome back gift. Uh, use code SAVE10 at the checkout uh, and be get 10% off your order. Be quick. It's only valid for 24 hours. So we're trying to input some urgency. Um, to claim your discount, just put, yes, I want this, uh, etc., And the format is still the same. So to actually set up these discounts, you just come back onto Shopify, hit discount, and then literally hit create discount. Uh, you'd put an, an amount off the order. Uh, and then you'd obviously do like 10%, etc. Like we said, the code name would be save 10, etc., etc. So again, that's our second email complete. Uh, again, this is what it looks like on mobile and they can input the code in as well. Now, the third email that they're gonna send, get sent is please don't leave us. Here is our final punt to win you back. Um, and again, this is basically just reminding them that we're on our last lot of stock. Um, to sweeten the deal, this is probably gonna be 20% um, off. So you don't wanna do 10% again if you've already give them 10%. This would be get 20% off. So you could use codes code um, get 20 off or we had save 10 before. So you can just have save 20. Uh, and we'll give you 20% off, but this is the final deal we can do. And the offer ends at midnight, right? This is just a random logo. Um, but again, you'd make sure the colors and everything is the same as, you know, your usual kind of colors. So that is everything for Sendvio. Um, once you've done that, your three emails should send out. And once you've set them up, make sure all your settings are correct and everything like that. Uh, and now I'm going to move on to another app. So moving on to app number two, and this is called Uplinkly Sticky Cart. It's basically just an add to cart button that will stick to the bottom of the user's screen when they're on mobile or desktop. Uh, and basically it's just increasing 
the amount of customers that are going to add the product to their cart. Um, sometimes customers scroll to the bottom of the page and don't want to scroll back up, so they can just go ahead and hit add to cart, right? Now, all we do is have it on general, um, all devices, no animations, bottom of the screen. And then after they scroll past the regular ATC button, we want to put it on um, the bottom of their page. Now, for style, we don't want to automatically pick the colors. We're just going to input the colors as, as the same theme colors as our actual store, uh, which is fine. Go ahead and hit save. Don't worry about advanced. Don't worry about custom CSS, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I believe this app is actually free. So you don't need to go ahead and pay for it or anything like that. So if I just show you an example and click on the custom template here, if I just scroll past, you'll see this nice bar comes up at the bottom, right? And this is going to increase the amount of customers who are going to add the product to their cart. So that's app number two. Now I'm going to move on to app number three. So app number three is Vitals and there's kind of two or three um, apps out of this, which I actually use. This is basically a massive app, which essentially has a ton of different apps inside of it, right? So you'll see we have like product reviews, we have sales notifications, currency converters, um, scroll to the top button, Facebook pixels, um, cart reserve timer. We don't use all of these, to be honest. It's not really necessary. We mostly just use Vitals for reviews, but it does have some other useful stuff inside of it as well, right? So currency converter is quite good. If, for example, you're running in multiple different countries, but your base currency is like USD and you want to show it to people that are in pounds, again, this can come in handy, right? But it's not a must. The main one... <clears throat> The main one that we actually use is product reviews. So <clears throat> the main app that we actually use inside Vitals is inactive tab message. Um, the main app that we actually use inside of Vital, it, the main app that we actually use inside of Vitals is actually product reviews, right? So I'll show you just quickly how you'd go ahead and set that up. You can see here, we have a bunch of, of different uh, reviews here, but Basically, what you want to go ahead and do is come on to the product reviews, hit import reviews uh, and import reviews from AliExpress, right? Then you need to select the product that you actually want to import from. Go ahead. I'm just going to choose a random AliExpress link for now uh, and just find a button, uh, a link that we can use uh, with some reviews on it as well. Then you'd go ahead and input the AliExpress link. Now, personally, I like to do only reviews with pictures, right? If you need to translate to like a, a German store or Dutch store, you can do that as well. Um, then you'd literally just go ahead and import all of these reviews, right? And it's going to go ahead and import all of them for you. And you'll end up with something like this, right? So that is literally how you go ahead and use Vitals. Um, some of the other apps you can use is an inactive tab message. So basically when you click out of the tab uh, on your store, if someone clicks into another tab on like mobile or desktop, it will come up with you forgot this at the top of their screen as well. Um, another app, like I said, I've already mentioned Currency Converter, scroll to the top button uh, as well. Another useful app which you may want to use is basically the Facebook Pixel. So for example, all you do is go into your business manager, find the pixel ID, paste the pixel ID in there and hit save, right? And this will track people on your website through uh, vitals. Now it's not the best, it's not the most accurate, but it does do an okay job and I have used it before. So that's the third app and that's how I go ahead uh, and actually use vitals. Now the fourth and final app which you need to go ahead and get set up is actually called One Click Upsell by Zipify OCU, right? This is basically going to get us some more revenue from each customer that comes to our site and buys, right? So what you wanna do is just click add new funnel and it will basically redirect you to this page here, right? Now you need to go ahead and add a trigger. So this is what product is going to trigger the post-purchase upsell. So for this one, I've obviously just put an example kind of book. That's if the customer buys this book, it's gonna trigger this template, right? Now do bear in mind, it doesn't really work if customers are checking out with Klarna because Klarna redirects them away from Shopify right? So they still need to kind of be on Shopify for them to um, receive this post-purchase upsell, right? So we've got our trigger sorted. Now you're going to hit edit offer. Make sure you have a post-purchase offer. 
Um, and typically what I will do is delete out all of these. Uh, you can keep the incentives, delete the content one, just hit the visibility on no, uh, delete the content two, and then the buy box two, I don't like to have either, right? Now, short description, I usually just delete this. Um, and what I'm gonna go ahead and do is the star rating, turn that off, you don't need that. But up here, usually what I say is something like, wait, uh, you've unlocked a special uh, offer, get 40% off another. And then obviously in brackets, it has the product title um, for a friend or family, uh, for friends or family. Right, so you're basically saying something like, um, wait, you've unlocked a special offer. Let me just put this on 24. Wait, you've unlocked a special offer. Get 40% off another easy read. Obviously, it shouldn't be custom template, but um, get 40% off another easy read custom template for friends or family, right? Or something like that. Essentially, you're just offering 40% off. Uh, again, let me see if I can just find the party... Uh, emoji and we can add the party emoji in just copy that and i will put that over here so it says wait you've unlocked special offer get 40 percent off another easy read uh, for friends and family right so i'm going to save that now what you need to do is obviously input the price so you need to come down to discount hit select uh, and do percentage now i always do 30 or 40 percent off because this is typically all profit right we're not having to it's not all profit but it's profit minus the cost of goods. So if we're selling this now for $18 and it only costs us eight or $10 to ship, we've still got a decent amount of profit in here, right? Now, again, I'm going to leave this as is. Um, we don't really need anything else. If you're obviously running an EU store, then you'd want to go ahead and translate all of this as well, right? So you need to obviously translate this, translate this, um, translate the exclusive offer expires in as well, right? Now that's everything for this one. If I was to show you what a preview looks like, they're obviously gonna buy and then this pops up, right? With, you know, information and trying to upsell them. Now, what I like to do as well is basically do a downsell. So not a downsell, but basically if they decline the first offer, you can just duplicate the, um, set the, the first offer but basically all they're going to do is offer them 50% off this time, right? So instead of offering them 40%, maybe that weren't enough, we can just offer them 50%. So if I come onto this one, um, we're going to change the percentage to 50% off now. Uh, and we're going to find like a warning emoji, right? Copy that. Uh, and we're going to come into uh, here. Uh, we're going to paste that in here uh, and we're just going to put uh, in 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 capitals last chance get 50 percent off uh now right so last chance get 50 percent off now so this is our final kind of offer they've got 50 percent. if they don't want 50 percent, then that's fine as well right but this is a preview of what it would look like on the store as well um and that's how we go ahead and set up all of our post purchase upsells as well right now you do need to just go into your settings uh, i think it's checkout settings and make sure uh, ocu um, is selected here on the post purchase page and then go ahead and hit save uh, and just make sure everything in OCU is set up perfectly fine as well, right? So you can see here, Shopify checkout settings, we've already just done that. But yeah, basically make sure your um, OCU is set up here and then that is fine, right? Your, your post purchase is ready to go. Now, personally, you obviously don't want to name it test product. You'd want to um, rename it as, you know, I don't know, custom, easy read book or whatever it is. That way it's just easy to go ahead uh, and analyze the uh, analytics for exactly how the product's performing. Make sure the um, trigger is on as well. So you wanna make sure uh, you've got the right trigger for the product and then just upsell the same thing, but just with a discount. So that's pretty much how we, oh, lastly, you need to hit publish, of course. Um, and that is literally how we set up all of our apps.
right? So we have uh, Sendvio for our abandoned emails. We have Uplinkly. Uh, we have Vitals for our product reviews and like currency converter. And then we have OCU um, for our post-purchase upsells. Now you can go a step further and add like true profit. Um, if you wanted to, this is just a notable um, app, which basically helps you track like uh, profit and stuff like that. You don't have to, but you can if you want. It's just the personal one that uh, we do use. It's really simple to set up. You just input your cost of goods and stuff. It isn't mandatory. Like some people prefer working off Google Sheets and stuff, um, or they have their own profit trackers. Um, but again, this is a notable kind of app which you can use as well. Clavio is another notable app uh, where this basically will do some of your email marketing. They give you like more email templates for flows and stuff like that. When you're getting started in dropshipping, these aren't like a must have. I'd say just get the store set up with the abandonment flow uh, and everything like that. Uh, and then one for basically text marketing is another notable one is SMS bump as well. This is one you can use if you do want to send text to customers as well. So I hope you did enjoy this video uh, and I'll catch you in the next one. Hello everyone, the Ecom Wizard here and welcome to this lesson. And in this one, I'm just gonna be showing you the pages that you need for your Shopify store, right? So the first thing you want to do is come into settings uh, and then you want to go ahead and come down to policies, right? Now, the first things first is we need to make sure we have all of our correct policies. Uh, and typically those are a return policy, which as you can see here, um, you can replace them with a template as well. You can just use a template ones and then input your information. You also need a privacy policy. Um, again, you want to make sure you have a privacy policy. Um, thirdly, you want to make sure you have a terms of service. And again, just make sure your brand name and stuff is in there as well. And then lastly, this is optional, but we always like to add uh, a shipping policy as well. This basically just details how long it will take for the package to arrive to customers and maybe some of the shipping lines you use as well, such as USPS, Royal Mail, Canada Post, et cetera, et cetera, to the different regions, right? Now, once you've went ahead and inputted like a template for all of them, uh, what you want to go ahead and do is just exit out of that. Now you want to go ahead uh, and check your uh, online store, then come down to pages. These are basically the pages that you need um, for your Shopify store. So the first one is basically track your order. So you can use an app for this if you want, um, or you can basically just type in 17 track embed. Uh, and the way you do this is just get the tracking widget from 17 track if you want to. Uh, copy this code here uh, and when you're creating the page all you do is basically just hit this little uh, html button here and then you just paste this script all the way in here right and what it's going to do is come up with a little track your order uh, part that you've basically embedded they can input their tracking number and track it that way alternatively you can just use an app if you want to now i'm going to leave that page Second page you want is an FAQs page. So this is a frequently asked questions page. This basically just details some of the questions that customers are going to have, uh, which is important. You want a contact us page. Again, make sure your theme template is on contact as well. And then you don't have to put in an address. That's just a random address. Uh, and then you want an about us page. This basically just details a little bit about your company uh, and everything like that. Now, what you wanna do is if I was to just view the store, this is how our pages will look. Uh, we have track your order home, track your order, uh, FAQs, and then we have contact us at the top. Then at the bottom, uh, we have about us in our footer. We have terms of service, which is another one of our policies. We have privacy policy. Uh, then we have refund policy again as well. Uh, and then we have shipping policy as well. So those are all the pages you need um, to actually add these to your navigation bar. Uh, all you do is go on main menu, then you'd hit add menu item, go to link, go to pages, and then obviously just add in whichever page you want. This is for the main menu. So this would be for the top one. If I just click uh, cancel, click out of this. Uh, and then for the footer menu, again, you do the exact same process again, add menu item, but this time you'd come down to policies uh, and then obviously select the policy uh, you want as well. Once you've done all of that, you'll be able to see them clearly displayed on your website, but those are all the pages you need uh, for your Shopify store. I hope you did enjoy this one and I'll catch you in the next one. Hello everyone, the Ecom Wizard here. And in this one, I'm gonna be showing you exactly how we build out our stores and essentially what they look like. 
So firstly here you have our Shopify online store. Um, this is pretty much what some of our sites look like. In fact, all of them, we use the Sense theme. Uh, it's totally free. You don't have to pay anything. Um, if you're doing like EU, for example, you would just translate all of this over to German or wherever you're obviously situated in selling, uh, come down to languages and obviously change that over as well. So this would obviously change default to, um, if you're doing German, for example, you would just translate it over to German and all your product pages would be in German and stuff as well. But if you are running in the USA um, or UK or English speaking countries, again, this is exactly how we do it, right? So... There's a few different things. Firstly, I wanted to run you through how our websites look and then the two different templates that we have for our products because we sometimes run two different templates. One is more like a page building template if we wanna go into a bit more detail. So it may be something like a health product or, or something like that. Uh, and then another one is just a typical one where you'd start testing products with um, and try to work on a little bit more volume as opposed to um, the page builder style. So first thing first, at the top, we have an announcement bar, uh, free shipping and 40% off ends at midnight. We have our logo here. Then we have uh, the main menu, which I've already would have previously shown you in the videos, how to go ahead and get that set up, right? Now, we also have an image here. This is typically just a random image of like a house, a desk or something like that. To find an image like this, you can just use something like Unsplash. Uh, this is basically a free image um, place where you can get like high quality images. You can type in things like home, desk, all of that type of stuff, right? And just get a really nice clean image um, of a kind of generic background, right? And the aim of this is to build out a concept store. You want a generic name, which doesn't really, you know, sound niche specific. So it isn't like pets home or anything. We want to be able to sell multiple products on this website right but we also want it to have like a branded feel to it where people believe they are coming to a branded store for example like serene right then we have discover your new favorite uh, unique products ethically sourced again this is just typically some intro wording about either the brand or the products you sell or people you sell to or something like that right under that, you can have some, um, we've just shown this as an example, you don't have to have these. Um, a lot of the time on our sites, we don't actually run these, but you can have them if you want. Um, they're basically just like feature logos where you can put in things like BuzzFeed, US Today, uh, Mashable Health, stuff like this, just to try to give some social proof. We Next, we have our best selling, um, our, our best selling columns. Again, these are easy to put in. Uh, it's just called a featured collection. Uh, and again, these are our two separate templates. Typically, you would want all of like your best selling products, like maybe four different products across here. Um, however, in this example, we've just put our two different templates, which I'm going to run you through as this video goes on, right? Under that, we have a multi-column. Now, this is basically why you would choose us, right, as a brand. And we basically want to talk about some benefits that our customers are going to get from ordering with us, right? So for example, one of the benefits that customers get from ordering with us is they get free shipping, right? And we like to include this little emoji here, uh, as you can see, free shipping with an emoji, and this is actually a truck PNG. Uh, you can get this from places like, uh, if I go onto Flaticon, or flat icon, however you wanna pronounce it, or something like that, you can get like nice PNG trucks here, uh, and everything like that. So I'm just trying to show you guys as we kind of go along as well. Get that saved uh, as a PNG and then obviously upload it to the store, right? So 12,000 plus customers, um, we've sold, you know, hundreds and thousands of orders with Shopify. Um, 12,000 customers, uh, we have sold thousands of orders with customers. So um, again, join over 12,000 customers who love us uh, and a 30 day money back guarantee. Now you can obviously tailor this to the guarantee that you want. It doesn't have to be 30 days. It can be like 14 days if you want, um, whereby if within 14 days of receiving their order, they're not happy with it, they can send it back, right? And you give them a refund or 30 day, uh, they can send them back uh, and you give them a refund. And if you don't want them to return it, you can still just give them a refund or offer them like 50% off. Um, then we have five star reviews. So we just have some reviews at the bottom that say like loved this product would recommend um, order arrived yesterday. They just want to be generic things. You don't want to be talking specifically 
uh, about anything. Customer service was very good and answered all of my questions as well. Uh, and then at the bottom, we have our logo. We have the footer links, which again, I've already shown you how to do. And then we just have a small part of our bio, um, which basically explains the brand, right? So Serene brings you the best products from all around the world um, for an affordable price. Uh, and we've had over 10,000 happy customers as well, right? Now, just to show you what this looks like on mobile, you can see here, very slick, very clean, does the job, um, you know, isn't got too much spam. Uh, it shows the customer why they should buy with us. And we know this works, right? It works for me, uh, works for Harry, works for our students uh, as well, right? Now, the next part is basically, you're probably wondering is what do our actual product pages look like? So I'm gonna go ahead and show you exactly uh, two of the different templates that we have for our products, right? So if you come onto our product pages, here is the first template that we actually use to test quite a few of our products. You can see here we have the product title, the price, uh, and some benefits here. Now these benefits are actually custom liquid, so you can edit these and put in whatever you want, right? We usually like to keep it as free tracked shipping, um, 30 day money back guarantee, and then 24 seven customer service, right? Again, only put those things if you are actually going to offer them. Now the discount in, this is basically just to try get more customers to buy more. Um, you can kind of offer bulk deals as variants. So buy one, uh, buy two, save 20%, buy three, save 40%, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, add to cart button. Then we have a shipping and delivery part. So this basically just gives them some information on shipping. Uh, then we also have a part on our money back guarantee. So just, basically providing trust again, so they can see they are covered if they do purchase with us. We have some nice images here. Uh, you can add this little unconditional guarantee part on the first image if you want, but you don't have to. And then we have the product description, right? And this is pretty much how we lay out all of our product description. So we have an image, some information, um, an image again, some information uh, and some image as well. Uh, and again, some information and stuff like that, right? Then we have the why choose us um, down here. This is similar to the one on the homepage. We actually have these amazing reviews, but this time we use um, basically some um, post from um, Zeob. So this is, you can go on to uh, Zeob, it's called, uh, and essentially create like a fake Facebook post. And this just adds social proof, right? So you can go on like, uh, I think it's Facebook post generator, create a Facebook post, right? Uh, and then you can go ahead and write some comments in, upload photos of them. And basically this just adds a lot of social proof. Like we've seen conversion rates improve with this because when people are scrolling down, they obviously see these comments and think, okay, cool, right? I'm happy to order with these. And uh, then we have an, an image um, with text on a 30 day money back guarantee. Uh, and lastly, these FAQs are really important as well, right? So some collapsible content, um, with FAQs on them. So essentially, you just want some generic questions at the bottom, which will help ease them over the line for buying this product, right? Or any product on your site. First question is like, can I try this risk-free? Uh, second one is, is shipping really free? Third one is, are returns easy? Uh, and fourth one is like, how long will shipping take, right? Then at the bottom of the page, again, we have um, just a buy it now kind of buy now button of the product again, so that if they scroll from the top all the way to the bottom, they can still go ahead and just add the product to the cart um, and then go through to um, the cart draw page and then they can go through to the checkout as well, right? Now, what I'm gonna do is show you uh, our other custom template, right? And this is slightly different. Um, it's, it's a slightly different layout, but similar style to what we were using before. So. The custom template, again, this is for if you're customizing it to a specific product, right? So instead of having the generic default template of like free shipping, all of that type of stuff, you can see we've now changed the benefits to suit this exact product. So easily read products at night, uh, protects from eye strain, easy to use, free track shipping, etc. right? You can talk specifically about the actual product, um, which is good as well. And then again, we just have uh, in this format. So it's kind of like image text, image text, uh, image text as well. Uh, and then again, the same style thing, right? But 
with the FAQs, again, you can make this more customized. So instead of having generic template, default templates like what we said, when you're just testing you know, any old product or a lot of other products, you can make these more customizable. So for example, you might ask, is the brightness adjustable for this exact product? Yes, you can make the light brighter or dimmer, right? Instead of saying, can I try this risk-free? Uh, you might say something like, how does my easy read light charge or something like that? So again, that's why it's called the custom template because you're going to customize it to be a lot more um, information about this specific product, right? Which is really important as well. Now, if I exit this and go into the products, of course, what you can do is once you've created a template, uh, a theme template, right? You can obviously just go ahead. Here's our default product and here's our landing page custom template, right? Which is cool as well. Uh, and, and, and again, when you want to design out a custom template product, you just come in, type in, um, change the online store theme template to landing page custom product, and then you'd go ahead uh, and fill in the information on that specific page, right? And the final thing you're probably wondering is how do I go ahead and create a template if I wanted to create a new template of myself? Um, you just come down onto here, uh, go onto products, and then come into create template, right? Name the product uh, template. I've just named a random one. Um, like that, then you'd obviously go out and build everything out um, and that would be your template from now on, right? So you now have FD, FG, whatever it is. Um, you'd come back out into uh, exit if you wanted to click in products. If I was to create a new product now, uh, what I can do is obviously just hit FD, FD, whatever it is, uh, hit save. Um, obviously, I, I need to put a name, so I'll just put example one. Uh, and this makes creating product pages a lot easier because all you're doing is you're working with templates, you're keeping the same template and all you're doing is just changing the information inside of it. So when it comes to actually our site, this is what it would look like overall. You can see here, here's all our homepage um, in its glory. Here's our custom template. If we wanna build one out for a specific product, like we said, um, we would recommend you do this as well because they are quite good. These do take a little bit longer to build. Um, and then you also have the default template, which is just the same template for every product. But all we do is change this information here as well, right? And at the bottom, you always want some reviews as well um, on vitals like I did. I already showed you in the apps part. Um, you always want reviews, which is important as well. Uh, and then if I scroll up to the top, I'll just show you we have a cart draw as well, which looks like that. Uh, and then secure checkout uh, for our checkout. Again, you'd obviously want to customize this as well. But for this one, we've not actually customized it. But your checkout, again, would obviously include your logo uh, and everything else uh, like that. And this is actually the one page checkout as well. So um, that's pretty much everything to do with our store build. Um, and the sites that we use to help build out our site as well. Um, but I hope you did enjoy this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Yo, what's going on guys? So what I'm gonna do in this video is we're gonna talk about high converting product pages, right? So I'm literally just gonna show you live examples of other stores which are doing very well and ones that you can model your product pages off because it's exactly how you, know, you should be laying things out. And you identify as we look at some of these other product pages, um, the commonalities and the certain patterns that they use that you can identify and apply them to your own product pages so that you can get a higher conversion rate. Because a lot of guys out there rush product pages and they think it's a game of volume when really it's not. It should come down to making sure that there's a product page. You got to think of it this way. If you're spending money and you're sending traffic to a page that you're paying for, right? It makes no sense whatsoever to, you know, run it to something which is half-hearted. Okay. With that being said, don't be a perfectionist. And don't overcomplicate things. But um, we'll look at some examples. Okay. First things first is you want to make sure that you obviously are mobile optimized, right? Because eighty to ninety percent of the traffic will come from mobile. So if you are editing your store in Shopify editor or whatever it may be, or when you're actually looking at it, right? Always make sure you look at it on your mobile phone first. Uh, fix anything that you may need to fix because again a lot the bulk the majority of the traffic is going to come from mobile so you want to make sure that uh you know there's no crazy padding issues going on or whatever it may be okay now 
again, I'm going to show you some examples of these components, right? Of the different high converting product pages, right? But these are the things that you need before we actually start to have a look at them. So the first thing obviously is high quality images, making sure that you've got images, which again, um, I'm going to show you some tactics that I like to do personally, and th that all of these stores are implementing themselves. They do take time to do, but you're going to have a higher chance of success and converting visitors into buyers when you do this rather than every other person. Okay. Uh, benefit driven bullet points uh, is also what you need above the fold. Uh, three to five top benefits of the actual product, how it's going to help their life, how it's going to solve their problem, how it works, etc. Then obviously you want to have testimonials, which is social proof. Okay. Frequently asked questions as well to answer any questions. You don't want to have the customer, you know, having to go any part of your website to find out the question that they need. They will want to answer that question on the product page. So again, they've got all their questions answered, then they can move forward in the buying process. Obviously you want to have a guarantee because a guarantee eliminates any sort of, um, Uncertainty is like a risk reversal and, you know, 30 day money back guarantees, 90 day money back guarantee, whatever it may be. We'll look at some examples in a moment in time. And of course, reviews at the end that you can have. Um, there's different apps that you can use for that as well. OK, so with that being said, let's actually have a look at some uh, examples, right, of, uh, of some of these different products. So the first one is this flex strap. OK, and first and foremost, let's have a look at the images. You can see here that, again, this is a, a custom product. It's a drop shipping product, but they've obviously whacked their logos on. And you can create something like this yourself. These little badges, again, it's just in Photoshop. You can jump in Photoshop, find something like this and get that put on it. Very easy to do. Again, here you can create these inside of Photoshop. Not hard to do whatsoever. But you can see what I mentioned about high quality images is you can do these right and have a highest chance of success because when you look at heat maps, okay, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but every time I look at heat maps for any product or any store, you'll find that a lot of people, okay, will not scroll all this way down. So the more information that you can give people in these images, right, for example, why this is better than a chiropractor, why this is better than painkillers, reviews, social proof, which is going on here, the benefits, etc. here, then people can make a buying decision just by looking at these things. Like if you go into Amazon and Amazon sellers do this really, really well, because no one's got time to read Amazon. Half of you people probably don't even know, but Amazon actually have like you know, an actual product description, but how many times have you had a look at a product description from Amazon? Like when you scroll down and they talk about all the benefits and all that, you know, bullshit, you really don't. You look at the images, you look at the price, you look at the reviews, you make a buying decision, simple, right? And it's the same with e-commerce pretty much. So you wanna make sure that you are doing this on here. Um, another thing, like I mentioned, is benefit driven bullets. So they've got guaranteed to relieve your lower back pain, gently stretches, tight muscles, blah, 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 et cetera, okay? Um, other than that, this they've got social proof here as well. And if you have a look, scroll down here, some of this is custom coded, but you can, and a lot of these, some of these stores are obviously custom coded, meaning that they've got a developer to do these things, but some of this stuff that you can literally just do yourself with a free theme with the way that they're set up. Now you can have in, um, different product templates, like, um, you know, um, what's it called? Uh, sense the sense theme again, which is hundred percent free. There's a few other ones out there that you can do it as well. Right. So again, they've just got the top benefits of the actual product. They've got the here, obviously easy to use, lifetime guarantee, travel safe, blah, blah, blah. Statistics here as well. Um, obviously some social proof here as well with testimonials from here. They've got a, a, an about us. Now, if you can make one of these fantastic, you can, this is coded in, but sometimes you can create this if you wanted to, if you're good at Photoshop, you can see here that obviously they've got a guarantee as well. The FAQs, like I've mentioned, so answering those questions and scrolling down and um, again, They've got those reviews here at the bottom. Okay. Now, another example, again, we've got a few more to go through, um, but you can literally see the same kind of patterns that they're doing. Again, this is just a, a video or, or a GIF, GIF, whatever you want to call it, of before and afters that they can um, do. They've got, again, quality image with the benefits on here. They've got this with social proof on here. And this was obviously the sale on there. Benefit driven bullet points here again. You can see same thing scrolling down. We can see here we've got. Um, again, they're, they're pretty much modeling the same as the other website. So we'll, we'll blast through this one fairly quickly, but again, reviews here as well. Now, this is another example. Again, just have a look. They're doing the exact same stuff. So first and foremost, high quality images with the benefits of the actual product, you know, what it does, um, money back guarantee, um, before and afters here as well. You want to be careful with before and afters. I generally don't like to say before and after most of the time I'll just say with 
X products and without X products. That way you're not really saying it, you're kind of like circumventing it, okay? Um, again, great, they've got social proof here, um, testimonials, blah, 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 blah. Another thing that you can do, obviously, is name the product something. And you'll see here that obviously this is called Knee Medi. Um, this one here was called um, Flex Strap. What's this other one called here? Uh, Magic Curler Set. We'll have a look at some of these other ones as well. But naming the products and putting like a, um, making it look more le like legit, like you actually own the, the brand of the product, that's going to help you out as well. You can see here this one, they've named it just Natural Knee Pain Relief Device. You can do this with your product descriptions. Um, the title of the product using this here is something which is very, very good to do because what happens is you, um, you only have a certain amount of real estate and using the title of the product you know, this could be something like eliminate knee pain instantly or, you know, eliminate knee pain in a matter of a week's time or something along those lines, because then you're attracting more attention. OK, and getting people to want to read more down again, benefit driven points here. Um, struggling with knee pain, blah, 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 blah. We scroll down and have a look again. We've got benefit, top benefits of the actual product, um, who uses it again, how it actually works, who's it for, um, how to use it. Again, if you scroll down, obviously they've got a special gift here, which is a um, special offer, which is the actual offer of this. And uh, again, if we scroll down testimonials, um, like we mentioned, FAQs, guarantee, and then we scroll down, we've got the reviews. Same thing. Again, let's have a look at another one. Again, you can see jumping, jumping Photoshop. If you guys don't know how to use Photoshop, you don't even have to use Photoshop. The great thing about it is that you can just use um, things like Canva. Canva's free, right, to create these things. Or another alternative, if you want exactly Photoshop, but you don't want to pay for it, there's a website called Photopia, which is basically uh, Photoshop one for one, but it's just an online version, okay? And you can create these yourself. Look how easy it is to create something like this. These are all just generic photos. They're, they're probably like AI people. Something like this just gives you so much social proof, okay? And you can apply this to any product that you test out because it's so generic, right? Uh, again, benefit-driven points we've got here. If you scroll down, this one just follows the exact same. I'm assuming it's the same same people running the exact same brands, okay? But let's look at two more examples just to uh, solidify exactly what it is I've been talking about in this video. You can see here, again, this one is, um, they've got a, a word play, which is the name of the product. Again, they look like they own and they're their brand owner of this product, Audible flashcards, unlock your child's brilliance. So instead of just calling it WordPlay, WordPlay, you can see that they've expanded on that and it's called unlock your child's brilliance, which again, you know, how many parents don't want to unlock their child's brilliance and have a, a genius kid, you know? So that's pretty cool that you can do very easy, very free stuff. And you don't need to have hard codes and, and all that kind of stuff to do this. High quality products, a high quality, high quality product images we can see here. Okay, putting these together. Again, this is just, you can find all these images and you can put them on a different background in Photoshop or Canva or whatever it may be. Very easy to do so. Now, one thing that these guys are doing, and I would recommend you do this only when you have a winning product, okay, is creating an ebook, okay? Now, again, this is this when they, someone purchases this product, they're going to get access to two free ebooks. And what does this do? This um, expands the offer, right? It, it makes the offer much more valuable, which means, again, if you've got an irresistible offer that they can't get anywhere else, because they may be able to purchase this product from, let's say, Amazon or wherever it may be, but if they come to this store, they're going to get two free ebooks that their kids can utilize. It's like extra value. Now, you may be wondering how on earth do you actually come up with an ebook? Well, very simple, uh, very easy to do. Just use ChatGPT, okay? You can literally just use ChatGPT and uh, it will spin up, you know, ask it for five ideas. I'm selling X products, give me five ideas for five ebook ideas. It will do it. And then you just got to break it down. It'll, it'll even write the whole thing for you. So, again, like I mentioned, only do this for winning products. It's pointless doing it for uh, something that you're testing out. You're just going to waste time. Again, have a look. Benefit driven bullet points we've got here. We keep scrolling down. Cool thing that they got uh, here as well is obviously some. Um, Points here of obviously, again, um, trusted points. So 128 trial, they get a trial, they get uh, free shipping, easy returns, and obviously a review here as well. Um, elevate your child's cognitive skills. Again, we've got a headline there. Keep scrolling down. You can see that everything in these f has all of those things that I've mentioned in the slideshow, right? Um, testimonials they've got here. It's just laid out in a different way. They've got the benefit points of how does it actually work? Okay, scroll down, what's installed, how does it actually work here? Again, if we scroll down, they've got uh, frequently asked questions, a guarantee, and again, reviews, okay? So last one, 
Um, this one is had a lot custom coded, but if you actually scroll down, this is probably where most people would start. Again, benefit driven points we've got here. These are very high quality images. They don't do any much overlays, but they are high quality images. If we scroll, we can see again, um, benefit driven bullet points that you can do very, very easy to do. Uh, these guys are, again are also offering off an ebook because it's a one product store. They've got those in there. If you have a look again, top benefit of this before and after, we've got top benefit, another top benefit. If we keep scrolling down, we have testimonials. Keep scrolling down. This is obviously uh, five reasons why, which they're using um, some authority figure here to just help solidify the social proof here as well. Keep scrolling down. They've got more social proof here as well. Keep scrolling down. They've got us against um, other alternatives because you've got to remember that, again, if you're selling a product which is a problem solving product, a lot of people are going to be in the market or have tried previous things before. So if you're selling a specific product, you've got to make sure that your product is different. And if you try and explain the unique mechanism of your product and why it's better and superior to some of the previous things that they may have um, tried out before and how your product's going to solve their problem. Have a look here. We've obviously got the guarantee as well. FAQs, uh, if you keep scrolling down, they've got reviews, right? So like I've mentioned, um, it literally just follows all of these things. If you just put all of these components inside of a product page, there's um, a much higher chance for you to have success. And I see a lot of you know, new drop shippers trying to come into the game, just throw something up that works, rip off some AliExpress images, put it on there, use chat GPT to try and come up, you know, here's my product, here's my description, you know, here, no, write me a product description for this product and literally just swipe that and just put it on their store and wonder why shit don't convert. The reason why it don't convert is because you don't have these things. You, you know, if you're spending money on Facebook ads, yes, you can use chat GPT to come up with product descriptions, but first you have to, you know, understand the product research, who's going to buy it and why they're going to buy it. And I think we're going to have a video on how do you can actually leverage AI um and correctly use chat gpt the correct way but you can't just half heart things you know not in 2023 anyway it's, it's you can't just do that unfortunately so hopefully you got some value from this video and you understand again you can have a look at those examples um base your store off those examples as long as it's got these things in here and you take time before actually spending money on facebook ads running traffic to a product page um take your time with it and you will have success so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Yo, okay, so in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you how you can leverage AI in your dropshipping business, okay? Now, again, you've probably heard of artificial intelligence, AI, chat GPT, and all these different tools. And personally, if you're a logical person and you have common sense, you should be leveraging these tools because there's no reason why you wouldn't want to use something that's going to make your life a hell of a lot more easier, right? So if you're not, using AI and you're against it, you are either personally, you're either stupid or you are incredibly naive about things. So let's talk about that. Again, um, I'm gonna show you how to utilize it, some different prompts. We do have a full um, prompt course, which we'll probably put down below as well, so you can get all of the prompts, right? So first things first is, this is how most people utilize like ChatGPT. They'll say something like, you know, I'm selling a dog toy, um, you know, just write me a hundred word product description and they'll take something like this, right? And then go ahead and put this on our product page. And that is the worst thing that you can do because it's it's trash, it's, it, it, it won't convert at all. Now, one thing I personally like to do is using something called modifiers, right? And this is where you can get ChatGPT to harness its very true power. And I'm gonna give you some examples of, of this anyway, right? So you can see here, um, I personally like to get it to, before I even ask it a question, I'll like get it to emulate a certain type of person, uh, job role or persona. And you can see I've done it here, right? I've said you are world-class direct response copywriter, emulating Eugene Swartz, um, Gary Halbert and Dan S. Kennedy, who are very famous copywriters, direct response copywriters. Write me a product description using hundred words, break it up in their writing style, call out the problem and provide um, a solution again, emulating those great copyrights. And you can see here that it's came, this is for an indestructible dog toy, by the way. So this whole thing, the thread is about an indestructible dog toy. Um, so you can see here, attention dog owners, is your home a graveyard of shredded toys? Tired of replacing them every single week? Discover the, whatever it may be, um, engineered from high quality, blah, blah, blah. No mess, no more waste, just pure and old today, uh, an adultery to fun, um, vibrant colors, whatever it may be, blah, 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 right? That's just one way that you can use it. And um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you like 
um, the, the, because when it comes down to product research, when it comes down to uh, writing product descriptions, it, it's very much a two part process. So first and foremost, you have like the product research, not product research, customer research of understanding who it is you are selling to. Okay. And uh, then obviously the copywriting prompts of, you know, to structure different stuff. And then all you are pretty much is just being an architect and putting pieces together, if that makes sense. Right. But if you don't, you can't just come up with a product description without first and foremost doing product research and getting ideas from chat GPT. And second of all, doing some real life uh, research, like, you know, going on Amazon and looking at the five star reviews and understanding why someone is purchasing a specific product. Okay. Because that's going to help you literally supercharge your product descriptions. Uh, and in turn, obviously your conversion rate. So another way that you can use uh, ChatGPT is obviously just getting it to come up with brand names. This is something that I like to do all the time. Um, especially if I'm coming up with a new store, whatever it may be, you can do this. It comes up with some pretty cool ones. Again, for this is for a dog brand, Porcelain Palace, etc. Some of these might not be available, but um, at least then if they aren't, you can always play around with the name. So instead of having perfect picks, we would have like my perfect picks or the perfect picks. Um, and then that way, nine times out of 10, you can very much just go on GoDaddy or any domain registrar and find yourself a domain like this, right? Um, another cool way that you can use ChatGPT is obviously by asking it for colors um, of a theme. Um, and then if you scroll down, these are these are the more things, the, this is more about product descriptions and how I like to use it. So first and foremost, like I mentioned, it's a two part. So first and foremost, we need the customer research, right? And that is you can't sell to someone if you don't understand what it is they want. So I like to use prompts like these, and I'll show you some examples of these that, that I've put in there um, to get a, a better understanding of who it is you're selling to. Because then you can create your angles and it's very easy to stitch stuff together once you understand these things. So you can see here I've put, um, you know, I'm selling an indestructible dog toy that stops dogs wrecking their house and keeps them entertained. What type of person would be most likely to buy this? And again, it's going to give us some um, some customer avatars that we could essentially build our angles around. So dog owners, uh, busy lifestyle, people who own dogs, but they're busy. First time dog owners. That's a specific avatar and type of person who's just literally purchased their first dog. It's all completely new. The dog is probably, you know, again, got high energy levels it's got you know it's not been trained at all and they're probably wrecking everything in the house i don't know a dog but nine times out of ten i've seen the stories okay and i got a few other ones that we've got down here so another massive question that i used that i always like to ask right is what are the daily struggles problems and issues a person would face that this product would solve what frustrates them annoys them and worries them okay this is a very important thing because um, that way we're going to, again, come up with the angles and this, again, if we're selling this products, we can, we can use these inside of our, uh, copywriting and come up with a, you know, a fire source, uh, product description that's going to convert. So again, people who are buying this, who are going to buy this toys, ultimately they're having to completely replace dog toys over and over and over and over again. Okay. So that's one angle that we've got here. Boredom induced destruction. So for example, when dogs are bored um, and they're understimulated, they've got dead toys, um, then obviously they just turn to messing around with wires and all that shoes and whatever it may be. Another one, separation anxiety. So again, uh, dogs get ang uh, separation anxiety when they go out for work and they're left in the house all day. They just turn rebel and do you know crazy stuff. But again, you can see here, these are all of the different um, things. And again, the environmental concerns. So you know, again, people who are conscious about the environment, you know, they're having to buy these toys, they're wasting money and they're just throwing them out, throwing them out, throwing them out, throwing them out. Now you got to remember that when you are uh, doing this kind of thing, okay, you are building up these angles that you can use inside of your product descriptions. And these can also be used as captions and stuff like that inside of our adverts. Um, from that, once you understand who is actually purchasing the product, and what I would also say is that this just isn't enough, by the way, you know, this, this isn't enough. One thing you obviously have to do as well is making sure that you go and actually really understand why someone actually is buying this product. Because if you go to Amazon, for example, have a look at the one star reviews. Um, no, I mean, the, the, the five star reviews, you're going to get uh, patterns and you're going to see patterns of what people have been saying about why they actually purchased the indestructible dog toy, you know, and those are just kind of stories and things that you can use inside of your product descriptions. That, again, these, this is how you get high converting product descriptions guys. So another thing again, is once you've actually done your customer research, and again, some of the things that I like to put in there is like identify the top five customer pain points that, uh, this would solve. 
you know, uh, what are the common objections or thought processes that they would have before actually buying the product? And again, ChatGPT is going to throw this stuff off based on the information that it has in its system. Again, the only way you're going to be able to validate that is based on obviously doing actual research. But if we continue on, um, then once you've got this information, you can formulate it, you can then talk about actually the benefits of this product. So one thing that I always do is just, you know, what are the main benefit points of this product? And again, it's going to show you the durability, mental stimulation, cost effectiveness, pretty much answering everything that is on here. Okay. We continue to keep scrolling down again headlines i like to use it for headlines you can see here this is one that i really do like to use um it's a specific format the when it comes to chat cheap chat gpt the um the in, your, the outputs are going to be very he heavily determined on how good your inputs are and when you constrain chat gpt and ask it certain things in a specific way you can get really good answers so for example i've put you know give me five captivating headlines for my indestructible dog toy which follows this specific format which is start with how to which gives the solution promise uh say in which states the time frame and then without which removes the skepticism the main pain point that would stop them from buying and then end with even if which again um if, if they've obviously you know, tried everything, anything else, which a lot of people have. So some of these are really, really good that we could use again as headlines in our um, copy or for our titles or even for our, uh, our ad copies on our Facebook ads. So, you know, how to keep your dog entertained for hours without constraint, without constant toy replacements, even if they're an aggressive chewer. Um, another one is how to reduce your dog's destructive behavior in just 10 days without spending a fortune on toys, even if nothing else has worked. That's a really good one there, right? You know, that would call people out massively. And that's, that's it's actually pretty good. I'll probably use this myself. Okay. So you can see here, here how, you know, using um, chat GPT can be really, really good. And there's so many things that you can do, such as asking it for reviews. You know, you can ask it for, again, different copies, hooks here. You can see here, tired of constantly replacing your dog's destroyed toys. Long lasting, durable, keeps dog entertained for hours, reduces blah, 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 statement hook. Um, these are all prompts that I like to use. And again, if you want to ask it for ebooks, et cetera, and stuff like that, you can do so. Now, moving on from ChatGPT, another thing that you could use, another tool that I recently found was something called um, Pixel Cut. And again, instead of just taking AliExpress white background photos, you can use this. It's free for now. Um, again, it's pixelcut.ai, I think it is. And you can generate. Um, uh, I, AI product, uh, product pictures. So you can see here, I've got these gloves, these obviously pet gloves, which removes the hair from pets. And what you can do is you can do it on all sorts of different backgrounds. So for example, if I click on some of them are stupid, so some of them don't really work, work, work that good. If I just put this one in like garden, let's see what this looks like. Um, obviously the first ones were on marble here as well. And, um, so again, they're not garden gloves, but you can see here that, and you just pick one that is like, you know, fairly obvious. So let's say for example, carpet would kind of fit with this because it's a, it's a home grooming product. So you find like carpet home and those kind of things, and you literally just generate them. And again, like I mentioned, it's free. So you could use something like this, right? Instead of having a plain white background on, um, on your Shopify store, and it's going to stand out a lot better. Again, here's another one, which is good. And again, if you have a look and go and have a look at the other uh, video that I've done around product pages, then you'll know that spending time and effort on your product images is going to help you sell much more products. So again, you know, you could use something like this, which is going to be a hell of a lot more better. You just download it, upload it, boom, job's done. So hopefully you got some value from this video and you now know how to leverage AI, uh, make your life a hell of a lot more easier, get things done a hell of a lot more quicker, improve your workflow, and um and yeah you know come up with ideas and those kind of things and, and get it to do a lot of the heavy lifting so you pretty much are just the orchestrator piecing parts together and that's how you come up with a high converting um, product descriptions products pages websites uh ads and that kind of stuff so hopefully you got some value from this video and i'll see you in the next one so on to module two now, and this is all about product research. We're going to be teaching you exactly how we find six and seven figure winning products. And we've given you over 10 different strategies that you can go ahead and utilize. Product research is super important because if you choose a bad product or one which is saturated, you're going to lose a lot of money or get returns. And conversely, if you choose a good product, you're going to end up making a lot of profit. So let's dive right into it. So in this video, I wanna talk about products to avoid because not every single product 
product is a product that you should be selling. So let's talk about the products that you should try to avoid drop shipping, especially if you are drop shipping from China. So these are the products that you want to try and avoid. So first and foremost, trademarks and copyrighted products. If you're selling anything which has a trademark or copyright, like for example, if you're trying to sell Star Wars stuff or Harry Potter stuff, you will just end up getting a CND, which is a cease and desist from the company. And essentially you can potentially get sued as well. So Fortnite products, you know, anything along the lines which already has a trademark or a popular movie or a popular show or anything like that, completely avoid those products. Now in the bottom left, we have low margin products. Now low margin products won't make you any money when they are scaled. And when we talk in another video about the five step framework, we'll talk a little bit more about the, the margins you should be looking for and stuff like that. But if you're trying to sell low margin products, then you won't make any money. You may make some money when you first start testing out, but then when you start to scale, your cost per acquisition and prices start to increase, you're just gonna be break even or make it, not making any money, okay? Now, top right hand corner, we have generic BS, right? So generic BS is like, for example, trying to sell pens or nail clippers or, you know, any generic stuff that can be found in local stores. These products will not sell. They are, they don't have any wow effect most of the time. So they're not just going to work because when you're selling on Facebook or any sort of advertising platform, you're looking for impulse purchases and selling generic BS is not going to be, you know, anything that's going to spur that impulse purchase behavior okay the final one is very expensive electricals now if you're selling very expensive electricals it could leave you out of pocket now this one is i'm not saying don't completely do it it's just try to be careful and you know potentially avoid it if you can because if you are selling expensive electricals and for some reason there's some fault with the product then you're going to be left out of pocket especially if you're drop shipping this product from china okay so they are four types of products that i would genuinely advise you guys to try to avoid and there's tons of products out there that aren't in these categories that you can sell ladies and gentlemen in this video i'm going to show you and give you the winning product anatomy i'm going to break down exactly what makes a winning product and different product types and examples of both so that you get a full understanding so this is the DNA of a winning product. And a winning product will typically fall into one or two of these two categories on the screen. So on the left hand side, we have it solves a problem and we call these problem solving products. And on the right hand side, we have the unique products which have a, a kind of like a wow effect to them. So let's start with the products on the left hand side and we call these problem solving products. So these products solve a problem as mentioned that the customer has. Now the solution is the product. So whatever problem that the person is having, your product is the solution. Now typically most solutions are saving someone time or saving the money. Or for example, if you think about beauty products, beauty products give people confidence or they, you know, they make them look better or feel a certain type of way. These are what we call problem solving products. And these are typically kind of like the easier products to sell on Facebook. Now on the opposite side, we have products which have, you know, they don't solve a problem as such, but they are unique and have like some sort of wow effect. You find a lot of these products on like TikTok, for example, these toys and gimmicks and those kind of things, which again, they don't solve a problem, but they are, when you look at the product, you think, wow, that's cool. Now these products are not found in the high street. They're very unique. You can't really find them on your normal high street Tesco's or Walmart. Now they are generally best sold or easier to sell these kind of products to if they have a passionate audience behind them. For example, you may ask, what is a passionate audience? Now a passionate audience could be parents. So if you're selling a toy, right? Toys don't solve any problem, problems whatsoever, but they will be wow and unique and the passionate audience behind them are parents and parents want to obviously give their kids the best and make them smile. And for example, pet owners, pet owners are also passionate people. Or another one would be hobbyists you know people who enjoy a specific hobby so typically the dna of a winning product will always fall into one or two of these categories and you always need to be asking yourself these questions does the problem does the product that you are selling solve you know jump into one of these two categories so now i want to give you some examples of both of those so let's talk about the first type of winning product which is a problem solving product now this is just an example, um, but I, you can see here, I've got a dog hand shower on there. On the left hand side in that screen, you will see what the product is. Basically to give you an example of what the product is, um, they put this, you know, this scrubber on their hand, they attach it to a hose and they're able to brush their dog, 
right? While showering a dog all together. So they don't have to have two things, the hose in one hand and you know a brush in the other hand. So why does this product work? Well, this product works because it solves a problem. Dog owners don't have to use both hands while bathing their dog and holding the hose, like I've mentioned, in one hand and then scrubbing their dog in the other. It also saves the dog owner time because you know the dog is going to be more enjoyable getting their bath this way. And also if they can get the job done hell a lot more quicker and use less equipment, then again that's another win-win. Now also it's cool, unique, and has a wow effect because it looks fairly, fairly cool. You look like some sort of X-Men or, or some you know, superpower when you've got it on your hand. So that has another added effect as well. And finally, of course, dog owners are very passionate people. So this is an example of a problem solving product. So here's an example of a wow and unique product that doesn't solve any problem whatsoever, right? So on the left hand side, you can now see this scarf of which is this young little girl is wearing. And essentially it looks cute. So what it does is they can put their, it's hand knitted and they can turn themselves into a unicorn and it keeps them warm at the same time. Now, why does this product work? Now it's extremely unique, cute, and you won't find this in your local Tesco's or Walmart's or anything like that, right? Now this product also has a passionate audience to target. So parents and grandparents, guardians, you know, carers are gonna see this, especially in the winter times, they're gonna look at this and think, oh wow, that's so cute, you know, and purchase it for their, you know, their daughters or their granddaughters. Now, again, like I mentioned, this one here is, is seasonal for the winter time, and it could be good for a ex you know, for Christmas or a birthday present. So this is why this product would work, and you could work fantastically just using it as a image ad. Finally, I just wanna talk about the product archetypes. So you do have different types of products, okay? So for example, you have trending products. Now, trending products are products which are popular during a specific time period. Now, if you cast your mind back to when fidget spinners were going absolutely viral across the place, they were something that were essentially trending. So something that's trending within a specific time period, you can hop on that trend and make a lot of money. Now, in between, you can see that we've got seasonal products. Now, seasonal products perform best during a specific season. It's kind of self-explanatory. But for example, if you're selling camping equipment, then typically camping equipment isn't going to be, you know, making crazy amount of sales in the winter time. Now on the flip side, if you were selling skiing products, skiing products aren't gonna be sold in the summertime. They're gonna, you're gonna have a very good boom in the winter times and earlier in the year in the January and February times. So you can still make money with certain products in different seasons and seeing big booms and sales increases in those seasons. Now the final thing is obviously evergreen products. Now evergreen products are products that can be sold any year around, regardless of seasons, regardless of whether it's trending or not. Now if you think about this, let's say for example beauty products. Beauty products are stuff which again are just gonna inspire, give people confidence or make them feel good about themselves. And people wanna feel good about themselves any time in the month, any time in the year. So these are products that, that we call evergreen that you can sell throughout the year, no matter what time it is. Right, so this is a very, very, very important video and it's about assessing product viability because not every single product out there should be tested, right? And a lot of newbies go ahead and they spam test tons of products and that's why they lose money. So you need a five-step framework in place for you to be able to exclude products, which is going to, first and foremost, you know, save you money because you're not spending money on spam testing products. And then you're going to have a higher increase in your hit rate because you're only testing products that are proven or have a higher potential to have success. So this is the five phase framework. So first and foremost, the first phase is you need to find a product, right? And in this video, we're gonna give you tons of free methods and also paid methods that you can use to find products. The second phase then is obviously you need to ask the question, does it solve a problem or is it unique or wow and has that kind of effect on people when it's when you're showing the advert to the people, right? And like I mentioned in the previous video, they're the two main categories that a winning product will fall into. Now, the third phase is can you actually source the product? Because you may see some products out there that are absolutely crushing it, but when you do your research and you're having a look on AliExpress, for the supplier, you just can't find it. You know, maybe it's a private label product or maybe it's something which has been custom made. If you can't find a product, then you can't sell it, right? The fourth phase, and this is a very, very, very important one, is is there enough margins inside of the product for you to sell at scale? Now, uh, a basic rule of thumb is, of course, making sure you can 3x the cost of goods. So if you're buying something for $5, no, $10, for example, you wanna make sure that you're selling it for at least $30 
nothing less. Um, you know, and another thing that we like to do is making sure that we have a 65 gross margin inside of the product as well and having a break even ROAS of under 1.75. Now, I'm going to show you a calculator that we use and we give to our mentor students so they can quickly and easily understand whether or not our product has the margin inside of it for that makes it worth actually testing out. So this is our break-even ROAS calculator that we give to our mentor coaching students. And you can see here, it quickly shows you what the break-even ROAS is based on your cost of goods and your Shopify selling price. And then it gives you some ranges here as well of what you would be making, depending on whatever your ROAS goal is inside of Facebook. So to change these around, let's say, you know, I see a lot of people selling stuff, they can get it for 40, but uh, they can get it for 20, but they're selling it for 40. And you can see here that the break even ROAS, when you take into account your, you know, your cost of goods and little fees and stuff like that, you end up at a break even ROAS of 2.14, which is absolutely ridiculous because on average a 2.14 should be profitable and you should be making money. So in this instance, again, I see a lot of new people selling products, which again, have no margin inside of it or making it extremely difficult for you to even make any money. So again, if we just tamper with these numbers and let's say we were getting it for, you know, $8, then it's going to throw up a break even ROAS of 1.3, which is fantastic. You know, this is what we like to work with anything under 1.75. And again, like I mentioned, this is a break even ROAS calculator, just so our coaching and mentor students can quickly and easily work out whether or not it's worth actually even selling a product or not. Now, the final phase is, of course, is there existing content to use? Now, if you are testing a product and you're doing just your initial testing, you can't just go and create user-generated content or custom content yourself because it's going to take way too long for you to even test out any products. So one thing you need to do is you need to see if there is any existing content out there already for you to use. If there's only one video, then again, you're gonna, you may have some success really early on, and then you know it's probably gonna die off, and then you're probably gonna need to go out and make your own custom content. Whereas if there was a significant amount of existing content out there already being used, then you can piece that together, and you're gonna have a lot more to then first and foremost get past that first hurdle and sustain the product while you then in succinctly, once you find out that it's a winner, you can then go ahead and order the product to yourself or send it out to influencers and have your own custom content that you can scale with. So this five phase framework is going to help you analyze whether or not you should even bother to test out a product or not. So one method you can use to find winning products is just scrolling in your Facebook newsfeed. Right now, you can see I'm inside of my Facebook newsfeed on the desktop, and I've came across this product here while just scrolling down my newsfeed naturally. Now, I know that this is an advert because if you have a look here by the page that's running the advert, you can see underneath it says sponsored, which tells me that this is a sponsored advert from an advertiser. Now, the reason why I stopped scrolling on this specific product here is because the amount of engagement that it has. Now, if you have a look at down here, you can see that it's got 5.5 thousand likes on the actual product itself, the advert itself. It's got 400 comments and 421 shares. Now, this stands out to me that it's potentially good because obviously the more engagement an advert has, the more likely they're first and foremost making money with it. And secondly, that the people who they're showing it to actually like the advert as well. So this would be something that would stand out to me. And I would obviously, this could be a potential winning product for me. So I want to do some more investigating further to see, you know, how many ads they're running and all that kind of stuff, right? So one natural thing that you can do is you're scrolling down your feed. And when you come across something that looks like this, that stands out, you want to make sure that you do a few things. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you save this ad. So you want to click on this and you want to click on save ad, and it's going to go into your saved ads because for whatever reason, if you refresh the page or you continue scrolling and you lose it, you want to make sure that you can get back to it at any time. So always save the ad in the first instance. So one thing you can do is you can click on the comments and have a look at the comments of what people are saying about this product. Now, if you have a look here, it could, it, this one here says, you know, this woman says she's purchased a few things off Facebook before, which haven't been great, but this one was a huge hit, which tells us that this product itself actually works and cat owners actually like the product. Now, what you can do is you can also like this actual advert and you can comment if you want to. Um, that's going to signal, face, signal to Facebook that you are potentially, you know, um, like this product and they're going to show you more products like this. But we can take that a step further by actually going to the website and doing a little trick that I'm about to show you now. 
So what you want to do is click on shop now and go to the website of the product. So once you're on the product page, what you want to do is you want to trigger the pixel as much as you possibly can to signal to Facebook that you are interested in products like this. Now to see what you're triggering, essentially what you want to do is you want to get this free Chrome extension, which is called Facebook Pixel Helper. If you do a Google, you will be able to find it. Again, it's 100% free. And if you have a look on the page, you can see that right now we are only triggering the view content, which is essentially just viewing this page, right? Now, if I then go ahead, what you want to do is you always want to add it to the, add it to your cart, okay? And if I keep this up and click on continue, right? And if you be able to see now, it says add to cart because that's what we've triggered. And it will also trigger the initiate checkout as well, or it should at, need, it should at least trigger the initiate checkout. I've already been through this funnel anyway, so um, that's probably why it's not triggering it because I've already, got, I've already done it before, right? But what you wanna do is you always wanna make sure when you're on Facebook, you wanna go through and actually get to the initiate checkout part because what's going to happen is this is going to signal to Facebook that you are interested in products like this and they're then going to show you more products like this because they think you are a potential buyer, okay? So if you don't have and you're not finding any winning products or, or Facebook isn't showing you any products, when you find one, always make sure you do those things that I've mentioned inside of this video. So like it, save it, um, you know, comment on it if you want to, go through the funnel, add it to cart, and make sure you go to the checkout as well. It's gonna be super important for you to find more winning products. So another way to find winning products is using Facebook ads library. Now, every single ad that is running on Facebook is inside of the ads library, okay? Now, let me show you how to use it, right? So first and foremost, you will have all of the different countries where you want to be searching from. Now, um, if you want this on all, so you could, if you wanted to find all ads, you could leave this on here. And this category, you always wanna make sure that this is on all ads as well. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm only just gonna search for United Kingdom just for now. Um, and I'm just gonna put it on all ads. Now in here, what you want to do is you wanna be putting in keywords that essentially other advertisers are using or other words that would be very relevant to a dropshipping ad. So for example, get 50% off or you know free shipping or get yours here, get yours now, those kind of things. So if we just type in here like, you know, get yours, right? And we just run a search. So what this is going to do is this is going to run a search for the word get yours, United Kingdom, all right? Now, it's a little bit tedious, but you will find that there will be some ads that pop up. So for example, this one here. Let's, if we have a look at this here, you can see that it looks like some sort of dog collar. Um, you know, it's got three ads running. Now, the more ads that something has running, the better. Essentially, you know, they're spending more money, but we could also have a look at their page as well to see how many more ads they are running as well. This is gonna take me to their page and show me all of the ads that they are running right now. So you can see that these guys only have 39 results running at the moment in time. Now, the more the ads that they have running, the more they're probably spending on Facebook and the more money they are probably making. So this is a one good sign, is always having a look to see how many ads they, they are running. Another sign that you wanna have a look on is seeing when the actual ad started. Now, if we scroll down here, you can see that this one has only started on the December, December 19th, which is very recent, which means that these may not be greatest winning products because they've only just started. But uh, if this was, let's say for example, you know, um, November, then we'd know that this product here has been running for a long period of time. So that's another thing that you want to do, okay? He's having to check out that. Another thing, like I mentioned, is how many ads that they're running for a specific creative. So you can see that they're running three ads for this specific creative, three ads for this one. Now, the one that has the most, let's say, for example, this was 14, we could assume that this is their best creative because they're running it in a lot more ads than these other different creatives, okay? So this is another way that you can use the Facebook ads library to find winning products. And you can search for, again, any country that you want to, um, any keyword in here as well. It just takes a time to scroll down and see, you know, like for example, this has got 10 here. So these could be the better creatives for a different product, of course, but you just wanna be going through and testing. It does take a long time to kind of scroll, um, but what we're going to show you later on in this course is a quick and easy and automated way for you to search Facebook ads library and find and snipe out these winning products a hell of a lot more quicker. Now you can use Facebook ads library, like I've mentioned, to find any of the ads that are coming from any specific page. 
Now to show you to how to use this in conjunction with the previous method, how I showed you how to find products by using the news feed, what you can do is obviously if you came up on here and you actually opened up the product page, once you're on the product page, if you go down where it says page transparency, you can click on see all. And here what you can do is you click on this where it says go to ads library and click on this button here. You can see here that we can see all of the ads that these guys are now running. And if you have a look, you can see that these guys are running 480 results, which means they are spending a hell of a lot of money on Facebook ads across all of these different products, okay? So like I mentioned, you can use different strategies in conjunction together to find winning products. So if you find something in your newsfeed, then you can just do exactly what I've showed you and see what other products they are using. Or alternatively, if you just want to use the, you know, the Facebook ads library this way by typing in keyword search, then you can also do that as well. So two very powerful ways of finding winning products and best of all, they're both free. Okay, so one way you can find winning products utilizing TikTok is by using TikTok desktop. Now, I'm gonna show you how to use TikTok on desktop, and then in another video, we'll show you how to find winning products using TikTok on mobile, because both of them have their pros and cons. But for this video, let me show you how to use TikTok desktop to actually find winning products, right? So first thing you want to do is you can use it pretty much like Facebook ads library is by using keyword search. Now again, same thing is like get yours off 50% off, but you wanna use different things like, let's say for example, TikTok made me buy it, okay? And what you wanna be doing is going around and having a look at some of these different videos, right? Now. With these, of course, the main indicator of how well it potentially can do is how viral it has gone. Now, not all of these are gonna be drop shipping products, okay? Um, for example, this one is not, I don't think is a drop shipping product, but some of these other ones will be drop shipping products, okay? Now, for this here, you can see here how many actual views it's got. Now, it was launched on, the video went live on the 2nd of 13, which is earlier this year, but you can see here it's got 39.1 million views, right? So something about this actual video people like, right? Same with this product here. This is a dog product. It's got 20 million point seven million views, okay? Absolutely, you know, banging, which means that something about this people like. So if you actually click on this video, so what you wanna do is you wanna come and click on the button and have a look and see what the comments are saying, right? So if we scroll down here, we can see that some people, if, they, if, if in these comments people are saying, where can I get this from? I need this drop a link, I bought this, it was amazing, etc., etc. We then again have a second layer of validity that this is good. So first and foremost, it's got fantastic interaction. And second of all, people are asking where they can actually get this product from. Now you can also use TikTok and just use random keywords, for example, for a specific product like pet, dog, whatever it may be. So you can see here, I've just literally just put in the word toys. Now again, like I mentioned, you're not gonna be able to source all of these finding them and not all of these are gonna be drop shipping products, but some of them will be. And for example, this one here, I know that this is definitely a drop shipping product that you can get on AliExpress. You can see here that this has 34.5 million views. So again, something like this, I would look into this creative is working on TikTok and could potentially work on Facebook. Another thing that you can do using TikTok is using Amazon Finds to find creators who are consistently reviewing new and latest trending gadgets and those kind of things. So if you type in like Amazon Finds, um, I know that this guy, so we'll just use him as an example, who reviews the latest kind of you know gadgets and cool hacks and those kind of things. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of a hack and a free tool that you can use to find the most viral videos that these guys or a specific uh, profile has put out. So if we have a look on his profile, you can see that this guy just reviews tons and tons of products. And some of these are gonna be absolutely viral bangers that we can use and test out, right? But the question is, how do we actually know which ones are the best ones? Now, the best ones, like I've mentioned, are most of the time gonna have the most amount of views. Now we could scroll down here for ages, but I'm gonna show you a little hack. So you wanna get this free extension, which is called Sort for TikTok, okay? Again, it's 100% free, you just called Sort for TikTok. And if I click on Start, what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and rearrange all of this guy's videos from the most viral videos that he has, 
right? All the way down to the least viral videos that he has. Now the question is, how do we know which ones are viral and which ones aren't? Obviously, naturally, the viral ones are going to have the most amount of views. So all of the all of the views that are getting the most, we, they're going to be sorted from the top. And then all the ones that are the least are going to be sorted from the bottom. So it's finished doing its job. And you can see here that, again, it's got 30 mil, the most viral video that he has on his profile. And again, they're all being sorted in the ones which have the most views all the way down to the least views. OK, so these products, there's something about these products that people like and they have virality, which can work on Facebook or even TikTok or any other platform. OK, so that's one way how you can use this little tool hack. Um, to find winning products. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you are on your TikTok app on your phone, right? Now, if you're not following me, this is my profile. It's the beast of Ecom and um, you can go follow my brother, which is the Ecom wizard. Okay. And we want to do first and foremost, is you want to go on home and you use it in the same way as you was using the kind of desktop using certain keywords, right? But there's a, a certain thing you can do on the mobile that you can't do on the desktop. So what we want to do first and foremost is you click on the top right hand corner where that little icon was and you can search for specific keywords. And you can see here, I've got a few in here like TikTok made me buy it 50% off. You can search for a specific word. Let's say, for example, you know, an eye massager, if you wanted to find content for that or a lamp and find different lamp products, etc. Um, if I just click on this here, a cool thing that you can do on mobile is if you click on this, if I type TikTok made me buy it. And in the top right hand corner, we have this thing here, which is like a filter, right? And if we click on that there, we can filter on um, specific things. So if I click on more, right, you can see that I can filter update based on this week, right? Uh, this month, last six months or all time. So this allows you to find products which are recently trending. So if I just wanted to put on this week and what I could also do is type in like count as well. So and only show me the videos that um, have the most amount of likes this week. If I click apply, what it's going to do is it's going to pull up all of these different products, right? You can see here this one here. I'm not sure what on earth this is, but you can see here that it's got uh, 408,000 likes on it. OK, um, if you have a look at this product here, it looks like a, a some sort of eye, some sort of eye product for women. Um, but what we do is you can see here that it's got 255,000 comments on it. So something about this people like. So if I click on this here, right, and uh, we've got people saying, you know, where it, what you want to be looking for is if people are asking where you can get it from, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right. And if we have a look on this here, we want to see what other videos that they have and how much traction they're getting. So you can see here on some of their videos, um, 302,000, 600,000 here on this one, we know that essentially this is something that people like. So what we then go ahead is just first and foremost, just save it, right? So if I just go back to this one here, click on save, and it's going to be added to my favorites where I can go back and find it. So what I've done is I've put in pet gadgets here and I'm actually sorting by the same thing. So weak like count. But if I click on cancel, what's happening is it's not really showing me that many decent products, right? So what you can do is you can either search through these and continue, but you can also just open up the search more. So if I was just to click on this month, click on apply and see if they see if it pulls up anything else that's worth having a look at. If it doesn't, then again, we can open up the search a little bit more. Click on apply. And if we have a look, we can see that we've now got this product here which looks like a dog scooper product, which I know a lot of people have been selling previously before. So this could be a potential product that we could um, test out, right? Because we have some content as well. And also, you know, we can see that it's got 19,000 likes on this. So people like this. This product here, for example, as well. Now, I know that this product, you can't get this on AliExpress. I don't think you can anyway, but I'm just showing you essentially what you can do in terms of just searching different keywords, uh, starting with, you know, the recent ones and then opening up the search more and more and more until you find stuff that you can test out. So another thing you can do and find winning products is just having products come through on your newsfeed on your For You page, right? You'll see that it's an actual advert because if I click replay, at the bottom there, you'll be able to see that it says ad. OK, um, and that's how you know it's an advert. So you'll see that again, same as kind of like Facebook. If 
advertisers are running ads, nine times out of 10, they potentially are making money from it. Not all ads, but some of them, right? And when you find something like this, what you want to do is click on shop now. You want to do the same thing like when you do on Facebook is go go through the process, right? And these are basically a scam because you can't get these for $12 anyway, anywhere. But you want, what you want to do is you want to go through and add it to your cart and go through the checkout again so that TikTok thinks that you are someone who likes you know, a certain specific type of product. And that's how you can get and force TikTok to essentially show you more products. And uh, again, like I mentioned, this is a this is a scam because, and uh, what I actually wanna tell you is, you know, if it's too good to be true, like if you find this product, okay, and you have a look on your research and you find that you can't get this for less than, this is probably like $35, $40, and they're selling it for $12, then it is a scam and you want to skip the product, okay? Because you will not be able to find it. So stores like this are scam, but there are some products um, you'll see that are advertisers that you can potentially find some winning products. Another way you can find winning products is using the TikTok's ads library, right? Now, this is a little bit like Facebook's one, but it's a lot more limited because if I hover over this here, you will see that the, only the ads inside of here are ones that have been authorized by the advertisers. So not every single ad like Facebook is all inside of this uh, ads library, right? And to get this page, all you wanna do is if you just do a Google search, type in TikTok Creative Center, uh, you'll be able to come up with this. And if you wanna save the ads and stuff like that, then you will need to sign up for a TikTok uh, business account, which is fairly quickly to do, right? Now, you can search keywords in here as well. Uh, one thing you want to make sure is that you are, when it clicks on objective, you wanna make sure that you are on conversions, okay? We don't want ads for, app installs, we don't want lead generation, you know, or anything like that. We just want literally conversions, or you can click on product sales if you want to, uh, but these are the, the these are the main ones that you want to have on there, which are gonna be showing you products, okay? Now, not all of these are going to be drop shipping products, okay? Some of them are just gonna be from brands, right? But we know that this is most importantly, this is a drop shipping product, um, you know, that's been running on TikTok for a while now. And also this is another drop shipping product as well. So you wanna identify and see how well this has actually been doing, this creative. So first and foremost, what you can do is if you do have an account, you can save it. So to show you that, if you just click on this here and click on save, right? it will be in your saved ads. Now, if you click on my collections here, it will show you all of the ads that you have previously saved. So if we have a look at this one here and I click on see analytics, it's gonna give us some information about this ad. So what we can see here is the region. So we can see which countries they're actually running this creative in as well. So United States, Netherlands, United Kingdom, Sweden, Belgium, et cetera, et cetera, right? But what we want to be paying attention to is this here, the number of likes that it has and the shares as well. Now, this is for the last seven days. The higher that, of course, this is, the amount of engagement that they're getting, the more likely they're spending money and the more likely it's performing on the front end. So if we change this to 30 days as well, we can see that it's got 6,000, close to 7,000 likes and 222 shares. So we know that this creative itself, if I just click replay on it, we know that this is essentially working for these guys because they wouldn't be running it for 30 days if they didn't, um, if they weren't making any money, right? Now, if you scroll down as well, you'll find sometimes that they'll have some recommended for you ads and these are of different products as well. Sometimes you'll find some good ones in here, but these are all from a brand. So, you know, we're not gonna be able to, these are, just, these are just completely useless to us, but sometimes you'll find some other different products down here um, that you can look deep into as well. Now, if I show you this product in contrast, you can see that this only has three likes in the last seven days and, you know, only 13 in the last 30 days. So to me, again, if it's only just launched, then you know it might be a new product, but to be honest, it's not really, in comparison to the previous products, we know that this isn't getting the engagement that we would like to see. So you know the creative itself or the product itself may not be doing so great. You wanna be finding those products which has a lot of engagement. Now, one thing that you can't do on this is that you can't actually have a look at the website anywhere. So we can only see the creative. We can't look at the website to see how much they're selling it for and stuff like that. But if you actually then, you know, go ahead and Google the name of this product, you'll probably be able to find it on AliExpress. Um, and again, if you go into TikTok and type in the name for this product as well, you're gonna be able to find the name and different creatives as well for this product. So what I've also done is I've just put in the word dog, 
okay and what you can also do is you can filter so these are all uh, different products as well you can see here that these are all good uh, creatives and again we can have a look at the analytics as well but what we can do is we can click on likes and then sort by like the top 61 to 81 percent and if we click on these ones as well what it's going to do is it's going to throw up the best ones with the best creatives that are getting the best amount of engagement and again we can tinker around with this this is only for the last seven days so we've got this um, little mat here again this is a dog winter jacket as well and uh, dog beds etc and dog car lead on this one as well if I change this to 30 days okay this is going to throw up some more um, different products again we've got another pet toy here okay that we could potentially go ahead and have a look if we can find something like this on AliExpress um, this is a pet grooming toy and again I bet you if we just go ahead and have a look on AliExpress we'll be able to find this product as well now remember this is only for the UK so you can change this for you know Australia for Canada United States um, you know you can type in anything you want in here as well and you know it's just a case of going through and finding stuff that catches your eye and if you're a more experienced dropshipper then you'll be able to find um, something that catches your eye a hell of a lot more easier than a newbie but anything that stands out again that fits the parameters of what a winning, what makes a winning product you can find tons of winning products using this free uh, TikTok Creative Center. So I'm gonna show you this method anyway. Uh, it's not something that we personally use a lot of the time anyway, but it's always good to have something like this just inside of your arsenal, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to AliExpress and this is using the AliExpress Drop Shipping Center. So first and foremost, you need to sign up for an account for AliExpress. If you hover over your name and just click on My AliExpress or My Orders or whatever it may be, you'll be confronted with a page like this if you scroll down you'll see something that says ds center okay and what you want to do is you want to click on this button here now you'll next be on a page like this where you can find products or you can look at the top selection okay and also they have a product analysis as well for where you can put in some urls right but for example i'm just going to go back and show you how to find some products on here right so again, same kind of thing as the untap method, but what you're doing is you're looking for stuff that you could potentially use for um, picture ads, okay? You can also click on here as well if you wanted to see if there was video content as well. So if you want to type it on here, and uh, what you can do is, let's say I only wanted to sell toys, okay, for kids, and click on submit. What it's going to do is it's going to pull up all of these different ads with videos so these are all got videos because i've ticked it on like this which means that it also has content which is great now what you can do is you can see that the growth over the last seven days on this one is pretty much zero but some of them will also be increased as well right but if we have a look at this one here and go to go to analyze what it's going to do is it's going to take you to this page here right it's going to show you the how many orders it's had and some of the other uh different like similar products that it's had as well right this is going to give us other sellers and also alternative products so for example you know if we like to look of you know this one here which was getting some decent amount of sales 600 and something sales um, and it's got a decent price and the logistic performance as well is okay uh, as well on this product and again we've got a video here as well that we could potentially use for our ads or at least clip out some parts like that if you have a look at some of these now, you can see that they have a growth rate. So this one has a growth rate of 50%. And if we have a look at this one here, it has a growth rate of 580%, which means a lot of people who are buying this product on AliExpress. Now, AliExpress can sometimes be an indicator of overall market trends. Um, so you can use this as an indicator, but most of the time you're just looking for products that you can use as image ads or alternatively, if you click on video, you know, you'd be looking for uh, products which you can find uh, with good video content. If I click on sales as well, what this is going to do is sort by uh, sales. And again, this was a product that we found previously before doing the Amazon, doing the uh, the untap method. But you know that this is another dropshipping product which a lot of people have also been selling as well. 
So it's good to just come on here and have a look. Again, it's not a method that I use or that we use a lot of the time anyway, but it's always good to just go through here and have a look at some of the filters, uh, the different categories and those kind of things that you can go through and see. Um, you know, and find products using this method. So to give you one last example, you can see here I've put in home appliance in that category there and uh, ticked video. And if I click on this here, this volcanic flame diffuser, it's had 815 sold for this product. Now, if we have a look at the product as well, it's actually had 1700 orders for the products, which means that it's good. You know, it's selling a hell of a lot. They've got a good um, supplier here as well. And people like this product. Now, this actual video itself isn't uh, the greatest, so you probably could use maybe a little bit of clips of it, but what we could do is do some extensive research into this. And let's say if we put that exact same name into TikTok, Volcano, Volcano Diffuser, we can see that there's already drop shippers, you know, selling this products. You can see here, they've got this here. This has got some decent amount of views on it. This one's got some decent amount of views on it. This one's got 2.3 million views on it for the exact same product. So you can see how finding the name of a specific product and then doing some more research into it can help you find those winning products which no one else is selling. So let me show you the way on how you can find the best selling products on any given Shopify store, okay? Now, what I will say is, first and foremost, there are some clever dropshippers out there who actually mask this so they can redirect you or point you in a uh, different, you know, website or point you inside of a different page inside of their store. But for those who don't do that, you can unreveal what their winning products are. Okay. And it's just using a simple string of URL. So here you can see on this product, sometimes some stores don't actually have their best selling, you know, live and available because they don't want other drop shippers to sell those products. So you can see here, we've got this one, here's where this one there, that, 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 etc., etc. These are not in any order whatsoever. If we wanted to find out which of the best selling one on their actual, which, which ones are sold the most units, then we can do something called, uh, you know, sort by best selling. So to do that, again, we'll put the actual URL that you need to put at the end of the main URL. And basically it is the domain name and then collections forward slash all. And then you put a question mark, okay? And I've already got it here. So that, that that's essentially what it is. All sort by, uh, sort underscore by equals best selling. Now, if I click on this here, what it's going to do is it's going to sort all of these by best selling to least best selling, okay? So this is their best selling product. And I bet you if we went and had a look at their Facebook ads library, this would probably be the product that they're selling right now or running the most traffic to. Then it's this, then it's this, then it's this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So this is a way how you can do it by just simply putting in that code, like I've mentioned, that at the end of the URL. Now, like I, will, like I mentioned previously before, some very clever and savvy dropshippers actually redirect this so that for some reason, if you try to go to the URL, it will say, you know, not today, or they'll redirect you to another place. If that's the case, then um, there's no way around it. But for those who don't, this is a way how you can find um, winning products uh, or the best winning products from any other store. Okay, so I'm going to show you this method, which is using in Reddit and subreddits to find untapped winning products. Now this method itself, you probably won't use it that that much, but it's always good to have this in your arsenal and just check in Reddit here and there, okay? Now there's four different subreddits that you should go on to. And the first one, I'll tell you what they are. The first one is didn't know I wanted that, which is this one here. Next one is shut up and take my money. Then you have product porn and I need it. So in these subreddits, people post different cool products and not all of these products are gonna be drop shipping products, right? They'll just be real random stuff. But there are some gold that has been posted in here that a lot of other drop shippers may not be uh, testing out and we can also find them on AliExpress. So to give you an example, you can see that this wind deck product here, okay? This is something that you can just use, kids can use it, you know, or, Anyone can use it just when they're going on long travels and you know pretend to surf in the wind, etc. Pretty cool thing. And you can see how many upvotes it's had. So the more upvotes something has had, the more popular it is. And you can see that this was only posted two days and it's got 166 comments on it. Now, if we go to AliExpress, you can see that we can get this product for absolute pennies. 
So something like this could be actually good to sell on TikTok and not so much Facebook because it's very cool, quirky, and you probably can't find something like this inside of shops. This product here is another TikTok viral product that went viral. And again, you know, if you are on Reddit, you would have picked this one up and could potentially have sold something like this as well. Now, what you can do is if you go onto these ones here, what you can do is you can sort. So if you click on, uh, you know, hot, new or top, if you can just click on top and then you can sort it by time. Uh, most of the time, these ones won't have anything anyway. But if you click on all time and scroll down, you'll be able to find, um, you know, different products. So this is a, another LED light clock. OK, that again, you may be able to find on AliExpress. Uh, this is from Ikea, but I doubt you'll be able to find something like this on AliExpress. But if you could, then this would go absolutely viral as well. Um, scrolling down again, there's just loads of different products that you can find. Um, I'm assuming you can definitely find something like this on AliExpress. It's just pre pretty much a, a pet carrier. And, um, you know, if you go to AliExpress and do some research, we could probably find something like this as well. So, and this product here, this is another example. Um, it's got, you know, 108,000 uh, upvotes on it and uh, 171 comments. Now, if you could find something like this on AliExpress, which I'm pretty sure you can, uh, if you can get it at a reasonable price, this as a picture ad would absolutely crush in the home decor niche. So this is another, um, you know, another untapped method to find winning products that other people won't be testing out. So another method you can use to find winning products is using Amazon movers and shakers. Now, this isn't something that you will use that much, but again, like I mentioned, it's just another good way to have it in your arsenal just in case to check over at some point because you may find a few things here and there. Now, Amazon Move and Shakers essentially is the biggest gainers in sales rank over the past 24 hours, right? So this is always gonna be updated over 24 hours. So these ones are the ones which are seeing an, a significant increase in sales for whatever reason, right? It could be, you know, a certain season, whatever it may be. But these products are essentially hot on Amazon right about now. So, for example, these are all in different, um, different categories. So we've got home improvement here. We've got these ones here. You can always click see more, but I'm not going to go into everything here in this video, right? You can do that in your own time. But for example, this product here, we can see that this is some sort of um, light. So if I click on this product here, you can see there's some sort of LED light, but it's got a unique look to it because it's a, a dinosaur egg, which would probably be a little bit more suited towards kids, okay, or parents for kids who want to help them to sleep. Now, if you go on to AliExpress, you can see that we can actually find this product although it is a little bit expensive, but we can find this product. So that's one way that you can find products. Another thing that you can do, obviously, is going into TikTok and seeing whether or not you can find some video content for this product as well. Another way you can use Amazon is looking at the Amazon most wished for. And by the way, if you want to know how to get to these links, all you got to do is just Google Amazon.com, you know, movers and shakers and the link will pop up, OK, or Amazon most wished for and a link will pop up as well. So these are the products which are most added to the wish list and registries. So basically people are wishing for this product, which means that they are going to buy it sometimes in the future or they like it and they're, you know, they want people to buy it for them, whatever it may be. But there, it shows uh, demand for this product. Now, this is a product that I've previously sold before uh, many years ago, and it, it worked very, very well. But what you would do is the same kind of thing. You would go through uh, the categories and see if there's anything that you can potentially find. Now, remember, a lot of these products are not actually going to be on AliExpress. OK, some of them you won't be able to find them uh, like hand warmers, but it gives you ideas of products. So, for example, you know, this hand strainer, uh, this this strainer here, if I go into um, TikTok and if I typed in the word pasta strainer, you can see that this video here has 4.4 million views on it. OK, uh, this one here has 19K on it. Uh, there's a few other with some decent views on it here and there. So what you would do here is obviously if you find something that you potentially like the look of, you'd go and see if you can find some video content and then potentially test that product out. To give you another example, let's say, you know, this one here in the most wish for in the crafts and arts section, this hand casting kit. If we go into uh, TikTok and have a look, you can see that if we type in those words, we've got loads of different videos of people using the same kind of thing with some decent views on it. Now, you know, that you could use something like this for Valentine's Day, um, you know, for special gifts and those kind of things. 
And like I mentioned, you're not going to use, you're not going to find many winning products utilizing this method. It's not something where you're just going to find loads of winning products, if I'm being perfectly honest. But it's a good strategy to have in your arsenal so that you can, you know, refer back to and get some product ideas as well, so that you can potentially go down the rabbit hole and find other products that you like the look of. Right. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can search AliExpress to find untapped winning products. Now, typically, a lot of the methods that you will find for product research is trying to find stuff which is already proven, right, and already selling for other people. And that's good. That's where you're probably going to get the, you know, the quickest results from and the easiest results from. However, if you can learn how to find untapped winning products, then you can be the first to market and get the best results and scale the quickest because you're the first to the market that no one else has seen the product before. Now, the downside to that is, of course, um, you know, naturally trying to find something which isn't already proven, you're gonna test a hell of a lot of products before you find something that hits, okay? So that's, I'm gonna show you what you can do in this video, okay, to find those kind of products, right? Now, the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you are in incognito. So if you if you look up here, you can see that I'm not signed in. You don't want to be signed in because if you are signed in, then what's going to happen is AliExpress is just going to show you previous searches that you've had before or suggest you previous products that you may have clicked on or saved before. So to get a clean run, make sure you are in incognito and completely signed out so there are no cookies whatsoever, right? Now, there are loads of different products to have a look at, but what we're trying to find is stuff which stands out that we could potentially use as an image ad, okay? So if we look on this home screen here, if I try to find you know stuff that would stand out, first and foremost, you don't wanna be picking products which uh, you, know, you can get anywhere, like for example, this here is not really good. Um, this could potentially be something, and we can see that it's got a lot of products sold. If we look down on this bottom line, things that stand out to me are these here, potentially this as well and this as well but of course this is for um this is copyright because i think it's for guardians of the galaxy or whatever it's called right so you try to find products which stand out right in the news feed that you could use as an image ad now to someone and to the untrained eye this is fairly difficult to do um, but over time you get better so for example if we look at this line this is something which stands out, okay? Um, it's not that expensive. Again, I'm not clicked into it, but this stands out. We could use this as an image ad, and this stands out against all of these products here. Now, we can go through all of these categories. There are tons of different categories inside of here that we can use. So to give you an example, if I just go into home and just go into like, for example, home decor, just to see what we have inside of here and what you can do of course is you can sort by orders now inside of every single category there is other subcategories as well so for example if i wanted to just find wind chimes um you know hanging decorations if i just click on this one here right and then if i sort by orders as well to see what we've got going on we can see here that we're potentially finding some other different products that we could use so for example this here stands out um, stuff with white backgrounds aren't great. Again, this is something else that stands out as well that we could use as a potential image ad, right? And again, if I go back one as well, if I go back and have a look at another one, so fig fig figurines and miniatures, if I click on this one and look on orders, we can see something like this. So this is a, a fairly old product. And I know that a few people have already sold it, but you can see just after a, a few searches, we're coming up with some you know, potential products to test out as image ads. This would work really well for home decor, you know? And we can see that it's got a lot of different, uh, a lot of sold items, which is good. And you always wanna be making sure that stuff has been sold previously before, right? Stuff like these, again, I think these are a little bit too expensive when you actually click in and have a look um, at the actual prices. But what we're trying to do again is find other products which stand out. Another example that stands out is this product here. First and foremost, it's a home decor product. And we know that it has a passionate audience because dog owners and pet owners really do love their pets. And this is like a dog art sculpture, which is fairly unique. And again, a lot of dropshippers may not have actually sold this product before, right? Especially if it's, if it's not on any of the spy tools or you know anything like that. So this could be something that we could potentially test out. Now, to give you another example of what you can do when you're in AliExpress, okay? 
what it will do is it will give you a few things here on the right hand side now these are recommended for you and again it will continue to do this as you do more searches right so one thing if you actually save this okay now i've not logged in but if you were logged in and you click save then it will give you some other different products here as well so you can have a look at those another thing that you can do is you can actually go down right there's two things that you can do first and foremost you can scroll down to the bottom and if we scroll down to the bottom here and have a look at the other recommended products that they have for us so if i get past these reviews here so seller recommendations for you so they have the seller recommend recommendations and they have more to love so these are other different products as well. So we would have a look and see, again, applying the same principles, are there stuff which stands out for us that we could purchase at a, you know, a decent price and have a markup? And if we have a look on these as well, we can have, so this, right? I didn't see this before or this. We didn't see these before. Uh, these ones here, they've sold, you know, and, and this one here, 925 purchases of this product. So people like this product. Again, with this one here. Um, I wouldn't use this because it's very generic and you could probably just get them in any home based store But stuff like this which stands out again these uh, elephants here stand out um, We've got these ones as well And it just takes you down this rabbit hole um, Again, this is a, a product which has been ran for uh, another brand But we would have a look at that and see what uh, you know See if they've got other products that we could sell now If you scroll back up to the top what you can do is you can actually click on the store that's selling this product and if we have a look at the actual store and we click on top selling, we can see what their top selling products are. So if we have a look on here, we can see that this is their top selling products, which has got 333 purchases. Again, this, which we've just seen a moment ago, and these kind of products. So you can continually go down this rabbit hole of trying to find suppliers, products, and just digging deep to find those unique products that you could use as Potentially image ads because you know most of these products because they're untapped there won't be any video content that you can use anyway So nine times out of ten you're going to be using these as you know image ads But this is a fantastic way for you to find these untapped products Which no other drop shippers are selling you can be the first to the market and scale them insanely now One of the ways you can find winning products is just looking at the guru videos Okay now one thing I will say you will find these videos dropping pretty much once a month from every single YouTube guru out there. They will always put one out selling top 10 winning products, top seven winning products, you know, selling November, selling December for every single month. Now, one thing I will say is that I have never tested any of these products myself. Um, when watching some of the videos, to be honest, most of the products won't work because they don't fit the criteria that we mentioned earlier in this course. Now, before I progress, what I will say is if you are not following my YouTube channel, which is um, Beast of Ecom, and you're not following my brother's channel, which is the Ecom Wizard, go and follow us now. Uh, we drop value on a weekly basis, okay? But what you can do is use these videos to, you know, come across idea, product ideas. So for example, you know, this product here, and again, without looking into it further, you probably won't know whether or not you can make money or not. But nine times out of 10, a lot of these products that are mentioned in these videos are late as well, because again, it's always good to do your research yourself rather than relying on um, you know YouTube gurus giving you the products. Because nine times out of 10, if they were decent and very good products, then of course they would be using them and scaling them themselves, right? It just makes sense to do so. So um, one thing you want to do is, is you can you can do this. You can type in things such as you know drop shipping products or you know winning products is another term. And again, like I mentioned, you're just going to find loads of these videos all of the time um, of these guys just just putting these things out, okay? But go through them. You may find one or two products that make sense, and if they fit the criteria, feel free to test them out. Um, but mind to most of the time, these products are late to the market anyway, so I try to avoid them. But hey, it's just another method that I thought we would put inside of the course because you can find, if one person finds a gem, then great, you know? Um, but test it out and, um, and see, uh, but it's best to use the other methods that we've mentioned inside of this course. Okay. So an untapped method that you can use is using something called Du Yin. Now Du Yin is essentially the exact same as TikTok, but the Chinese version. A lot of people don't actually know this, but China has its own TikTok, which is called Du Yin, which is what you're seeing on your screen right now. And you can use this to find untapped winning products and also add creatives and video content that you can use inside of your 
ads. So I'm going to show you how you can use it. Now, first and foremost, you may be thinking, how on earth are you going to use it if it's all in Chinese? Well, the first thing you want to do is obviously right click and put translate to English because then that's what what's that going to do is then, you know, translate everything from Chinese to English so that you can kind of get your way around the software. Now, you may be wondering how on earth do you get access to Douyin or how you can get an account. It's the platform itself is free, but you'll be limited if you don't have an account. So I personally got my account from my supplier in China. Um, they just created one for me, gave me, the, gave me the login details and I can use it that way. So you can do that if you want to do that. Um, but that's pretty much probably going to be the best way of you getting a Douyin account. So what you're going to also need is Google Translate so that you can basically type in different keywords and get the Chinese version and put it inside of here. OK, so, for example, if I just put in something like, you know, home gadget. And copy this here, head back into here and type in this here and click search. What you'll then see is different products relating to that keyword search. Now, if you actually switch to this one here, the grid view, it's a little bit better and you can see how many likes that this that, that it has here. So the more likes that it has, the better. And if you want to find the ones with the best amount of likes, if you click on this filter here and click on most likes, right? And uh, this will, you know, you can do these ones within a week as well, which helps you to have better search. And what you can do is you can find products like this. Now, some of these are not going to be products at all. So this is an actual gadget and tool here. Um, so this could be something that you could potentially use on TikTok, again, on Facebook or Pinterest as a winning product. And remember, a lot of the gadgets actually come live on uh, on, on China rather than before they head to the West, right? So China are always a step ahead when it comes to gadgets. Now you can type in any sort of different keywords as well to find different products. And this is a very untapped method that not a lot of people are actually using to find winning products. So after some searching, I found something like this, which is a home mop, which allows people to mop the walls, mop the floors and ring itself out. So this is a cool little gadget that you could probably sell on Pinterest also on Facebook and you're going to be able to mark it up fairly well. Now with this actual product itself, okay, I went on to AliExpress and we can see that we can also actually source this product as well for $14. And again, if it makes sense, you triple the cost, etc., etc. So you can see that how well Douyin is at actually finding um, new gadgets that you can use that no one else would be selling on the different platforms. So what I'm going to show you in this video is how you can essentially track other drop shipping stores or other stores which are testing out a lot of the different products so that you can find out when they add it to their store and typically when a drop shipping store adds a product to their store nine times out of ten they're going to test it so what you can do is you can track these stores and find out what products they're adding and essentially in turn what products they are looking to test out so to do that you want to come to something called commafeed.com um, again it's c-o-m-m-a FEED.com and it's 100% free. Uh, sign up for a free account, and once you sign up for a free account, it will look something like this. Okay. Now, essentially, what you want to do is you want to go to subscribe, right? And what you want to do is you want to put in the URL of the website in here along with something else. So I'm just going to do that now. So this is what you need to put in. You want to put, after you put in the URL, you want to put forward slash collections, forward slash all, full stop atom right and then once you do that it will come up with a feed name and uh, you just want to then just click save okay click save again and you will see here it will have all of the um all of the products that they have on their store and when they launched them okay or when they added them to their actual store now if you you may be on unread so these are all the ones that you haven't opened right but to see all of them you just want to click on all right now this was again this product was literally launched yesterday um, well, not launched yesterday, but added to their store yesterday. And if we have a look at their actual product page, okay, you'll you'll be able to see all of the product page. It will take you to it, etc. Now they are probably testing out this product, um, you know, very recently because people won't add a product to their store if they are not going to test it out. It don't really make sense to do so, right? So we can find and stalk all of these different websites. And again, as you do your research, you'll find websites or other dropshipping websites. Um, this is good for like niche stores and obviously, you know, people who use general stores because they're launching all of it. Or they're launching multiple different products, right? 
So again, you can go through and find, uh, and this is a good way obviously to find, let other people do the work for you essentially. And we can just then go ahead and see if we can find this product on Amazon, and I mean AliExpress, see if we can find some creatives for it and test it out. So essentially you're beating people to the products and you're being the first ones to test them out while they are as well. And it can give you some very good ideas of products um, that you can test out. So go through, do this. And again, when you come across a store, just put in that same URL, like I've mentioned, um, put in a URL with that slash um, collections slash all dot atom. And um, yeah, subscribe and you'll be able to find some winning products. Now we are officially on the paid tools section of this product academy. And a question you may be thinking is why even use paid tools? Now paid tools aren't a requirement to have success. However, they do have their perks and benefits to using the paid tools over the free methods. And I wanna cover those in this video. So the reason why you should have access to at least one or two of these paid tools that we mentioned inside of this video is because of these reasons. So first and foremost, it's going to save you time, right? So you're going to be doing less manual searching. Now products research is something which is tedious and it does take time to do so. However, having access to paid tools can speed up and expedite that process. So you're doing less manual search. And also what you can do is filter through the waste to see the stuff that has potential because a lot of these tools are scraping the best ads, you know, they're scraping stuff which already has engagement, which is saving you that time. So that's one reason. Now, the second reason is of course, you can identify winners. Now, if you, let me ask you this question. If you have, if you're a new person, you don't know what a winning product look like, or you've never seen an advert that has, you know, great engagement on it or is working for another advertiser, then what do you even know that you are looking for? Exactly, you don't. So what these pay tools also do is they let you see what a winning ad and what a winning product looks like. And you can use this as your inspiration to first and foremost understand, you know, what the what about the ad worked, you know, or what about the product page that works. And just analyze all of these different winning products and see what elements they are using, take that inspiration and use it for yourself. Now, the final one is of course creative ideas. Now, again, Product research is a tedious thing to do. And sometimes you don't really know where to start, especially if you're looking on Facebook or you're, you're looking on you know, TikTok, you don't know what to type in. You don't know the words to type in. You don't know what to search on AliExpress. It's very hard to get the, the ball rolling if you don't know where to start. And these paid tools obviously help you with creative ideas. So you will have ideas for your creatives, your video ads, your image ads, you know, different niches as well. You'll find winning products which you never would have even thought about typing or looking into. And also products as well. So you can't, it allows you to go down this rabbit hole of finding different things that you may not actually sell the product that you find on the tool, but you then do may go off and do your own research and your own keyword search and come across something completely different but relevant and related. And that's one thing I like about having access to paid tools as well that you can explore further. This is one of my favorite paid tools and it's called Findful. And essentially what it does, we showed you how to do the free version, how to use Facebook ads library using keywords. This takes it to the next level and automates the whole process. This tool finds live winning products. So I'm gonna demonstrate how it works. So first and foremost, you can put in anything here like, you know, sale ends soon and for example country if i just put in au which is australia and if i just put in the minimum number of ads that i want to be shown so this is going to go out and search facebook ads library and only show me ads only pull adverse into this software if they're running a minimum of three i'll just put this as four and uh, i'm just going to leave it at that and i'm then going to go ahead and click find ads and what it's going to do is it's going to go out and it's going to find ads that match those parameters. Now I can put any keyword in here. So again, like the Facebook ads library, we can put in stuff like, you know, said and soon get yours here, 50% off. Um, you know, uh, those kind of keywords that other drop shippers are going to be using inside of their adverts. Another thing that obviously we can do as well is we can put in any country. So any country that you want, um, United Kingdom, you know, uh, Australia, United States, whatever it may be. And obviously we can put the minimum amount of ads to whatever we want, but a nice round number that I like to use is, you know, around about the four mark. I'm gonna show you extensively how this tool works, but you can see here it's already pulled up a result and it's going to continue to just pull up tons and tons and tons of results. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pause the video here and then circle 
Nickelback once this search has finished is pulled in all of these potential winning products okay now every single ad that you see on here is currently being ran on Facebook so we know that people are actively spending money on these adverts okay um, again this was just a little quick search that I've came up with and you know you can do this for multiple different countries multiple different search terms etc etc but I just want to show you um, a few things that you can do inside of this software so for example um, let's just take this product here uh, what you can do first and foremost is you can go to the actual page so you know this is going to search the actual page to see their other ads that they are running again these guys are only running 14 ads but you can see that we can do that as well we can also search the domain name now say for example you know there's some large drop shippers who run across multiple different pages and we can search their actual domain to find all of their pages so if they were running across two different pages or two different page names then this search would find all of their adverts uh, run into their domain okay another thing that we can do obviously is go to their website uh, if we go to their website here you can see it will pull up the uh, landing page here now a cool thing I like about this software is we can download the creative in a click of a button so if you click this here uh, what it's going to do is it's going to download the video it's going to download the thumbnail and it's also going to download the ad copy all in one um, zip file okay that you can go ahead and you know test out or make changes to or whatever it may be so it makes testing a hell of a lot more quicker and this is why i absolutely love this tool it's been an absolute game changer for me um, and then what you can do obviously is save it so if i click save um, and go into my saved ads here this is where all of the ads that i've previously sold before uh, i mean not sold before or that i've saved before they are all in here as well so it's an amazing tool um, one final thing that you can do on this as well is if you click on this and it gives you a break-even ROAS calculator so you know whether or not you're going to make money on the product or not so if we were getting a product for you know eight dollars but we were selling it for 35 then i know instantly i'm going to get a profit margin of you know 27 dollars and a break-even ROAS of 1.3 which lets me know that obviously it's good to go and that i can sell out this uh, i can sell this product so again uh, an amazing tool and if you want to try it out then there will be a link down below. And if you use the discount code BEAST10, then you will get a 10% lifetime discount code uh, off the actual software itself. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you can spy on any store's sales and see how much they're actually making because it's all well and good finding a product, but once you actually find a product, you wanna be able to validate that it's actually worth selling. And the way we do that is by tracking the store to see how many sales it's actually making. Now, this is a tool that I like to use called shophunter.io. Uh, we do have an exclusive discount that you can use to get 25% off, uh, and that will be down below just using the code BEAST25. But what you want to do with this is you can see these are all the different stores that I'm tracking, right? You can see here that they have their revenue on a daily basis. We can track it by a week and by a month as well. And to add a store, it's just as simple as going to add store. You put in the URL here, and um, then it will come up like so, right? Now, if I go to here as well, just to show you the track stores, just to show you an example of what it looks like. So let's just take this one, for example, click on this one here, which is, let's just look up this one here, which is doing okay, 2000. So let's just say, for example, this one here, okay? If I click on this one here, what it's gonna do is it's gonna show me uh, the sales that it's making, how many orders it's generally getting, the average AOV, and also how many SKUs that it's running on their store. It'll also show you the, so we can see here that it's been doing around about $2,000 to $3,000 per day, which is great. It tells you that this product that these guys are actually selling is making sales, which is good. So we know that if we sell this, we've got a good chance of it working out for us because people are already buying it. Right. It will show you also the theme that they're using and the different apps that they have on their store as well. You can see here, these are the different products. So this product here is their main product that's making the majority of the sales. And if you have a look on view on Shopify, it will take us to their actual store, which is this one here. So any store that you find that's making sales, OK, take the URL, plug it into um, Shop Hunter and track to see how many sales it's making per day. If it's making anything over a thousand dollars per day then fantastic great it tells you that it's worth testing out so if you do want to get access to shop hunter and get 25 percent off your subscription for life then click the button down below and use the code uh, beast 25 and you'll get 25 percent off 
your subscription for life. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Take care and I will see you in the next one. So another paid tool that you can use is one called Minea. Now this is basically like an, an all-in-one tool. So it has, you know, Facebook ads in here, it has TikTok ads in here, and it has Pinterest ads in here as well. Um, pretty cool. So one thing you can do is they have top 10 winning products of the day, which they generally just pick out there. These ones are all for uh, Facebook, of course, as you can see along here. Um, if I click on TikTok, it will show you some TikTok products as well along there. And it also has Pinterest ads in here as well, as you can see on there. And you can go through and have a look at the, you know, the, the how long when it started and it shows you the pins, the saves. And again, down here, if you have a look, it will show you how many likes it's had, shares and those kind of things as well. So this is one thing I like about this tool is obviously just first and foremost, having access to products that they hand pick. It also has the ability to search as well. So you can search Facebook ads, uh, Pinterest ads and TikTok ads as well. Um, they're not live, but they're, they're the ones which have been just like scraped previously before. Um, so if you have a look for this search, I'll just give you an example. I've put in here um, ads that are running in the United States, Canada, Australia and England. Uh, we also have the language as English, the platform as Shopify and the amount of likes are as minimum of 200 up to you know 1 million or so. I've also put the creation date as well as the last you know month or so because this is gonna show you the recent ads that have been started. And you can see here there's a few products. So this is like a blackhead squeezer uh, products here which has some decent engagement here. You know, 400 likes, 200 comments and shares and stuff like that. Not all of these products are gonna be drop shipping products. Again, this is another one here as well. You can see here close to a thousand likes. Um, it was started in December the 18th, which is probably a couple of days ago. So uh, it's working for these guys. It could be a potential winning product as well. And yeah, you can just literally just go through and um, you know change things, change all the parameters up and see if you can find any other winning products. Now, one thing you can do as well, if I click sort by, I can sort by likes as well. So the ones that have the most amount of likes on here. Um, so again, these ones were started recently. This one here is uh, another winning product that's been working really well for these guys here, which is um, Poly Nail Gel. You can see here started December 13th recently. And um, again, it's been absolutely crushing it these both of these creatives. So this would be a product that would get my attention that I could potentially look into. Again, same with something like this as well. So it's a good overall um, tool to have because it, it, first and foremost, it has all of them inside of them, whereas some of the other tools um, only have just Facebook ads or, or Pinterest ads or whatever it may be. This has all of them inside of it as well. Another good thing about this is if you click into an actual ad, it will take you to see the actual product. Uh, you can see the Facebook post as well. And you can also see ads from the same shop. So if you click on this button here, you can see all of their ads that they are running from this, which is obviously their main one here and this one here. And obviously this one seems to be doing well as well, which was recently started. So overall this, this store and this product seems to be absolutely crushing it. So it'd be something that I would uh, look into further. So Droppy Spy is another paid tool that you can use. Um, it's okay, I have it in my arsenal, it works well, um, but it's not live products like Findful. It's more like ones which have been previously scraped and put on side of here as well. Now, not all of these are going to be um, like drop shipping products. You can see here, some of these are not drop shipping products at all. And for most part, like a lot of these aren't in English either. So you need to do some filters to find the products to find exactly what we want to be looking for, right? Now up here, it has some already pre-made filters. So if I put in like last winning, uh, last seen winning products, it will pull up this, which is an already a search, which has been pre-filtered here, pre-selected. Um, again, you can do some searches on here, but I personally like to search myself. So if I get rid of this and click on empty, I'll show you exactly how I like to use this. So first and foremost, if you click on uh, filters here, it's gonna give you all of these filters that you can mess about with, right? So you could put in a specific keyword in here if you wanted to, let's say for example, you was only selling dog products, you could just put in dog here, right? And it's gonna update in the background in real time anyway. But um, for the how I usually use it, it's just gonna take this off anyway. Um, but the post creation date, again, you can put this for the last three months or so, just so that you know that, um, you know, you're getting like winning products, which are recent, right? Um, just put that from there. And the media type I leave open, uh, page name, you wanna leave it, save the scene date. Again, you can leave those ones 
countries. Now, um, you can put the top four if you want to in here, right? Um, that's going to get rid of the, the, you know, the foreign ones as well. So if I just do the same as previously before, just put in, you know, Australia. And let's say, for example, just Canada as well. Okay, language, you want to make sure it's in English because you don't want foreign languages, you know, if you're not selling in those countries. Sex, you can leave it open. Um, domain, again, leave it open for e-com platform. Um, you just want to have on Shopify, right? Because we only want to be finding Shopify as. Now, you can mess about with these uh, as much as you want. So the main things you're going to mess around with is mainly the, like, the post creation date. Um, you can leave this open if you want to, you're just gonna get a lot of old, old results, which again, if you can have a new angle, then you can make it work. Um, obviously, you're gonna keep this the same, and you can mess about with these likes. Now, typically, I like to have something which is has at minimum at least two likes. The more likes, the better, but you gotta remember the more likes that something has, the more saturated it could be, the actual creative could be. Um, but if you start off at 200, again, check your results, and you can raise it up if you want to. So I just click search, right? What it's going to do is going to give me these uh, results. Now, what you'll typically find is you'll find uh, the same, some of the same results in this and with Manea. I think both of the, I think they're owned by the same guys. Um, so you'll find sometimes the same products over uh, on this and on the other tool as well. Um, but what you want to be doing is trying to find those winning drop shipping products or products which at least um, have some. Uh, decent results. So you can see this one here. This one's caught my eye. If I turn the sound down on this one, this is a flex strap product, which we can find this on AliExpress. And again, you'll need to double check if you can actually find a product on AliExpress, but I know that this can be found on AliExpress. It was started in September time. Um, it's still running to this day and it's got 5,000 likes on it, uh, 1,000 shares and 2,000 comments on it. Okay, so what you can do obviously is if you can click on this button here, it will take you to the actual ad itself. Um, if you click on details, then what it will do is it will give you some details about it, show you the uh, the ad copy here, and obviously you can go to the, uh, the website and all that kind of stuff, and it gives you a little bit of a breakdown of the countries where it's been running in, um, you know, the ages. Uh, I'm not sure how reliable these are, if I'm being perfectly honest, um, but again, it's a decent tool. And if you have a look at the Facebook ads as well, you can see here that this is another ad that they've been running for this company, which again, has some decent results. Started recently in the last few months, got 1000 likes on it and um, some okay comments on it. So it's a good tool to have in your arsenal. Um, again, if we just go back again, you can do all sorts of things in terms of uh, changing up the actual criteria if you wanted to in the filters you know, changing around the, the, the likes or messing about with the shares. Another thing you can do is you can sort by, you know, um, creation date as well if you wanted to. And uh, just get the most, most recent stuff um, and hop on these trends, like these ones here. Um, but again, it's just a case of going through using these tools and what they do is they help you speed up the process of finding winning products. Right, so this video is another paid tool, but it's probably one of the cheapest tools out there and probably one of the longest that's been in the game as well. It's called Ecom Hunt and it works a little bit different than some of the other, other ones that are out there. Um, so you can't do like searching on this one. So pretty much this one here is only for just being presented with hand selected winning products, okay? Or products which are already working for other people, right? So you can't really do many searches on here and find other stuff yourself. Um, so you have to bear in mind that a lot of people will be potentially testing out all of these products uh, themselves. However, I have found a lot of winning products on this throughout the years, hence why it's in this video, because it is a, a Again, it's a cheap tool to get, and um, it, especially if you're a new person, it can help you find and understand what a, you know a potential winning product looks like if you if you get creative. So you're presenting with all of these products, and again, what they do is they post about uh, if you have a look. So yesterday, yesterday, two days ago, so they post about two products or three products a day, right? On here, which are winning products. So if I have a look at, let's say, for example, um, you know, this one here, once loaded, you'll see this page here. Okay. And it's a bit of a breakdown about the actual product. So 
They give you first and foremost the profits and costs. So what the product cost is and what the person who is selling it for. Now this cost here is just basically the AliExpress link because they give you an AliExpress link here for the supplier or one of the suppliers at least, you can always find another one. Uh, and obviously the link to the store which is selling the item as well, you can see that here. And it gives you the profit margin. So this product actually has an insane profit margin inside of it because it's like a, you know, so you can get it for $1 and you're selling it for $18. That's like a pretty much a 18X up. Uh, so a lot of profit inside of this uh, product, right? And it also gives you the, uh, the engagement on the actual ad itself. So if you have a look at the ad, you can see here that this was launched on November the 21st and it's got 5.3 thousand likes on it, 240 or 250 comments and 415 shares, right? So absolutely crushing it in terms of engagement. And this would be, again, another product that I would potentially look into selling, um, providing it matches the rest of the other criteria, you know? And on the surface of things, it looks like it actually does, right? So you can click on here and see the Facebook ad itself. It will take you to Facebook. You can click on the, his, this one here and it will take you to the uh, website. You don't need to click on eBay. You don't need to click on Amazon and the AliExpress link for the product is there as well. Um, I wouldn't worry about too much about any of this in terms of the interest. And again, all of this is you don't need to take in any take into account any of this here as well. So it's a cool, you know, like I mentioned, it's a cheap tool to have. Um, I've used it over the years. Pretty cool to have. And um, yeah, it, it's good to have in your arsenal in terms of finding different winning products or getting ideas at least for winning products as well. So another paid tool that you can use is one called PP ads. Now, this is specifically mainly for TikTok if you're running TikTok ads because that's what it is, it searches TikTok. But if you find a product on TikTok that you know may have potential on Facebook, which I have done many, many of times, then you obviously you can take that and run it on Facebook as well. Now, there are a lot of different uh, things on here that you can use. To be honest, I don't use most of these. Uh, I'll just be blunt with you. I'm gonna show you what I use. Uh, so first and foremost, there's a TikTok search. So a bit like the other ones that we've showed you before, you can do keyword search. So if you are, you know, only wanted to look for dog products or cat products, you could put something in here as well. Um, another good side is this link here, which is winning products. And this is kind of like, again, hand-picked products that have engagement so that you don't have to do all the manual searching yourself. And again, all of these have de decent amount of uh, likes, impression rates that you can go ahead and do some more searching inside of these ones as well. So here's an example search that I search for and typically I usually go for this anyway. So I like to have United States, Canada, um, Australia, United Kingdom, all of the top kind of speaking, top five English speaking countries in there. Then obviously you wanna have this as shop now, the platform you want to have on Shopify as well. Now with this, you can tinker with how many likes you want it to have. Um, typically anything, you know, 500, the more likes, the better it is. But again, you know, the more likes that something has, potentially the more saturated it is as well. So around about number 500 is okay. Um, with this one here, this is popularity. So I'm not sure how they actually score the popularity and how it works, but I like to have it more than 100. And you can have here when, um, how many days it was seen and stuff like that. So less than 20 days, which means it's kind of like the recent stuff as well. And again, you can tinker with all the other, other things as well if you wanted to, but this is just gonna give you a base. Now, when I scroll down, I actually found something like uh, this. And again, not everything is gonna be drop shipping. Some of these are gonna be like brands as well. And um, one thing that I did find was this product here, uh, which is a neck. Uh, it's like a neck cracker and you can, neck stretcher should I say, you can find this on AliExpress as well. Now, if we open this up, it gives us an estimate in terms of the estimated amount of orders and the estimated amount of ad cost it cost them. Now, I wouldn't pay any attention to these if I'm being perfectly honest, because these are gonna be skewed and they're not gonna be correct anyway, but it's just worth you know noting those as well. It gives you the URL as well for the actual TikTok, so you can have a look at the TikTok, and that is there. You can see this is the actual page of the product, okay? And this is the, sorry, this is the actual page of the product. This is the advert and TikTok page of the actual products as well. So you can see all of those creatives as well. Uh, you can download it if you wanted to, you can save it, you can do other things, but it's just good to have this tool. I think it's a little bit expensive as well, but again, like I mentioned, it's always good to have access to at least one or two different paid tools that you can have inside of your arsenal. 
So if you've made it this far onto module three, this is all to do with paid traffic. And we're gonna be showing you exactly how we take these winning products and launch them with Facebook ads to the USA and also EU countries. And we're also gonna be showing you exactly how we format our ad creatives so you can go ahead and replicate them. Yo, all I'm gonna talk about in this video is traffic sources, okay? And when I say traffic sources, I don't mean obviously, you know, cars on the road. I'm talking about um, advertising platforms, okay? Now, an important thing to know is that traffic is the lifeblood of your business. Without it, you can't make any sales. It's very important skill to learn and develop because, you know, you can have the best website, you can have the best products out there. But if you are not driving traffic to that offer and to that product, then you aren't going to make any sales at all. Same goes for uh, online and offline. You know, if you've got, you could have the best looking um shop you could have the best looking products at the best prices in there but if it's not in a place whereby people can actually walk in and purchase the stuff if it's way out in the country somewhere then you're not going to make any sales right that's why learning how to be a marketer and learning how to run paid ads is a skill a lifetime skill and a high income skill as well that you should very much learn and, and take time to master because once you know how to do this stuff you can very much print money on command for yourself and also for other businesses. Again, if you wanted to do the whole freelance, um, you know, work a, a job or whatever it may be, you're never going to be short of money if you understand how to run ads. Okay. Now, these are the main five traffic sources. Um, we've got Facebook, TikTok, Pinterest, Google, and Snapchat. We're going to talk about the pros and cons of all of them and then the choice that we um, personally have ourselves and what we're going to teach you inside of um, this, this mini, mini program. So, the pros and cons of these. So first and foremost, Facebook. So Facebook, one of the main downsides of Facebook is obviously the bans. I think everyone who's ran a Facebook ad or been spent any money on Facebook ads has, has dealt with some sort of bans. They do happen. However, they can be over, can, you can overcome them and there are solutions around that. And if you check out the video that we put inside of the program about how to deal with bans, that will help you and educate you a lot more, okay? But the upside of Facebook is, of course, it's very stable. You know, once you have something that's actually working, it's very, very, very stable. Another point is the scalability of the platform, because, you know, when something works on Facebook, it's very easy to get momentum. And you've seen the screenshots of people just going from $100 a day to $1,000 a day to $10,000 a day, uh, very effortlessly, even though it's not easy. But once something does click, it is very easy to scale when something clicks. The hardest part is getting something to click. But when it does click, like I mentioned, the scalability of it is, uh, is second to none personally. Obviously, they have the best algorithm out there. Um, you're dealing, you're talking with lizards here in terms of, uh, you know, uh, Zuckerberg. But he's been harvesting all of our data since since the inception of Facebook, you know, Cambridge Analytica and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, the data put the amount of data points that Facebook has on every single person is pretty much second to none. And uh, I personally believe that the algorithm itself is the best. That's why you can sometimes just go absolutely broad. And uh, Facebook will know who they want, they need to put the ad in front of because Facebook knows what you want to buy before you even want to buy it. They're analyzing things such as your you know, your, your browsing history, uh, what you're looking at online, what you're looking at and other different apps. Um, some people even say that they're monitoring your conversations. I'm not sure how real that is, but, um, but hey. And then the final positive point of Facebook is of course, it's worldwide. You can literally target anyone in the world. You don't have to be from a specific country to be able to advertise in another country. You know, you could be in Japan and, and run a US based business. I can be in here and run a, a Sweden store. I can be, you can be wherever you need to be and still make sales in a multiple, in any different country, which is a, a good thing. Now, moving on, we've obviously got TikTok. Now, TikTok um, has become massive now. A lot of people in the dropshipping scene, especially switch from Facebook ads when they couldn't make it work anymore, or they were dealing with post iOS 14 tracking and that kind of stuff, they switched into TikTok ads. A lot of guys have been crushing it with TikTok ads. However, with TikTok ads, I personally find, and I've spent money on TikTok as well, found some winners and, and spent money on there. Generally, what I find is that the creatives die out a hell of a lot more quicker than Facebook. Also, it can be very volatile. So you may find that your Monday, Tuesdays or Wednesdays are absolutely trash and then your weekends just explode, which is something that, you know, again, if you want to go down that route, cool. But I personally like, you know, something to stay like this rather than going up, down, left, right and all that kind of jazz. The other bad side to TikTok is that it's geo restrictions. So what I mean by that is they only let you target in specific countries based on where you are based and your location. So 
For me in the UK, if I open up a UK TikTok account, advertising account, I can't target the US. I can't target Canada, I don't think. I can only target a few EU countries. On top of that, if I open up a UK TikTok account as well, they charge VAT on top of your spend, which is an extra, at the time of recording this, an extra 20%. So again, if you're making 20% profit, then um, again, a lot of that money uh, is going to be sucked into your, your adverts as well. Um, and again, same goes for United States. If you're in the United States, you can't open up, a, uh, you can't target the UK. You need to have what's called agency accounts, which isn't accessible to you know everyone. The good thing about TikTok is, of course, they are cheaper costs, which means the CPMs are, most of the time, depends on the niche that you're selling in, are a little bit cheaper than Facebook. Uh, and of course, it has fantastic scalability as well when something does work. You've seen the guys who do the whole surfing stuff, you know, just duplicating budgets and um, increasing them in a day. So it can work in terms of scalability. Now, the other three, I have used Pinterest. I've done a little bit of Google, haven't done any Pinterest. But to run over those really quickly, Pinterest, I do still run on Pinterest to this day. However, it is very slow to optimize and to test. You need to leave it for like five days before it shows any signs of whether or not it's a winner or not, which is too slow personally for me. You do have less targeting options as well, and it is less scalable because the audiences aren't as big as uh, TikTok and Facebook. The great thing about them is, of course, is much cheaper cost, even cheaper than um, TikTok because, again, not, not many advertisers are spending heavy on there. We're talking about $3 CPMs, $4 CPMs, but the, the, the traffic itself isn't the same quality as it is on TikTok and, uh, and Facebook. So your conversion rate aren't gonna, isn't going to be fantastic. The other great thing about Pinterest is once you actually have something that works, it's extremely stable. I've had something which has been working for weeks and I don't touch the ads. You don't have to touch the ads. You can just tweak the budget if you want to, but nine times out of 10, if it works and it's working, you can let it ride without even looking at it which is a fantastic thing. Now, Google Ads, um, they are less scalability because it depends on the actual keyword search volume. You're very much limited at that cap. Another thing is that there's high costs. So depending on, again, the niche that you're in and the keywords that you're trying to target, some of them are being dominated by some of the biggest players out there, which means that you could be paying a pound, two pound, three pounds, if you're in insurance or something like that, up to 20 pounds, $20, just for a single click, just for your ad to be shown, right? Another thing is there are bans on Google, which means if you're doing Google shopping, definitely uh, merchant accounts seem to get suspended quite a lot. The other great things about Google is obviously the search intent traffic, which means that people are searching for your product, which means that you're gonna have a higher conversion rate because it's not the same as Facebook of putting the product in front of someone's face, them seeing it and then buying on an impulse. It's they are searching for that product and then buying it because they were actually looking for it and looking to buy it, right? Snapchat is less scalability. They um, I've literally, I've just duplicated and I've copied those off. So that, that that's not actually real. But um, it's pretty much kind of like TikTok in terms of creators will die out very quick. It's kind of volatile. And I've actually experienced some bans on Snapchat. For some reason, I just couldn't even get anything approved. But there's just some of the pros and cons of, uh, of Snapchat, okay? Now, all of the traffic sources work, okay? One thing I want to say is that just pick one and stick to it you only need one traffic source to reach a million dollars, okay? You look at most of these brands out there and they'll either be on Facebook or they'll be crushing on TikTok. Most of them, 90% are running on Facebook because of the, the, the best, it's probably the best choice I personally think it is, but you only need one. Don't start doing Facebook ads and then trying to do TikTok ads as well or, you know, and then mixing in other ones if you haven't already mastered one of them. Pick one, stick to it, master it. And once you've profitably mastered it, meaning that you are profitable on the front end, making sales at good ROAS, then think about adding in, again, Google ads and other ones to complement what's already working, okay? So our choice and what we're going to show you how to use is obviously Facebook. Um, you probably kind of guessed that by now, but personally, Facebook has helped me generate over, you know, uh, both of us over $10 million in, uh, in sales, spent close to $5 million across different ad accounts. Personally been using it since 2017. I've seen all of the changes, experienced all of the changes, and I pretty much know Facebook inside out in terms of what works and what doesn't. Um, I haven't switched and chopped and changed, so I, I have a deep understanding of the platform itself. And like I mentioned, it works in any country, any language. You know, you don't have to um, you don't have to be in a specific country to be able to target anything else, which is the beauty of uh, of Facebook. OK, so hopefully you got some value from this video. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's up, everyone? It's the Ecom Wizard here. And in this one, 
I'm going to basically be showing you how to go ahead and open a Facebook business manager. And I'm also going to give you a quick overview of everything as well. So first things first, you want to come onto Google uh, and go ahead and hit create a business manager, right? Type that in and you will get to this page here that says basically create a business manager. Click on that and then go ahead and scroll down. And all you want to do is just click on to businessfacebook.com slash overview. Go ahead and hit create an account. Uh, make sure you are logged into an actual Facebook profile as well. Then you can go ahead and just call your business, you know, like the example Jasper's Market or something like that. You can call it whatever you want. Go ahead and use a business email address uh, and then go ahead and hit submit as well, right? Now, once you've obviously followed the steps from that, you will eventually get to this page here, right? Which is your actual Facebook business manager. Um, what you want to go ahead and do is come into business settings and this is basically the whole hub of where you'll be running your Facebook ads and operation, right? So I'm basically going to do an overview of the Facebook business manager and show you what all the different things mean as well. So first things first, we have people, right? This is basically all of the different Facebook profiles that you have on a specific business manager, right? So from each profile, there's a few different levels of access. One can be full control, which is admin access. This means that they can add other people to the business manager. If they have pass, partial access, sorry, uh, or employee access, as it's previously known, that means they can only undertake specific tasks. So for example, run ads, but they can't add admins to the actual business manager. Now on each business manager, I personally like to have at least about three admins uh, and usually two employee profiles. The employee profiles will simply run the ads um, and the actual admin ad profiles, such as this one here, will ever, you know, they'll be the one adding payments to the accounts like payment methods. Um, they'll be the ones transferring pixels. They'll be the one adding other admins if I need be uh, as well, right? So if you wanted to add someone, you can go ahead um, and for now, we'll just call this um, the ecomwiz at gmail.com. Uh, then you go ahead, uh, just click next. Now from then, this is where you can go ahead and obviously select if you want full control or not. If you want to hit full control, uh, you can go ahead and hit manage and, and show. Obviously, it's telling you it's a sensitive task because they'll be able to basically do everything if you give them admin access, right? If you obviously just want to give them basic, um, then you can just keep it as default and the default is employee, right? They'll receive an email. They can open that using their email address and then get added to the business manager, right? Partners, this is basically where you would go ahead and essentially share assets um, with like another agency or get access from another business manager uh, that you're working with. So you, for example, you can see here, give them permission to work on your whole business manager um, uh, or obviously add a new partner and request an asset to work on their behalf, right? System users, I don't really use this. Um, there's no need to really use it. Pages, this is where you obviously can hold your pages um, or you can get them shared into the business manager or you can even keep them on a specific profile uh, and you don't have to connect them to uh, a specific business manager, right? But this is where if you wanted to create a new page, you just hit create new page um, and then you can go ahead, select what you want here uh, and name it as well. Adding people to specific pages. This is obviously where you give people access to the specific pages as well. Um, ad accounts, again, this is where you would create a new ad account. Now we can't create a new ad account because this business manager only has a max limit of one. Uh, and the way to find that out is if you come down to business info, scroll down, you'll see here, um, ad creation limit one, right? So we can't create any more uh, ad accounts. You can get agency ad accounts shared into this business manager um, because technically you don't own them. So, you know, they're not yours, um, but for now, I obviously don't have agency ad accounts. This is just an example business manager to show you guys, right? Um, here you can see uh, we've given this person here access to the ad account. If you had any partners or agencies or other people you was working with, for example, you could add them here as well, right? Now, if I open this in ads manager, I'll basically just show you this is, for example, where we'd go ahead and create all of our ads uh, as well. So you can see here, create. Here's where you'd obviously create like, uh, sales, like a purchase conversion campaign, set up your columns, everything like that. But for now, we'll leave that for a separate video, right? Business asset groups, again, don't worry about this. Apps, don't worry about this. Instagram accounts, again, don't really worry about that. Um, you can, if you want, connect an Instagram, 
Instagram account for your store, but it's not a necessity. You can just run them off pages like what I do. Commerce accounts, WhatsApp accounts, you don't really need to worry about them, right? Catalogs, again, not really too much of an issue. Um, if you're just starting out with dropshipping, I wouldn't really bother with them, in my opinion. Pixels, I'm going to show you a separate video on how to go ahead and install your Pixel uh, properly, but... This is an example uh, for an example where you'd create all of your pixels. So you can obviously call it your store name, hit continue, etc. Uh, partners, again, same thing, connected assets. This is where you would connect it to the specific ad account. So you'd hit add assets um, and assign it to Revolt Ecom. And essentially that would be assigned to that ad account. So when you go to create an ad, the ad account will give you the option to select this pixel here, right? Offline event sets, um, don't worry. Data sets, that's a new thing that Facebook basically come out with uh, as well. Custom conversions, don't worry about all of these as well, right? Now, domain, this is where you'd go ahead and verify your domain name, which I'll show you how to do um, probably as well in a separate video, maybe in the pixel video as well. But uh, add a domain, this is where you'd go ahead uh, and verify, for example, the ecom with. Um, Dot com go ahead and hit add etc etc um, block list don't worry about that registrations no need to worry about that integrations no need to worry about that as well right now payments billing and payments um this is basically they've rejigged this um it's like a new page or something like that it, it didn't used to look like this you used to be able to open it within business manager um, but this is where you'd go ahead and add all of your payment methods, right? So typically this is an Amex card or a credit card, debit card or something like that. We haven't added a card um, for this specific business manager. Again, it's only an example one, but you would go ahead, hit add payment method, uh, type in your debit credit card details, where the card's based, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, And that's perfectly fine. Once it's on your business manager, you can go over to add account billing section, um, and then go ahead and assign it to a specific uh, ad account, right? So if you just click this button here, click view payment methods, this is where you would be able to add it to your business manager first and then go ahead and add that payment method. Um, here, if you hit add payment method, it will say like business manager payment method um, somewhere here once you've obviously added a card. Um, and then you could go ahead and run ads on this specific ad account. Right. So that's how you go ahead uh, and add your billing and payments um, security center. Again, not really too much of an issue, if I'm honest. Um, I usually make sure everyone um, has our uh, every, every profile has two factor authentication on. Right. So whenever someone logs in or something, you have to basically get a security code uh, request. This is basically if someone requests like access to one of your ad accounts or or you do that to theirs you can obviously see received and sent notifications don't worry about it's obviously self-explanatory uh, and then just business info right um this was actually a verified bm i think but they've now revoked the access um so yeah we we don't use this business manager for anything other than examples so it doesn't really matter but this is where you'd be able to see whether your business manager is verified or unverified um, to be honest, I've not seen no real difference between verified and unverified. Um, the only good thing about verified is you can always appeal for at least once, I believe it is, after you get your business manager banned. Whereas with unverified, sometimes they don't really let you appeal it uh, as well, right? So this is where you'd obviously put your two-factor authentication on, uh, fill in some info, um, and obviously your website and stuff as well, right? So that's pretty much the business manager overview um, and what everything means, how everything works. I will obviously show you how to go ahead and install a pixel uh, and verify your domain name as well. But that is all for this one. I hope you did enjoy it and I'll catch you in the next one. Hello everyone, Ecom Wizard here. And in this one, I'm gonna quickly be showing you how you can go ahead and install your Facebook pixel. Now, I personally don't use Facebook app on the Shopify app store anymore. It's just so buggy, so many problems with it. Um, the reviews are really, really bad as well. It just tends to disconnect from time to time randomly. Um, so personally, I just prefer to use this way. So you wanna come down. Um, firstly, you'll need to go ahead and verify your domain. So I've just used an example domain. I'm not gonna show you exactly how to do it um, or verify it specifically, but what you'd basically do is just go ahead and hit add. 
hit create new domain. I've just done examplestores.com, right? There's a few things you can do. One is add a meta tag to your HTML source code. Um, this basically means that you copy the code in the head section of your website. If you're okay at coding, this will be very easy for you. If not, then I'd prefer to do this method, uh, which is basically update the DNS text record with your um, domain registrar, registrar, right? So just copy this. Then if I was to go into an example domain name, like the ecomwizard.com from Google domains, come down to DNS, uh, you'd put your type as, um, let me just find it here, a uh, text record, uh, paste in obviously the text record. Uh, I believe it's text, let me just double check. So yeah, DNS text record, you'd paste that in. Once you've obviously saved it uh, over here, uh, hit save, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then you'd come back onto Facebook, hit verify domain, and it would then say verified, right? Now, what you wanna do is come onto pixels, hit add, uh, go ahead and basically create a new pixel. You can call it whatever you want. Just hit continue, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, continue managing my business. You can just do that for now, right? First thing first, you want to assign a person to it. So I'm going to do the admin of this account. Now, literally, all you want to do is go ahead and copy that to the clipboard. Come back into your actual store. Uh, I'm on the Vitals app. Uh, go into Facebook Pixels. Basically, uh, hit create new pixel paste that in there and literally hit save, right? And that will be your Facebook pixel literally firing on the entire store. Now, personally, pixel tracking has been pretty messed since iOS 14.5, I believe it is. So these pixels aren't really great anyway, right? I personally prefer to use UTMs, um, which will be in a separate video. And UTMs basically just help you track on Shopify's end as well. But, but just to show you this pixel has now been installed, you can see here, we actually do have two pixels which you don't wanna have, but you can see it ends in 2913. And if I come back onto the Facebook part, this one um, is actually uh, 0412 actually. Uh, and if I come back into the um, website, this one should say 0412 down here. So yeah, the wrong pixel, but there you are. You can see the pixel has now been installed. Uh, that's everything sorted with regards to the pixel as well. All you'd wanna do is make sure you've obviously connected it to an ad account, which we have already done, connected it to the Revolt Ecom ad account, uh, and you will be able to go ahead and run ads with that as well. Now, just a side point, probably a better app than Vitals. Vitals is just handy to use because we're obviously already have it down, we already have it downloaded. But probably the best third-party app to track pixels is probably Omega, in my opinion. Um, this is personally what I sometimes use as well on some of my stores. It's quite good in terms of actual accuracy. Um, so it does allow you to do like advanced conversion API um, and it doesn't take long to set up. It's pretty much the same as Vital Setup, but you have to just do some slight bit more information. Um, and it's quite good. So I would personally would recommend this. We're not affiliated or anything like that with them. But yeah, if you are going to install it, you can either use the Vitals way uh, if you don't want to spend any money on top of obviously app costs. Um, or if you don't mind spending like an extra 13 or $14 per month, I would say Omega is probably the best alternative um, for actually Facebook tracking. So the best out there. In terms of obviously you know, you have triple whale and stuff, but they're like $300 a month. So this is probably the most cost effective method uh, as well to use. So that is how you go ahead and install your pixel. I hope you did enjoy this one and I'll catch you in the next one. Hello everyone, Otis here and welcome to this lesson. And in this one, I'm going to be showing you the main ways in which you can go ahead and get an ad creative for your ads. So the first kind of method that we like to use is, this is the most common one, which is whereby we typically take a competitor's video, make a slight few edits to it because we know it's a winning creative and then run it ourselves. This will also change the metadata so Facebook and TikTok won't recognize that we're using the exact same video. The second main kind of option is to actually go ahead and, you know, basically outsource it to someone from Fiverr or outsource it from some company, for, for example, such as Bands of Ads or Viral Ecom Ads. They basically just curate the 
clips that are already online and package it in a video for you. And the third main method is actually going out, finding the clips yourself and editing it up. However, that does take quite a long time, but I will quickly cover where I would source the ads and stuff like that. So say for example, we found this winning Facebook ad, right? Using for example, any of the tools that are listed in this course, or it came up on our Facebook timeline. What we need to make sure we have is the Facebook link. And you can see this is a great product since the 6th of September. It's actually been performing very well. So many women are saying they absolutely absolutely beautiful. They love these, they just received theirs and they can't wait to try them. So what we do is basically highlight this link, come down and use something called FB down, right? So I usually just type in to Google FB down and it will directly come up. If I just click back, you'll see here, uh, type in FB downloader and it's usually the first one. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is paste the link in and just hit download. Now I'm always gonna download the video in HD quality, just ignore this ad here. Uh, and now that's actually went ahead and downloaded the kind of product uh, video for me, right? So I have it saved. Now, the second way, which is still the first method, but this is just the same kind of tool for TikTok is for example, this, you know, basically pet supply here, right? TikTok made me buy it. This seems like one that basically clears the cat poo out from the litter as well, which is really, really cool. It basically just inputs it into a bin. They can take it out and, you know, throw it in the bin or put it down the toilet or whatever, right? Now, of course, we can't directly run this video on Facebook because it has the TikTok watermark, right? You you know, you may get penalized from the competitor um, or Facebook will probably not just like it because it's got a TikTok logo on it. So typically, again, we need the link, but for this one, you use something called SnapTick. So you can just go ahead and type that into Google as well uh, and it will come up. So if I just hit download, you'll see, please wait a minute, go ahead and hit download. Again, don't, click on anything from here. And this has basically went ahead and downloaded the video for us. Now, perfectly, what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is quickly come into Ben Sound. This is basically a free royalty place where I go ahead and get the music for the ads just because you don't wanna be using copyrighted music. You can use it on TikTok, but you cannot use it on Facebook ads, for example. So I usually like to come into free music. So something like this music is perfectly fine. You can see it's basically just a little type dropshipping style track. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is hit free download and then just go ahead and hit download, right? Then all you have to do now is go into your video editing software. There is kind of, I think, free ones possibly like DaVinci Resolve or you can find one online. Personally, for me, I like to use Camtasia just because it's very, very beginner friendly and easy to use. So I'll quickly jump into Camtasia now and show you how I would edit the videos. So now I'm actually in Camtasia. Quickly, what I would go ahead and do is come into project settings and I want to actually edit the size uh, and I'm going to put the width at 800 and I'm going to put the height at 1000. Now that is just perfectly fine for Facebook. That's personally the sizes and dimensions I like to use on Facebook. I do it this length instead of square because it will just take up more real estate on the mobile screen. And as you know, most of the traffic will be coming from Facebook feed anyway. So I'm gonna quickly go ahead, uh, Facebook feed for mobile. So I'm gonna quickly go ahead, bring in the music, import the video as well, and then start editing. So you can see here now I've basically inputted the product here. Typically what I would do is drag this out. Now I personally like it to be like that. And also you do need to make sure throughout the video that if you do drag it out, the product is still in shot, which is perfect. You can see it's pretty much perfectly how I would want it. I don't think I would move it. I'd probably maybe adjust this down very slightly. Uh, and then I would go ahead and just right click. For this, I like to go ahead and silence the music. So if I just run through this now, you can see it's pretty much the exact video, right? Now, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is actually just, if I wanna make any edits to the video, I'm gonna go ahead and cut about the first first second off. I don't like the part where I just want the product to be in shot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the first second off. And that will just edit the video a little bit. So you can see, you could, if you want, start it from, you know, potentially here if you wanted to. So you could start it from here. I've just started it from here, but that's perfectly fine as well. Go ahead and let the video play. So we've also done that as well, which is quite cool. Then if you want, you can go ahead and chop off one of the last clips as well, right? That's just to edit it. You don't have to, I would just say, make at least one edit to the actual existing video. Then you want to go ahead and add your own music in. So just drag that on the timeline. I'm personally just clicking S because that's the Mac shortcut for cut on Camtasia. Then I'm gonna turn the volume down to probably around 50% just so that it doesn't blow people's ears off when they're playing it. So if you look at the actual ad now, 
this is pretty much what the ad will look like. So I'll go ahead and you can just see if I drag it through, that is what our ad looks like. And that is literally what I would go ahead and do. All I do is go ahead, hit local file. Then you'd want to go ahead and just export this video as Christmas earrings, right? So I'll just go ahead and export that. And that would be pretty much the Facebook ad video that I would go ahead and run. So what I will do now is quickly show you an example for the TikTok one as well. So as you can see now, this is the actual cat video for the cat litter product. What we need to go ahead and do is edit the dimensions just because 800 to 1000 will not look good on TikTok. So the dimensions for that is 1080 and it's 1920. So that should be the correct TikTok dimensions because it's very tall, very thin as well. So we're going to go ahead and drag this on our timeline again, uh, then just go ahead and pull the actual dimensions of the existing video out. And you can see we no longer have any of the watermark on the video as well. So we could go ahead and run this on TikTok again. We could even redire, you know, change the dimensions and put it on Facebook as well, which again is really, really good. Now there's two types of things you can pretty much do here. In this instance, I would probably typically just change or cut out maybe one of the clips as well. So we'll just do the We'll just shorten the, instead of putting it in the bin, in fact, we'll keep the bin in the ending one. You don't actually have to always change, you know, one of the clips, but I typically like to do it just in case. So you could, for example, you know, just literally put, when, when she's pulled it out, you could delete that one and then just put the one where she throws it into the bin as well. So that's just to be safe, just to make sure that our metadata is not being changed. And you can see, pulls the bag out and puts it in the bin, right? So the video still looks perfectly fine. What you can do here is you can either add uncopyrighted music, um, but typically for me, for TikTok, I would, you know, I would probably leave this blank. And then when I upload the video to TikTok, um, TikTok ads, I would go ahead and add video, uh, add music onto the video. And the reason for that is just because TikTok has a lot better kind of trending sounds and stuff that you can use, as opposed to just using this kind of Ben sound one. Because, you know, if we're running it on Facebook, you can't run kind of copyrighted music. If you are running it on TikTok or like organic and stuff, you have a lot more choice in terms of of music as to what you choose so you know i may choose a song that represents this video a little bit better so that's probably what i would do go ahead and export it so just click export again i will type in cat litter you know and then just go ahead and hit export and that would be both of those videos ready to run uh, on either tiktok or facebook and you know depending on obviously which platform you're running you can go ahead and run it hello everyone the econ wizard here and in this one i'm going to be showing you exactly how to go ahead and make image ad creatives now image ad creatives have become quite popular recently especially when a lot more people are running like fashion products or home decor products so i'm going to show you exactly how i go ahead and create them so for example i'm just going to go ahead and find a fashion product um, and then i'll go ahead and show you how to basically download the images uh, and what i would do for basically a collage so we'll see if we can just find like a bag or something like this um we'll actually do yeah, so we'll just keep searching. I'll see if I can find like a jumper. And we'll go from there. I don't know why it's coming up with laptops from jumpers, but we'll just find uh, fashion. Summer. So something like this would be good. Um, you can sometimes use AliExpress's photos. They are quite good. Like sometimes they have collages like this, which work pretty well as well um, but I will just show you how to basically go ahead and create something like this yourself if you did want to right so first things first you want to go ahead and download the images uh, and the way we do that is I use a Chrome extension uh, it's called AliSave Plus it's totally free uh, and it's really cool as well right so you can download the main images which are these images here the variant images which are these images here uh, description images these are all the ones down here in the description right so for this one i'm just going to download the variant images just to show you an example um, and once i've actually went ahead and downloaded uh, i'm going to jump onto uh, the software we use now which is basically called photo joiner again this is totally free as well so really really good just go ahead and click on it uh, and go ahead and hit get started now what you want to do is go ahead and upload all of your images right so just go ahead upload all of them and they should come into like 
uh, a little folder type thing uh, as well once they've been processed but this is obviously not the format we want so personally what i like to do is either three cells uh, or i'll show you in a minute i think it's six or seven cells right but to begin with as you can see this is pretty much if i just make this a little bit smaller um this is kind of the type of collage you want right now ideally you would want these to be square images i'll probably swap them around um but again you can see this is an example of how we'd go ahead uh, and set out our products right for our collage now again if you want you can obviously download different variants of the images so maybe something like this um this is a good photo as well uh this is that's a decent photo because it shows the back side of the product as well um kind of what it would look like on the woman's back so what i'll do is download the main images on here as well so one of your images you kind of want different angles and different colors at least right so for this one what we'll do is we'll just uh, change the photo uh, and i will click uh, back out into this uh, do the main images this time and get the back version right so something like that uh, and then this one I'd probably put as a different color so maybe the black version um, just because a lot of women will obviously like black so that's kind of the darker colors are the neutral colors that most people will choose right so you could do something like that with the black version that's the back and then that's the front as well so this is an example of a collage that i would run right for a specific product you can go ahead hit save uh, and it will go ahead and basically download it for you and you can hit download there and run it with facebook ads as well right now this doesn't only work for fashion products um another good kind of look on this one is um something i'm just trying to find it now uh, some usually something like this where you have like one main feature image and then a bunch of different colors down here work as well right so those are the two kind of main ones i do either three or six uh, and this will have all the different colors or variants inside of it as well right now if i go back on to the three one what you can do is this is the same for if you were going to run like a, a home decor product right so we may do something like i'll just do like a raven lamp for an example but this would be the same type of thing where you'd obviously have um a main kind of image so we'll just do the main images for now uh, and then if you upload them onto the collage so if i just go on to it's usually photos uh and then we'll just upload these uh, main images we'll just see how some of these look they might not they might not look great but yeah something like this uh, again this is probably here i'd use probably like a six one just because it doesn't make sense in terms of like the sizing um of the actual product so there you want it to be a lot clearer here you'd then obviously have you know multiple pictures uh, of the product basically down here right so uh, if I just give me a sec, I delete this cell. Uh, and delete this one as well. Uh, and then drag that one down there. So there's kind of like four. Uh, and they're all even like that. So let me just change this photo. Uh, we'll do we'll do the yeah we'll do the white one so if i just change this photo here putting something like this uh that works fine for now um and then we'll do just make this one a little bit bigger like that this is just an example by the way guys so obviously you'd want to take more time and, and choose your images select your images a lot more carefully you don't want this writing as well you wouldn't want this writing uh on your on your image but for the purpose of this one i'm just going to show you exactly kind of what how i'd format it so something like that would work fine as well um with a home decor product obviously get rid of that text but 
Um, make sure these all fit in as well. You know, you can probably zoom uh, out a little bit. So it's more like that. That's a little bit better as well. Uh, then you'd obviously go ahead uh, and hit save. And that's it. You're ready to go, right? This is an example image ad that you could go ahead and run. Of course, you want to get rid of this one. But again, it shows you how to basically quickly go ahead uh, and create image ads. So I hope you did enjoy this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Yo, what's good, everyone? It's the Ecom Wizard here. And in this one, I'm going to be showing you exactly how me and Harry go ahead and launch our test campaigns for if you're running like a US store or a top five country store or an English speaking store as well, right? Now, this is with Facebook ads. Just ignore this kind of white box. It is kind of just a glitch. But here you can see we have our Facebook ad account. And I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly how we set these campaigns up, right? So first things first, you want to go ahead and hit create. Come down to sales. And then this is where you're going to name your campaign. Now, personally for me, you can name them exactly how you want. But I personally like to just put test. Then I'll put a kind of a line and I'll put the product name. So in this case, we're just going to be selling like a phone purse. Uh, and then after that, you can put like your break even ROAS, right? Which might be like 1.65, for example. Now, I'm not going to put the actual interest yet, but I'm just going to do USA, put interest here. Uh, and then I'm just going to go ahead uh, and put C1, which is copy one. Um, you may change your copy or be split testing your copy. V1, which is going to be video one um, or T1, which is going to basically be your thumbnail, right? So whatever you're split testing, it might be a, a thumbnail, it might be a video, it doesn't really matter. But for this one, we're just going to do T1, right? And this is, means we're just going to be split testing thumbnails. So don't worry about this. Uh, I never use CBO for testing, um, at least in this testing strategy. So we're just going to hit next. Now from here, what you're going to do uh, is keep this on interest, make this is on web, make sure this is on website and you've got the right pixel. Conversion event, event we always just do purchase, right? There's a lot of people out there that basically do like start with ATC view content to warm up the pixel. Like there's just no need for it. Um, just jump straight into pixel. I mean, purchase with a brand new pixel, etc., etc. Now budget wise, we're gonna basically be doing $1033. And we're going to set this to midnight for the next day, right? So it's going to be running, if I launch this ad, which I'm not going to, but if I launch this ad, it would be running essentially from midnight or one minute past midnight, right? Now, when it comes to location, we're going to keep this on United States for now. Uh, and age, personally for me, I like to do 21 to 65 or usually I'll do 25 to 65 plus, right? Um, that's just personally what I prefer. Gender, you can leave this on all depending on the product. Of course, some products are going to be like beauty products for women. Some products may be like a men's jacket where you'll target men. If it's genderless, then just leave it on all, right? But for this one, this is kind of like a phone purse thing. So we're just going to do women for now. Now, in terms of interest, you want to obviously think what types of people would be interested in this phone purse, right? Now, personally for me, one that sticks to mind is anyone that's interested in fashion accessories so i'm going to go ahead and hit fashion accessories uh, i'm going to copy that uh, and i'm going to go ahead and put that as the interest up here right now estimated audience size 60 to 75 million is perfectly fine anything from like 1 million to 100 million is perfectly fine uh, we're going to scroll down i usually leave this on auto placements i'm not going to lie there's no need to fiddle with that um Again, you don't need to fiddle with this either. So don't worry about that. Just go ahead and hit next, right? Now, these are just random pages that come with the profile. But basically, we're just going to go ahead and quickly show you how we'd set up the ad. So I've written T1. This means thumbnail one. We're going to be split testing. And for this part, what you're going to gonna want to go ahead and do is upload the video, primary text, headline, description, uh, call to action, also put in your website URL where you want to redirect them to uh, and then go ahead and add in some UTMs as well so you can track it on Shopify's end, right? So what I'm going to go ahead and do is if I just hit add video, I'm not going to re-upload it, but this is how you'd upload it. You would just hit upload, right? But I've already went ahead and uploaded it. So for this one, I'm just going to hit next, next, next. Uh, that's done there. And I'll go ahead uh, and just play this video just to show you an example of this product, right? You guys may or may have not seen it before. Um, so there's an example. Now to add the thumbnail, we're going to hit edit video, come down to thumbnail, 
uh, hit manual and then hit upload, right? And again, here is where you'd hit upload and then go ahead and upload a design, right? I've already just literally uploaded a quick design. Um, and this, for example, would work perfectly fine as a thumbnail as well, right? Now, when it comes to your primary text, I'm just going to go ahead and input one. Uh, sorry that we actually use that. It doesn't actually suit this um, product, but you know, you can obviously go ahead and adjust it if you want to. But yeah, basically, if I come back onto Facebook ads, um, I've just literally put here, if for example, you were selling like a kid's toy, right? You could put something like kids love playing with this toy, um, improves motor skills, easy to use, fun for hours, right? Um, obviously, this is a bag, so, you know, you wouldn't put this in, but I'm just showing you an example framework to use. This is obviously going to be something like www um you can just call it cavelli.com that's probably you know that would be your page you want it to go directly to your product so it would be like phone purse um dot com etc cetera, etc cetera. uh so slash products slash phone purse right let me just do that so yeah that's that's kind of what the link would look like something like that um for your actual product and that's how customers would see it on your actual Facebook ad, right? Now, when it comes to the headline, I'm just going to put in an example headline as well. So we're just going to put like the perfect toy for Christmas. Of course, like I said, guys, this is just an example ad copy. It's not actually for this phone pur for phone purse, sorry. Um, and then a description might be something like, uh, if I click here, uh, save 40% limited time only. And these are just some framework examples of templates that you could use as well that I've just shown you. So uh, description there, uh, call to action. I personally always like to have this on shop now. I've never really used anything else. Website URL, you're just gonna basically copy this and put in the same one, right? So that's pretty much everything. The final thing is just building UTMs. So campaign medium, I usually like to use campaign name, uh, sorry, campaign name here. Uh, this one is usually ad set name. So whatever you name your ad set and then campaign content is usually ad name and just go ahead and hit apply, right? So this will basically add a little string of um, link to the website and basically when customers click through you're going to be able to tell exactly which ad set name or campaign name or ad ad name you know got the sale basically right so that is everything for this ad i'm not going to go ahead and hit publish just because we ain't added a payment method but this is how you'd basically go ahead and set up your ad right so once that's done what you're going to go what you're going to do is duplicate that right and split test the thumbnail because we obviously want two different thumbnails, either two different thumbnails, two different written copies, two different videos or something like that, right? But we need to change something uh, and usually we'll do two or three different creatives. So for this one, I'm just gonna hit upload uh, and just choose a different image this time just to see which one performs best. So that's basically what I've done now. So I'm happy now that we have two different ones. You're gonna keep everything else the same right? You only want to split test one different feature, essentially. So we have thumbnail one, thumbnail two, we're going to be able to see which one performs best. Now, once we've done that, we're going to click back out uh, and choose three more interests for our campaign, right? Three or four, you either want five uh, or four ad sets each. Um, for this one, we'll just do four just to show an example. But again, uh, we're going to choose similar um, interest to the one we've already done, right? So just see what Facebook suggests. Online shopping is another good one. Uh, clothing is another good one because this is obviously a bag. Handbags is another good one because again, this is a bag as well, right? So handbag is going to be one. And again, just double check the audience size, 30 million, that's perfectly fine. We're just gonna go ahead and put that interest in there see what else there is. So I think online shopping would probably be another good one as well. So just go ahead and select that and then paste it at the top here. We'll also see what other ones there are as well. So finally, our fourth interest is going to be something like 
uh, you could do dresses is another cool one beauty is another one that you could do to be honest um, for this one we'll just do dresses just because it is an item of clothing as well so I have used this interest before again that's 40 million so that's perfectly fine as well I should delete that and then for our final interest we're going to do something like we'll just do beauty because again that's quite a broad one but it does apply to something like this as well right so again we have our five different interests now right and these are all for the usa and what you'll notice with usa is typically when you're doing usa only the cpms are quite high the reason why we isolate usa is because if we put usa inside of our other ad sets what happens is the overall cpm for those ad sets tend to go up quite high right and you can't after you've kind of launched it, if it's performing well, to then take USA out, it affects the optimization and stuff like that. So we personally prefer this, five ad sets to the USA with five interests. Then we're going to go ahead and duplicate it, literally just duplicate all of the interests, right? And just change the countries, right? Just change the countries to excluding USA. Um, wow, well, you can just delete USA and do the other English speaking, top English speaking countries. So we get rid of United States, um, those countries are going to be United Kingdom. Firstly, uh, you're going to have Australia. Uh, Canada is another one. Uh, and then New Zealand as well, right? And you can also add in some other English speaking countries if you wanted to that are up there. Uh, you can add in Germany uh, as well. Uh, and you can usually add in, I usually add in a few more like Netherlands. Uh, and Belgium, and then a few of the Scandinavian countries as well, right? So uh, Denmark, uh, Sweden, uh, and then Norway as well, because these guys, a lot of them can speak English as well. Um, so lastly, you can add in France as well, by the way. So those are the ex-USA countries, pretty much. I might have missed one or two, but yeah, pretty much. Um, and what you're going to want to go ahead and do is obviously just name these ex-USA. So it's easy to know which ones are uh, USA ad sets and which ones are not USA ad sets, right? And you'll notice like the CPMs on these ones are a lot cheaper than the other ones, right? But what happens is we're going to be able to easily tell whether this product performs best in the USA or whether it performs best uh, in our excluding USA countries. So what I'll do is just quickly sort all these names out. Hit save to draft. Um, and then I'll show you like an overarching example like an overarching view of what we're trying to achieve, right? So let me just do that, save to draft, uh, and we're all sorted, right? So if I bring up like an example preview, um, we have USA, excluding USA, one, two, three, four, five interests, uh, each with two creatives in them. And again, the same five interests, but, but two excluding USA countries. Um, one ABO, eight to 10 ad sets, 50% uh, USA, 50% top English speaking countries, um, $10.33 uh, or $20.33 and two creatives, right? So this is, as again, this is what I've showed you here, uh, one, two, three, four, five to USA and then the save five interest to excluding USA countries as well, right? One campaign, eight to 10 ad sets, you can have four interests if you want. Um, and then inside of those, we have two creatives inside of it so all you do is literally go ahead highlight all of this review and publish uh, and you're ready to go so i hope you guys did enjoy this video and i'll catch you in the next one yo what's good everyone it's the ecom wizard here and in this one i'm going to be showing you mine and harry's testing strategy for eu countries so what i'm going to go ahead and do is as you can see here i am in ads manager and firstly what you want to go ahead and do is hit create now this is basically for if you're running or wanting to launch a product in a specific EU market with a translated website and a localized website and everything like that. So your website should be in that specific country, like German or Danish. Your um, Basically, your Facebook ad copy should be in that, basically, uh, that language as well. Uh, and also your product pages uh, and checkout and everything like that should be in the local languages with the payment methods as well, right? 
So firstly, what we're going to go ahead and do is come on to sales. Uh, it's a little bit similar to our other strategy, but not, you know, it has some differences in it. And firstly, you're going to want to go ahead and name the campaign again. I still name it test, just like we did the last time. Uh, and for this one, we're going to do the phone purse as well. Uh, and also, again, just put in your break even ROAS, right? Now, for this one, because we don't really, we're not split testing different countries, I literally just put the interest name. Um, there's no need to put like USA or whatever, or anything like that. Uh, and again, for this one, I'm just going to put T1 because we're split testing different thumbnails, right? So, what you're going to want to go ahead and do uh, is just come down. And personally, for me, I have used this strategy, exact strategy inside of the case study of 100K a month I did. Uh, and you'll be able to see that inside of this free course as well. So that kind of acts as proof that I know this strategy does work. Um, it's tried, it's proven. You can definitely get to over six figures per month with this. Um, and you'll be able to review kind of what I did as well, right? So what you want to do again, come on, same thing, same process, pretty much. Um, you just come down to purchase. Don't worry about that message here. Uh, there's your pixel conversion event purchase, like I said. Uh, and again, we're going to do $20.33 this time, right? So instead of $10.33, we're going to do $20.33. Uh, and the reason why I do this is just personally because uh, one, I want to get data a bit faster. And two, we're only testing five or six ad sets inside of this testing campaign, right? We're not doing like nine or 10 like we was before. Um, go ahead and set this to midnight. Then pretty much uh, again, scroll down. Now, location wise, again, uh, for this one, I'm just going to show you an example in Denmark, right? Um, but you can do, this can be any country. It can be Netherlands, it can be Belgium, uh, it can be German, it can be whichever country you're obviously running in, right? So don't worry too much uh, about that. But the country should obviously be where your localized website is. Now, again, for ages, uh, I'm going to do 25 to 65 plus. Uh, and for genders, I'm just going to leave this on all for now. Um, but typically, if it's a male product, again, do male. If it's female, you know, self explanatory, do female as well, right? Now, this phone purse uh, or whatever product it is you're, you know, going to target. The first interest I'm going to do, again, for example, is fashion accessories, right? Uh, and Denmark's a smaller country, so you'll see the audience size is only like 1.9, but ideally you do always want this to be over or around 1 million for Denmark, in my opinion, right? That's what I've seen perform best. If it's only like 300K or 400K, then don't do it. But for places like Germany, you'll see they have a lot larger, um, a lot larger audience sizes as well, right? So fashion accessories, for example, uh, leave all of this, leave all of this auto placements. We're going to go ahead and hit next. Now, again, I'm going to, sh going to just click on an example page. Uh, and if you've watched the previous video, you'll already know how to do this, but I'll just show you again. If not, just go ahead, hit video. If you need to upload it, then you'd hit upload. We've already uploaded it as an example, just to save time. Um, go ahead and hit done. The dimensions of our videos are 800. Um, 800 width by 1000 length. So if any of you guys are wondering, then yeah, that's the dimensions for our videos. Hit edit media uh, and come on to thumbnail, a manual, because we want to add um, a thumbnail to it. And again, I'm just going to keep this as is, right? This doesn't have no writing in it. Um, doesn't have no Danish written in it, like the video or anything like that. So yeah, you can see here, even Danes would understand what this product does right? Um, for, for like EU stores, I don't really like to have text on the video. In my opinion, it's just not necessary. Now, when it comes to ad copy, this is a little bit different because you're going to obviously, I'm going to use the same ad copy, right? It's just, for example, a kid's toy, but this time you need to obviously get it translated. So again, you're going to go on to like, um, I, I, I use something like Deepal, for example, Go on to the translator, uh, wait for it to load. We are just using a proxy, so it's slightly slower, but detect the language uh, or you can put on English or whatever you want. Uh, and we're going to translate it to, if you're doing German, it would obviously be German. Uh, this one, we're going to be doing Danish, so we'll just do Danish. Go ahead and copy it uh, and paste that in there. Uh, when it comes to the headline now, what you're going to go ahead and do is again, copy this, repeat the process, 
uh, and just translate it again because of course we want all of our ad copy to be in localized language so i'll just paste that in there uh, and then lastly the description again we're going to copy this uh, and just translate it as well right so i nearly forgot but copy that uh, and then just go ahead and paste that in there right so all of our ad copy now is now in danish which is good um the link to our website again i'm just going to go ahead and put something like a random name uh, kivio slash uh, dot com slash products slash purse right this is, is i don't know whose site this is but it's just an example of what it would look like um you then scroll down keep your call to action on shop now uh, and then your website URL, again, paste this in here, right? And as always, don't forget to include UTM. So campaign name is campaign name. Campaign medium is usually ad set name, what I do. Uh, and then campaign content is ad name as well. Uh, and just go ahead and hit apply, right? So there's our video set up. There's our thumbnail set up. Uh, it's in Danish. We're happy with this. This product page here, the link should be in Danish as well, um, which is fine, right? Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is again, duplicate like we did last time and change the thumbnail to a different thumbnail, right? It doesn't matter where we're targeting, we still want this to be a different thumbnail so that we can find out which one performs best. So I'm gonna hit thumbnail, hit upload uh, and just choose a different image, right? Ideally, you obviously wanna pre-make these thumbnails, but again, um, and you can have like a black banner across the top with some text on there. This is usually what we do, but Again, here's two different thumbnails, right? So what I now do is come onto ad set level uh, and duplicate this four times um, or five times. It doesn't really matter too much as long as you have at least five ad sets. So for this one, I'm just gonna do four ad sets and we're gonna choose four different interests. So in total, we have five different interests and you want them to be quite broad um, just because EU markets are a little bit smaller than the typical kind of USA, UK, et cetera, et cetera, right? So if I scroll down, uh, we'll choose another broad interest. Online shopping would work perfectly fine for something like this. Again, if I just scroll back up and name this online shopping. Now, another interest is going to be something like clothing. Again, is another broad interest. That works fine. That's like 2.4 million, which is cool as well. Another one I do is probably like beauty for a product like this. So we'll see if that comes up here. Again, that's came up fine. So we'll just put beauty up here. Uh, and then the last one may be something like cosmetics or, or something like that, right? So we'll just do uh, another one. We'll just do cosmetics. Right, so we have five broad interests basically uh, that are at $20.33 per day, right? What I'm gonna do is analyze the results of obviously something like this. If it's performing really bad in the middle of the day, I'll go ahead and just cut the product because, because we're at a $20 budget, it would have already spent like $60, $70 by like 4 p.m., right, or 3 p.m. So you can analyze in the day how this is performing. Um, and if you're obviously getting sales and stuff, just leave it for another day. But in total, you'll be spending around $100. So this is kind of the framework for our EU strategy. One campaign, uh, five broad interests, uh, each at like $20 per day. And then inside of them, they both have two different creatives. Uh, when it comes to creatives, you don't have to split test thumbnails, just thumbnails. You could have two different videos. You could have two different actual text. So you can see here, we've written like three ticks here. You could have like a different format, a different text saying something else or a different offer, right? Split testing that. Uh, once you've done all of this, literally just go ahead, highlight it, review and publish. Uh, and you'd obviously go ahead uh, and just publish it, right? I'm not going to do that just because we ain't added a payment method. But this is how you'd go ahead uh, and launch to EU countries such as Germany, um, Netherlands and Belgium, Denmark, Sweden. This is the same strategy I use. And like I said, in the case study, you'll be able to go ahead and see that as well. So I hope you did enjoy this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Hello everyone, Ecom Wizard here. And in this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly show you a live example of when you would cut and when you would scale and also what some of the metrics actually mean, right? 
So as you can see here, this was a product we launched months back, um, but I just wanted to go ahead and show you kind of the thought process um, behind it, right? So as you can see, we have five ad sets. These are all at $10. Like I said, in the EU strategy, you can use $20 typically, but this was $10 at the time. Uh, and five single interests we had, baby shower, motherhood, infant, nappy, uh, parents, et cetera, et cetera, right? Now, as I scroll along, the CPC for this is actually very good. Personally, for me, for a winning product, uh, a cost per link click is usually below around 70 cents. So um, 0 0.70 if it's in USD, uh, euros would obviously be the same as well, a little bit lower because of the conversion, but maybe 0 0.63 or something, right? If you get this below kind of 0 0.5, you know people are liking your ad and they're clicking it quite a lot, right? Now, CPM, CPM in EU, what I'm going to do is run through EU metrics uh, and then I'll run through kind of USA metrics. So in terms of EU metrics, 0 0.5 below is quite good. Um, CPMs, you ideally want below 10 for EU if it's a winning product as well. Um, but again, take these metrics with a pinch of salt. They're not always bang on like there's metrics that go above these and still perform really well, right? Click through rate, ideally you want above two um, for both scenarios. Um, cost per ad to carts, again, this will depend on the product price because if it's expensive, less people will be adding it to the cart, right? But what I basically obviously work out with UTMs, it's not so much as easy with Facebook nowadays, but your actual return on ad spend, right? That to me is the most important thing out of all of this. I care how much money we're spending versus how much money we're getting back from Facebook. Now, you're not going to be able to probably easily do this, but some for some people you'll have to work it out on utms um and on shopify's dashboard but for some people you might have better facebook tracking right but the break-even ROAS for this product was maybe like 1.4 um so i knew i could scale ad sets that were at 2.35 or 2.4 or, or some something around that right now these two ad sets here nappy and parents right these two ad sets i know i can go ahead and scale so these for example, they've got multiple purchases as well. So they've had six purchases each and they're at a positive ROAS. These two ad sets are one that I'd go ahead, duplicate, and then I'd put into a CBO, which we've shown you already, the scaling strategy. Um, and again, I do that for Nappy. So one CBO for Nappy at $200 and then another CBO at, for parents at $200 as well and see how they perform, right? These two up here have not had any purchases, so we just go ahead and turn them off, right? Just get rid of them. They're not performing very well. Now, this one is at 1.30, and if even if it's missing maybe one purchase, that means it's only at maybe 1.6, right? If, for example, it's missing one purchase, it may be at 1.6 ROAS. Now, that isn't enough to scale because our break-even ROAS is only 1.4 or, or 1.35 or so. So if we then scale, as you scale, typically your ROAS will usually drop a little bit anyway. And that would just bring us back down to a loss or break-even. So what I would probably do is kill this ad set as well. Um, but I would launch more ad sets horizontally scaling similar to these ones here. So look what's similar to Nappy, Parents, and then go ahead and launch them and try to find more interest, right? So if I'm now looking at USA metrics, for example, USA metrics, a decent kind of cost per link click for USA is below $1, right? Just because the CPMs are so high. Uh, anything below $1 for USA is, is fine. Um, CPMs, anything below like $20 is, is pretty good as well. Um, sometimes you can get below like 15 as well if you've got a good product, which is fine. Uh, CTR, again, you want above two. Uh, which is important. Uh, and then again, the ROAS thing still applies whether it's USA or EU, doesn't really matter, right? It's just money in versus money out. Now, if I was obviously day one, right? And we literally launched this product on day one, it spent $10 or $20, right? If we are at break even, the product's at break even, so we've spent 150, made 150 back, right? On the first day of launching it, I'm going to keep that product running for day two and I'm going to see how it performs, right? If we're positive, like by a lot, so our ROAS is maybe 2.5 on the first day, again, I'm still going to leave it for the second day. 
Now, if we don't get any sales on day one of running this product, right, I'm just going to cut it. I'm not going to leave it till day two to burn more money, right? I at least want a few sales or one sale on the first day. So for the second day, I'm heading in with some data that will at least let me know that people are willing to purchase this product, right? Now, typically after day one, if I launch a product and it only gets maybe one sale or two sales, but there's a lot of buying intent, i.e. there's a lot of add to carts, right? But people aren't buying. Then what I'll do is maybe drop the price by a few dollars to see if it performs, right? Now on day two, if the product again doesn't pick up, I'm just going to kill it, right? If it's break even on day two again, I'm going to kill it, right? If it's positive on day two again and overall on average we're positive, then I'll start looking to scale it, right? And that's basically how I do it in the first three days of when to cut and scale. So if you're obviously above your break-even ROAS by like plus one or plus 0.8, so if our break-even ROAS is 1.5, I wouldn't scale unless I've at least got like a 2.3 ROAS, right? On an ad set, basically. Um, and again, day by day, that's pretty much what I do. Day one, are we above are we break even or are we below, right? If we're below with absolutely no sales, just cut it. If we're below, but we're not far off break even, then I'll drop the price a bit. If we're at break even, I'll leave it for a second day and, and won't make any changes. Uh, and if we're positive after day one and day two, then we start to look to scale, right? So that's pretty much how you cut and scale your ad sets um, and the metrics to kind of look out for as well. Hopefully this does make sense um, and does help you when it comes to cutting and scaling. Of course, you're not going to be able to easily just analyze Facebook ads like this. You're probably going to have to go into your face, your Shopify analytics, into sessions, sessions converted, um, value orders per product, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? But this is kind of an overview um, of me just working it out on Facebook and what the metrics mean. So I hope you did enjoy this video, uh, and I'll catch you in the next one. Hello, everyone. The Ecom Wizard here, and in this one, I'm going to be showing you some of the best scaling strategies that me and Harry use on a day-to-day -day basis for all of our different campaigns. So there's kind of three categories that we use when it comes to scaling. Uh, one is typically called horizontal scaling, and I'll cover what that is. Uh, another one is called vertical scaling, and another one we just call kind of CBOs, right? So horizontally scaling is basically just showing different people or increasing the spend on a specific ad set, but showing it to different people. So it can be a new audience. Um, it can be a new interest. It can be a new ad creative. All of these are forms of horizontal scaling, essentially, right? So to give you an example of how that looks in, in layman's terms and in kind of visually, if, for example, here's our test campaign. If you've run like a test campaign to the EU and you've watched that video, if we have three ad sets that are working, right? Clothing, online shopping, and say cosmetics. What we're going to do is just duplicate it. We might duplicate it another five times right? And try to find more interests that we can then utilize, right? Because we know that three of these interests are working, why not try to find more? So an example of horizontal scaling would be trying to find more interest. So um, one might be clothing, we've already got that one. So we're going to try to find ones that we don't already use, right? So dresses would be another one. You still want them to relate kind of broadly to the product if that's, you know, um, that would be a good idea to keep them broadly related to the product as well. So dresses we haven't used before. Uh, engaged shoppers is another one we haven't used before as well. Uh, and only horizontally scale, of course, if your ad sets are performing well, right? I'm going to do a separate video on when to cut and when to scale uh, and show you exactly kind of the metrics to look for. But your ad sets need to be performing well for you to go ahead uh, and make sure that you are scaling, right? Now, another one, uh, ad set, see if interest we can find that we haven't used. Um, shopping, boutiques is another one that's to do with clothing as well. And we haven't used that one before. So we'll just go ahead uh, and select boutiques. Uh, and all of these, again, like I said, is an example of horizontally scaling, right? Just showing the same product to a different audience or interest. Um, lastly, we'll just do something like um, T-shirt would be another one as well. Uh, and then you go ahead and you get the gist, right? We're just basically, I would typically launch these on like day two or three of the product working 
just because then by the end of the week, I'm going to have a bunch of interest that I can go ahead uh, and throw into CBOs and use that way, right? Now, uh, we'll just do trousers for this one. We haven't used that one before. So you can see we now have 10 new interests. What started as obviously five when we first launched the product, it was working well. So we went ahead and had added another five, right? So all of these are examples. Um, this is an example of horizontally scaling, right? And I will use this typically quite a lot. Usually always if the product's working, I'll launch more uh, similar ad sets within the first few days, right? Like day two or three of noticing the product is doing well, right? Now, after three days of an ad set consistently performing well, and it's also at least, I'd say kind of one uh, above our break-even row. So if our break-even row is like um, 1.5, it needs to be at least 2.5 for us to then use this second scaling method, right? So this is a good scaling method. This will probably get you to 1K a day um, decently enough, but it's not going to get you to the thousands and thousands per day, right? The way to do that is to individually pick out ad sets that are performing well. So if I show you an example here of a screenshot, right? We have an ad set that's got like a nine ROAS, um, eight ROAS, like five ROAS. It's performing really well. This is just for one specific day. Obviously, you'd want it to be multiple days, but... The second way which I use to scale quite aggressively is CBOs. And I'm going to show you how I personally utilize them. So if, for example, this fashion accessories, right, was at like a plus three ROAS, what I personally would do is duplicate it into a new campaign. I'd call it like CBO um, and then dash and then the product name. So we'll just call it like uh, phone purse. Uh, and then for this one, you obviously want to make sure you include the interest at the end so that you know exactly what interest is going inside of this CBO, right? Now, this is when I personally like to come down to the CBO button and turn it on. And I'll typically start it at $200, right? The minimum for me is usually $200. If you've got a bit of a less budget, you can do $100, but I personally prefer $200. Now, there are some people that will put like three copies or five copies of this ad set inside of this, or they'll put three different interests that are working well inside of the CBO. I personally prefer right now to just put one interest inside of the CBO and it only have one copy, right? That is literally what is working best for me right now. So how that would look is you'd have uh, one CBO, right? Uh, just one interest inside of it. Obviously, you want this to be on purchase as well, by the way. Make sure this is on purchase. Um, set it to midnight, of course. And then obviously, it would be your uh, fashion accessories. This would obviously be 25 to 65 plus. Um, but it would be your interest inside of it. Now, you want to take your best performing ad as well. So whatever your best performing ad is, right? Just come here, click use existing post, find the post ID um, in Facebook. There's an actual place to find it. Uh, if you go into your menu and then click page posts and you'll be able to find it, enter the post ID here uh, and then go ahead and hit publish, right? So only ever use your best performing ad um, for this. So this is literally what it would look like. Phone purse, uh, it would just have, I just filter by selection for now. Uh, it would have one interest inside of it, right? Which is the interest that has been performing well. And what you do is you do this for as many good ad sets as you have, essentially, right? So if you have multiple ad sets that are working well inside of here, like cosmetics, right? We could do the same thing again. You could end up with maybe five CBOs, right? All at $200 spend each, right? And when you watch the case study, you're going to see how we was able to utilize this method um, and to get it to five, six, seven K per day uh, in revenue, right? So this one wouldn't be uh, fashion accessories. This would be cosmetics now. So I'm just showing you another example, only one copy. And again, we're going to go into the CBO feature, turn that on and set it at around $200, right? Uh, and again, we'll just come here, delete the copy part. Uh, and then you'd come over to make sure you set it to midnight, come over to the ad. Um, again, hit use existing post, find the best post ID uh, and use that same post ID as well, right? So what's going to happen is you're going to have like an army of CBOs here loaded up with different interests that have been performing well. Now, once you launch these, you're going to leave it for around two or three days, 
right? And if they're performing after two or three days, you're going to go ahead and bump them up to 400, right? So it would go from 200, leave them for three days. Uh, and then if they're performing well still, go ahead and bump them up to 400, right? If they're not performing well, right, after three days, then just go ahead and kill them, right? You're going to have so many CBOs that some of them will work, some of them won't work. But the key is to just find the ones that do work and scale them up, right? And this is called vertically scaling. So we've basically done horizontal scaling, right? Which is what I showed you, adding more interest uh, or changing the creative or et cetera, et cetera, using lookalikes, uh, even though we don't use them much anymore. Um, CBO scaling, this is the CBO uh, scale method where you basically put your best interest into their own CBOs, right? With only one copy inside of them. Now, vertically scaling is literally just increasing budgets on what's already working. So this is an example of vertically scaling. Um, we're just going from $200 at midnight, you change it to $400. Uh, if it performs well, then you can then go from $400, uh, leave it another three or four days, uh, and then you can go up to $800, right? And you just keep increasing the budget like that. You'll get to a point where this isn't gonna, like your performance is gonna start to drop right? And when it does start to drop, just go back down to what it was previously working at. So if you increase it to 800 and it didn't work, go back down to 400. If you try increase it to 400 and it doesn't work after three days, then just go back down to 200 and see how it performs essentially, right? So this is basically how we're scaling all of our ad accounts currently. Um, it's really simple, right? On the first two, day, day one, day two, um, you see how the product performs. On day two, you'll basically go ahead uh, and launch some new interests. So horizontally scale with new interests. Uh, day three, day four, see how they perform. Also while launching these larger budget CBOs, right? To get to multiple thousand per day. Uh, and then you keep doing that. Just keep testing new interests, uh, keep scaling with CBOs. And the CBOs that are working, just go ahead and increase the budget from $200 to $400. Or if you start on like, $100, right? Then you'd go up to $200 uh, after three days, leave it another three days, then you'd go up to $400, leave it another three days, et cetera, et cetera, right? So this is an example uh, of the scaling strategies that we are currently using. I hope you did enjoy this video. Um, as an example, like home, obviously you'd want this to have at least kind of two or three purchases, but um, probably three. Uh, and the row has to be very positive, but home would go into a CBO, Ikea would go into a CBO, for example, and kitchen would go into a CBO, for example, right? Furniture had no sales and the, and the cost per add to cart is quite expensive. So you'd cut that. Here's some horizontal ad sets, which we tried to scale, but uh, which we tried to test, but weren't working. So we went ahead and turned them off as well, right? So this is a full example of our um, scaling strategies. I hope you did enjoy this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Hey everyone, Otis here. And in this one, I'm gonna be showing you the process and the difference between EU and traditional top four dropshipping. So first things first, what is the process of EU dropshipping? So all this involves is basically taking winning products from the top four, typically it's United Kingdom, USA, Canada, and Australia, and basically advertising them in specific EU markets. Now I will create a separate video on what countries are best to do in kind of EU dropshipping and stuff like that. There are some that are better than others and easier for people like outside of the EU to basically, you know, access and advertise to. But for this one, we'll just keep it as, you know, specific EU markets. Now, what this basically involves is having native language on the stores, native ads on, for example, when you're running on Facebook or TikTok, uh, and also native payment methods that customers are used to paying with. So for example, traditionally in top four dropshipping, you would have an English website, you would have English ads, and you'd also have, you know, typical English payment methods, which would just be, you know, card and PayPal, which is what most English stores offer. Um, however, with EU dropshipping, you would have, for example, a German website, you would have German ads. So you wouldn't necessarily have to have a German video, but the actual text above the ad on Facebook would be in German. And then you'd also have probably Klarna as an option because typically Germans like 
like to pay with Klarna as well. Uh, they don't have to, but they enjoy paying with Klarna. Also, they like PayPal quite a lot uh, and card as well. So that's an example of, you know, a payment method that they're familiar with. Also the ads, German uh, and your store, all your pages on your store would be German as well, right? Now, a lot of the time we get questions on what's the benefits of EU dropshipping, right? Is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Um, why would you even start EU dropshipping if you've already got an English store? And in this one, I'm basically going to obviously now tell you what are the benefits of it and also the drawbacks. I'm trying to give a balanced fair argument because there's in reality, there's no one that's better than the other. Um, we've had stores that have done well in USA, uh, as you've probably seen. And we've also had stores that have done well in the EU. It's just put down to personal preference on which one, you know, you kind of fit into and your goals with dropshipping are. So the first benefit is less competition. Now, when I talk about less competition, it's typically with dropshipping in the fact that Every dropshipper usually when they get started will begin or 90% of them will begin with an English store, right? They'll do traditional top five countries or top four countries or e-packet countries. And that's because English is, you know, probably one of the most spoken languages in the world. And also USA, UK and stuff like that, when combined together, they're probably the most powerful markets to obviously go and sell to. Now, when you're choosing a specific EU market to go ahead and advertise to, you're going up against a lot less people. The reason being is because one, you're either going to be competing against people who are from that country who are drop shipping and they've just decided to sell in their own country. So there's less competition or you're obviously competing against people like me or people like, you know, out there that are not from that specific country that have decided to go ahead and advertise in that country. However, those two groups of people are still a lot less than, of course, the rest of the world who have all chose to go uh, with EU. So that's just an example of less competition. Now, the second benefit is that typically there's lower CPMs, right? Cost per 1,000 impressions on Facebook that stands for. Uh, and typically with EU dropshipping, you will find it's cheaper to advertise to a specific group, not necessarily cheaper conversions, but it's cheaper to advertise to them than the USA. So to give you an example, maybe a typical USA CPM may be between 20 to 25, whereas in EU, it's probably maybe more 10 to 15 dollars right? So there's a little bit of a difference there. Um, and the reason being for that is because CPMs are, are usually dictated by demand. So for example, if it's quarter four, um, everyone wants to go ahead and advertise to USA because it's, you know, the most powerful time in an e-commerce year. And also USA has got probably one of the most biggest purchasing powers uh, in terms of consumers in the world. However, when it comes to uh, EU, even in Q4, it's still expensive. It gets more expensive. However, typically you'll find that it's still a little bit cheaper than, you know, traditionally just going to the USA. And again, it works off supply and demand. There's less people trying to advertise to a specific EU country than there is trying to advertise to, you know, USA and stuff like that, right? And again, when Facebook sees that, they obviously increase, you know, the cost to advertise there, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the third benefit of EU dropshipping is that there's the winning product ratio. So I found personally from my own experience and a lot of friends that the winning product ratio is usually higher with EU dropshipping. E.g., if you test 10 products, for example, in USA and you test 10 products in, for example, Denmark, I would put money that you're probably going to find a winning product faster in Denmark than you are in the USA. And the reason being is because there's a little bit of a time lag between the countries and what their consumers see. So, for example, in USA, typically USA is the first to everything in the world. Um, fortunately for anyone who's from the USA, you guys get all the latest food, you get all the latest TV shows, you get all the latest products and cool gadgets just first. It's just the way the world is. Um, and typically people in EU countries specifically, there's a little bit of a time lag between when they see them, maybe a month, maybe two months, but there's a time lag. And what that means is if you can get in that time lag, um, and pick the winners from USA and put them in an EU market where people haven't seen them before, you can be onto a winning product a little bit faster, right? Fourth benefit is very simple. You can still get the same shipping times as USA. So countries like Germany, uh, Denmark, Sweden, all these countries have really, really good infrastructures, right? So you literally, again, can get similar shipping times to what you'd find in USA. Now, the last thing is that customers have disposable income to buy items, right? There are a lot of hidden countries in the EU that have a lot of money. People have a lot of money there. So if you take, for example, Denmark or Sweden, their standard of living is even a lot higher than sometimes people in the UK, right? Their average standard of living, I would say, is probably higher than people in the UK because there's a bit more of a wealth gap between 
um, probably people in the UK than there is Denmark. There's, for example, uh, Denmark's GDP per capita is just under, I think, maybe $70,000. I think it's around $68,000. We checked the other day on the live stream. But it's very high for an economy, right? Each person is obviously, you know, providing good output. That's not necessarily their average wage, but it does show that obviously the economy is doing well uh, and people do have money there. So what are the you know drawbacks of this method? We don't, we've obviously been through the benefits and again, it's not all sunshine uh, and rosy. I like to give you guys a full picture of everything. So the first thing is that it's harder to get some local payment methods, for example, Klarna. So to get Klarna as a business, you one, need to have a business because they have a Klarna merchant portal and they'll check into basically your company's details, your company number, etc., etc. Uh, a lot of the time, people don't have that when they're first getting started with dropshipping. I'm not sure if you can set up as just a sole trader or you have to have a business, but it can still be harder because they do do some checks a little bit more um, that before, like it's not like Stripe where you can just open account straight away. Uh, your account will go into a little bit of a review before they give you access to Klarna, right? Whereas Stripe, you can open account, start accepting payments straight away. Now, the second thing is that the drawback is that you can become over-reliant on specific payment methods. So for example, Sweden is a country, because uh, I believe Klarna was uh, founded in Sweden, Sweden was basically... A lo- like I had had a Swedish store before and 95% of people paid by Klarna. Now, you may think that's great. I've got the payment method. But when you start to scale, what happens is you now become more risk to, you, you now become uh, more of a risky client to that payment processor if you're processing all your payments just through them. So if you think of it like this, typically in USA or UK, you probably get a 50-50 split or 60-40 or split between PayPal and maybe card. Now, what that means is PayPal don't think you're as much of a risk because you're only doing, I don't know, maybe 20 orders a day on there or 10 orders per day on there, right? Because it's split. Now, you're also doing 20 orders on card as well. Now, if you take away one of them and just do 40 orders on PayPal, PayPal now looks at you and thinks, well, you're a lot more higher risk because you're processing more volume, more volume, more money, more chargebacks. The risk of you customers disputing is higher. So that's where it comes in a little bit, um, you know, a little bit of an issue because you can become over-reliant on a specific payment method. Same as Denmark. Denmark is 95% card right? Uh, Credit card. So again, you become over-reliant on that payment method and more risky. Now, the third drawback is that the scalability is not as high as traditional top four, but it's still good, right? It's still good enough for, I'd say, 95, 99% of dropshippers out there, right? You can still get to 5, 10, 15k days um, in EU dropshipping, right? Um, But when it comes to top four, again, it's unmatched, right? I've seen people do 50k, 60k, 70 days in USA. Um, Typically for EU, you know, it's not as scalable as that. But if you're just getting started out in dropshipping, you know, you don't need to worry about that for now, right? But the scalability is still very good. It's just not as high uh, as, you know, USA, right? Fourthly is VAT issues, which may need resolving. Now, I'm not going to cover this in too much detail, just because I'm not an accountant. uh, And this is not financial advice just for the record. Um, There are some ways around it where you can, uh, I've I've seen people basically have like Hong Kong companies or Dubai companies they set up uh, to basically try to get around that. But essentially, if you're just from the EU and you have like a UK limited company, you should be paying VAT by law um, to obviously the goods that you sell inside Europe as well. It is 20% for UK. Uh, I'm not sure what it is for every other country that you sell in. I think some countries are a little bit higher than others, um, but that is an issue for, you know, some people. You'll have to look into that and ask an accountant kind of more advice on that as well. Uh, The final thing is that there's less options for importing the product to a 3PL. So, for example, in the USA, uh, you have ShipBob, you have tons and tons of different, you know, kind of 3PLs that you can import to and go ahead. And if you wanted to brand it and go down the branding level and get faster shipping, you know, five to seven day shipping, it's a lot easier to do that in the USA as opposed to EU. You know, you don't, you won't be able to speak the language. Um, and even if they are English speaking, which some of them are, a lot of them are as well, you're going to, str- you don't know the laws, the local laws. There's not as much information online about import tax and stuff like that. So it can get a little bit complicated. But this is just basically a good overview of the benefits 
and drawbacks. Uh, we do get a lot of questions about what's the difference. Hopefully this clears them up in a little bit more detail. But I hope you did enjoy this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Hey everyone, Otis here. And in this one, I'm gonna be showing you pretty much behind the scenes of a case study on my store, which done over 100K uh, per month for a specific store in Denmark. And I'm also gonna be taking you behind the scenes on the ad account as well, showing you some of the interests and stuff we used uh, and everything like that. So this is gonna be really useful. It's pretty much gonna be uncut. I'm just gonna cut out some things or blur out whatever is necessary. But other than that, it's going to be literally behind the scenes on everything. So just to show you from the 5th of March, 2023, uh, all the way up to the 4th of April, 2023, which is exactly 31 days, um, Sunday till Tuesday. Uh, this was literally happening uh, about a week ago or so. It's currently about the 9th or 10th, I believe, of April when I'm recording this. Um, and obviously this happened and uh, finished on the 4th of April as well, right? So it's literally been a month. Uh, as you can see, this, this is all real. Um, I'll just go ahead. Here's the sessions, returning customer rate, conversion rate. Um, around 2.64 AOV 422 Danish crones as well, right? So I'll just go ahead and quickly refresh just so you can see this isn't a still image or etc. etc. Uh, 700,557 Danish crones um, converted is actually $102,473. Uh, and our AOV is actually $61 per order. So for our specific orders, um, we had an AOV of $61, which is actually pretty good because with Facebook, it gives you room to scale and everything like that. Now, just to give you an example, a lot of the products we actually tested and the main winning product for this exact, um, the main winning product specifically, pardon, for this specific case study that was a winning product was actually um, put on this platinum winning product sheet. So if you guys are not already utilizing this sheet uh, or not using it, you will all have access to it in your Discord. It will be under the platinum um, kind of press called products um, and you'll see it on your left hand side on the channels. Make sure you are basically going ahead. Um, the reason being is because before I even test any products, uh, when I'm out searching for potential products for my own store, I literally will go ahead and put them on this sheet. Uh, and the reason being is because I want you guys to win just as well as me. Uh, a lot of us are advertising in different markets. Some are in Denmark, some are in Germany, some are in USA. Um, we're not directly competing against each other, right? Unless you're advertising the exact location, same interest, everything. Um, me advertising in Denmark is not gonna affect your USA store and et cetera, et cetera. Now, of course, if you've got clashing stores, it's a bit different, but um, for me personally, I don't mind putting some of my products that I'm looking to test on here um, because I know you guys can benefit from them as well. And even if you don't advertise them, then it makes sense. You can still get some inspiration and know what types of products are likely to do well. So now I'm actually inside my Facebook ad account. I want to go ahead and show you guys three things. Firstly is how many products we actually tested because we did test quite a few products over this course of from the fifth till the fourth. Um, secondly, I wanted to show you the testing strategy, which I'm personally using for Denmark specifically. That works quite well for me. Uh, and then thirdly, I wanted to show you the scaling strategy and basically a real time view of how a winning product looks and how I went ahead uh, and basically scaled it, right? So first things first, you can see we achieved like 102,000 in revenue for the month. Um, and we actually ended up spending this much on Facebook ads, uh, 45,782. Now I've went ahead um, dollars and I've went ahead and done the maths uh, with my calculator and our ROAS is actually 2.23, right? So 2.23, our break even was actually around 1.7, I believe. Uh, and the profit for the month, again, like I said, was around 15% as well, right? So essentially what I'm going to go ahead and do uh, is highlight all of the... Uh, amount spent uh, and basically go ahead and show you guys exactly what we basically went ahead and tested on. So the first thing is how many products did we actually go ahead and test just to give you an overview of what it is like, right? So the first thing's one, we have one, two, three, all of the ones with test on them, you basically will be able to see those just mean that the products have been tested with Facebook ads, right? Using my strategy. If it's got a CBO next to it, that basically means that we've went ahead and scaled it using CBO strategy, which I'll cover as well. So you can see here, we're already on five. Uh, if I just keep going down, I think there's about 20 something that we tested over the period uh, of about four weeks or so. Uh, and I'll basically run through the maths and everything like that. Now, some products we essentially cut off a little bit earlier just because of our testing strategy. It doesn't require us to test for two full days because we spend a little bit more. But 
Again, like you can see here, these are all of the tests done. So we have 25 selected campaigns and products that we've went ahead and tested over the period of 31 days or four weeks, right? Just over four weeks. Now, if we divide that up, it actually equals just over uh, six products for the actual, like six products per week, essentially, is what we've tested, right? So if we do uh, 30, if we do f uh, th 25 products, divided by four, as in four weeks, it's just over six products, that's 6.25. Um, so again, it would be around just over six or seven products tested per week. Now, to be honest, for the most people, that is achievable, right? Anywhere from five to seven products per week or five to six products per week is definitely achievable. My testing strategy that I usually use in terms of testing schedule is essentially on Monday, we'll get the ad set up and get them approved. They'll start running on Tuesday, right? We'll launch two products. Typically, we'll have a day off, not of working, but as in we won't launch on Wednesdays. And then we launch another two and get them ready for Thursday to start running. And then again, on Friday, we get the ads prepared and they start running on Saturday. So you've, you've done two days on, two days off. Well, two days on, one day off, two days on, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, well, two products, sorry. So launch two products, wait a day, launch two products, wait a day, launch two products, wait a day, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that's basically an overview of the testing schedule. You can see we've tested 25 different products. Now what I wanted to go ahead and jump into uh, is the exact campaign that we was running for this product. I'll show you even some of the interest and basically our testing strategy for our winning products, which basically generated 80 to 90% of this uh, $100,000. So I've actually clicked into the winning product now. I'm not going to blur out any of the interest and stuff like that. I want you guys to learn kind of what targeting we're using and everything like that. Um, on March the 20th, you can see there's no amount spent. And on Tuesday, the 21st of March, this was the first day that this product actually went ahead and ran, right? So essentially, this is a homeware product. You can see um, a lot of the interests reflect that. Kitchen, home, furniture, house, Ikea uh, are the first five we've done. Now, there's two main EU strategies, which personally we are using um, and I'm specifically using as well. So the first one is already in the course. It's basically one broad CBO with no interest targeting in it. Uh, Harry's already created a video on it. And typically, I'll use that for like my German store and it seems to perform well on there. Now, Personally, for me, for Denmark, this strategy seems to work best for me. Uh, and it's basically five, uh, eight, it's basically an ABO campaign with five different interests in it. Uh, and your budget is set at 20 or $10 per day, right? Depending how much you can spend. I personally like to gain data a little bit faster so I can make a decision in the middle of the day whether to cut the product or not. But $10 works perfectly fine. It just means you probably have to wait you know, two days instead of one day before you cut the product, right? Or if you cut the product at one day, you can wait only half a day with, you know, double the budget, essentially. Doesn't really matter. You get the same result. It's just a little bit more um, weighted time to obviously buy the data, right? $10 works perfectly fine as well. So what we do is just choose five broad single interests around our product. Now, because this is a homeware product, of course, we do kitchen, home, furniture, house, and Ikea. If this was a beauty product, I would target stuff like beauty, cosmetics, health, um, hair products, and that would probably be, and another one would might be online shopping, right? If it was something to do with um, a kid's toy, it would be like parents, grandparent, a child, toys, uh, and then maybe a kid's brand or something like that, right? So that basically shows you our targeting strategy. Now, if I run you through the metrics, you can see uh, the cost per link clicks on this were really good, right? They were at 0.54. Um, click through rate was okay at kind of a 1.89. CPM was really good around $10. Uh, and the ROAS for the first day on this was just crazy, right? Tracking gets progressively worse as this time goes on in this ad account. Um, but again, to start with, we literally had a crazy ROAS, right? Now, if I move on to day two of this product, we didn't make any changes. I don't like to make any changes um, just because sometimes the first day can be a fluke, right? But again, we still had a 4.74 ROAS uh, even after day two and our cost per ad to carts were really cheap as well. Uh, and again, our click-through rate had improved because Facebook had probably optimized a little bit more. And also our cost per link clicks were again, very good, but there's no new ad sets launched and everything like that. So you can see here, um, this is basically our launch strategy. Again, really simple to understand. To set this up, you just do an ABO campaign. 
um, and basically just have uh, one interest to start in to start with. Then we also have two ad creatives. You'll be able to see there's two different ads, right? I obviously have to blur out the thumbnail, but there's two separate ads in this and we change the thumbnail on each of them. So it's the same video, same text uh, with three benefits uh, about the product, but it has a different thumbnail. One of them had the red arrow uh, with some text on it and the other one was just a simple different image of the product, right? Add one was the, the arrow one. Um, you'll probably be able to see it with maybe with the red blur. Uh, and add two was just a different image of the product as well, right? And add one far performed out, uh, add two for this specific product, which leads me to think that of course the thumbnail uh, with the more attention grab to it was performing best. So if I click back out of this now, uh, and I'm also gonna go back onto campaign level to kind of show you how we went ahead and started to scale this specific product up right, as time progressively went on. So because this was obviously a winning product, I wanna go ahead and show you guys exactly what happened day by day and how we scaled it up. I've showed you pretty much how many products we tested. I've showed you the launch strategy as well, how many creators we included and what we changed. Now it's time to get into the actual um, scaling strategy for this product, right? So day one, the product was launched. It was performing really well. Day two, again, we left it. We didn't do anything because it, we, we wanna make sure it's not a fluke, right? So day three, what you're gonna find now is we launched a bunch of CBOs, right? The reason why it, the amount spent only says 183, but the budget's actually at 400 is because since then, we basically obviously went ahead and scaled it from 200 to $400. And as we progress through the days, you'll see what I mean. But these CBOs were originally launched at $200, right? Now, all I've done is taken the best performing interests out of our test campaign here, this one highlighted here, I'll just go ahead and highlight it here. So all of the best interests out of this campaign here, I've put them into their own CBO campaigns. As long as the ROAS is high enough, I've put them into their own CBO campaigns. And again, you can see the ROAS on this looks really bad, but in reality, it was performing really, really well, right? So what I, if I was to show you an example of that, what that basically is, I might have to blur that out, but essentially it's just one ad set inside it with the same interest and it's now in its own CBO with the CBO button turned on, right? And to do that, all you literally do is click on your original campaign, go I, you know, Ikea, it would have been, uh, hit duplicate, go into new campaign, and then you'd literally type in uh, CBO, Ikea, uh, and then obviously whatever your product name is, right? Product name, uh, and then you're gonna go ahead and hit duplicate. Um, and from that, all that's gonna do is then take you to another page where you can go ahead uh, and basically turn on the CBO feature, right? So if I just click straight onto here, scroll down, you're literally gonna turn on the CBO feature, set this at $200, which is what I did. And this is quite an aggressive strategy if you want to make a lot of money fast hit publish, make sure you obviously click back into this, I'm not gonna, but click back into this and set it at midnight, um, and then go ahead and hit publish. And we ended up spending around $1,000 per day, right? Now the 24th, I'm not sure if we made any changes. Again, we just let it run because I, I want to give my CBOs time to optimize, right? Again, they were performing really well. The cost per ad to carts were really good. They were coming in at about the same as the test campaign, which is really good because these ones are at scale. You can see, even though Facebook is mistracking, these results are still really good, like 2.82, 1.55, 1.54. 1 In reality, these were all around three ROAS because Facebook was just tripping on the tracking as well. Uh, again, I'm mostly looking at cost per ad to carts as well um, because they're really good, but the bottom line, I'm obviously looking at UTMs as well, which you work out uh, on Shopify's end. Now, you can see because we are scaling now, our CPMs have increased by a lot. When we first started testing this product, it was literally at what, 10 or $12 um, dollars here. And now within a few days of scaling, it's literally shot up to 17, 18, right? And that's perfectly normal. When you are scaling, your CPMs will naturally increase uh, and your cost per link clicks uh, will naturally increase as well, right? So if we go now onto day, uh, I think about day five of scaling this product, 
You can see here the test, uh, again, we spent 120 here. It just spent a little bit more on them. So nothing really changed at this point, right? We're still spending around the same for the first three days of scaling. And um, we had one, it launched it on Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we scaled on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So we scaled on Thursday, kept it the same, kept it the same, kept it the same, right? Now, Sunday, we'll see if we made any changes here. Again, no changes. Um, actually, what we did do is if I click into the test campaign, what we actually did is it looks like we've now launched more interest and we have, right? So you can see here, instead of our original five, which we actually had, we've went ahead and launched more interest because what I'm trying to do is find more interest that I can go ahead and put into even more CBOs, right? So I know because this is working for the first five interests, if I can go ahead and find just another two or three interests, I can put them into their own CBOs and scale them up further, right? So you can see here, I think the original ones we launched were kitchen, Ikea, home, house, and furniture. Um, and the ones we launched after that I believe on the Sunday was home improvement. We spent $20, interior design, apartment, light, and online shopping, I think was another one which we launched as well, right? So if I just click on Saturday, yeah, you can see none of these had, um, well, I don't think all of them had really spent, but basically we'd went ahead and spent, yeah, so yeah, it was online shopping as well. So on the Sunday, we went ahead and pretty much launched another five interest or so. Right. And that's basically what we did to try find more interest um, that were going to perform very, very well for us. So it gets to the Monday now. Typically, Mondays are never really good in e-commerce. Uh, I don't really like to scale. Again, you can see even the tracked ROAS went down quite a bit. Uh, cost per ad carts, you can see, were awful. They literally went from Sunday, which was at $14 average. And literally on the Monday, they went all the way up to $24.83. And that was without changing anything right? Uh, and you can see Facebook, that's literally nearly probably an 80% increase. It's not great. Um, and yeah, really does affect your revenue, but Mondays are typically bad. So we never ever scale on Mondays, right? Now, if I move on to March the 28th, you can see we have now increased our spend, right? From 200, um, it's now went up to 300. Now, what we was basically doing here, right, was it's called surf scaling. So what happens is on the morning of the 28th of March, what I did was basically woke up. Uh, again, what I'll cover is we've basically spent more on testing uh, interest as well. So you can see we've added even more interest. We don't do it yourself, renovation, interior design, uh, all of these new interests, which we've basically went ahead, home repair, um, uh, engage shoppers was another one we added as well. Um, all of those ones, which we basically added, I think another five or so. Um, yeah, because we spent around three, uh, there was 15 interests altogether, each at 20, um, which equals around $300, right? So we were testing more interest simultaneously while surf scaling. Now, some of you guys may not know what surf scaling is. Surf scaling is basically when you wake up in the morning, when you notice it's going to be a good day, for example, you wake up and you have a three ROAS or you have a two ROAS here or a 2.9 ROAS, right? If you wake up and you know it's going to be a good day, you bump these budgets. If these budgets are at, if I was to surf scale this now, I wake up, it's at $400. Um, and say, say, for example, it's at $200 because that's what it would have been at. And I notice this ad set is now at uh, a 2.96. We'll just do the 2.96 one just because uh, it will make more sense logically, right? So this was at $200 the day before. Don't forget, if I click on 27th, I'm um, hoping you guys, this will make sense. Um, I, I think this is really valuable, but I hope this all makes sense. So you can see we spent 193. This is at $200. So I would have woken up on the 28th and noticed we were at, this ad set is just ripping, right? It's at 2.96 ROAS. It's performing really well. I double check UTMs. So what I now do, I usually like to surf scale at 12 in the middle of the day. So 12 p.m. noon when you eat your lunch in whatever the ad account time zone is in. So if it's in UK, it would be 12 UK. If it's in America, it would be, you know, UK in, I mean, 12 in America, right? So I wake up, I notice this ad set is ripping and I want to try to push as much budget into this ad set without basically messing up the algorithm or messing up my sales for the entire day, right? So typically what I do is if I notice that the ad set is one over my break-even ROAS, I'll double it. 
basically. So what that looks like in, in action is my break-even ROAS was 1.7. If you remember, I mentioned it earlier. And this ad set, say for example, it's noon, I check in noon. Um, the reason we give it till noon is because we like to have the morning to see how the, the day is progressing, right? If I wake up and this is now at 2.96, that is 1.26 above my break-even ROAS, right? So I know I have margin to scale this ad set up. So what I do at noon is now push this at 400 hit publish, right? And I'm gonna see how it performs every around three or four hours. Probably three hours is best. So at 3 p.m. now, after I've hit publish and it's now at 400, I'm gonna check at 3 p.m. in the afternoon how this is affected. Has, has, the, spend, has the, the ad set just tanked, right? Has it performed well? And is it still keeping up with the similar ROAS? ROAS will probably drop a bit, but you're going to get more sales, right? So at 3 p.m., I checked, it's fine. So I didn't make any more changes. If at 6 p.m., it's even started to perform even better, you can go another level up if you wanted to and change it up to 600. Now, that would obviously be, be being very aggressive. So you do have to watch out as well, right? And conversely, if I notice at 3 p.m., it is performing bad, the sales tanked, my metrics have just jumped from maybe $10 cost per ad to cart all the way up to $20 cost per ad to cart here, right? I'm just going to bring it back down to what it was originally performing at, at 200, right? So that's basically surf scaling for you. It's just essentially gaining the best momentum on the good days and then decreasing the budget on the bad days. And conversely, what you can do is if I wake up on a Monday, for example, on this Monday when the metrics were awful, I didn't do it on this particular one, but if this was at 200, I wake up and notice the day is absolutely awful. I'm at such an awful ROAS. I can just drop this down to 100, right? And say, look, although I, I know I'm probably going to break even or lose money today, but I don't want to be spending two or three K on ads if I know I'm going to be losing money right? Let me try limit the amount of losses I'm getting and let me try bump up and get as much money as possible on the days that I'm, it's going to perform well, right? Ecom is not linear. Not every day you're going to be hitting 1k profit or, or 1k in revenue, right? Some days are going to be 1.5k in revenue. Some days are going to be 700 in revenue, right? But the main thing is that you average it out and you obviously have a good month and year, etc. So jumping back on now, surf scaling was working really well uh, from the 28th. 29th, again, I think we were just pretty much using surf scaling, right? And we also now launched more ad sets, um, um, more uh, interests, which were performing well and put them into CBOs as well, right? And what we did now is when you're surf scaling, typically I forgot to mention, when you're surf scaling, you want to decrease the budget at, the, at midnight. So when the account resets at midnight, back down to its original amount. So if you started at 200 and you surf scaled up to 400, when it hits midnight, drop it back down to 200, let the day go again till again, like I said, midday, see how it performs and then increase or decrease it, right? You can do this as much as you want. If you have a job or a nine to five and you can't check ads, don't do surf scaling. Just stick to whatever budget you are on the start the day on, et cetera, et cetera, right? This is only for people who can monitor ads throughout the day. Um, on the 29th, again, we spent more, we launched more CBOs and we also tested and launched even more interest, right? I went, started going ham with interest. I added like another five. You can see here, uh, gardening was a new one. I think interior design garden was another one, which we launched again. Some of these performed well. Some of these didn't perform well. You can see the ROAS here was just stupidly bad tracking wise. Um, but again, we were just launching a bunch of interest, right? Trying to find interest that were going to basically work really, really well. Now, again, that was pretty much the story for the next week or so, right? I can run you through kind of day by day what happened. Um, again, like 2.6K here, a similar spend to the previous day. 31st was, again, a little bit of the same um, on spending-wise anyway, at least, but we cut some of the ad sets which weren't performing well. But these were just printing daily at $400 budget. I'm not going to run through them too much because nothing changed. Um, what did change is when we started to also try to introduce more creatives. So you can see we also launched some more CBOs um, as well. We had some CBOs down here, um, but this testing creative campaign was basically different creatives for the same product. So what I basically did was took um, the original video, which was performing well, 
and basically tried to test different creatives that I thought were going to do well for this specific product. So on April the 1st, I think it was around two weeks after we launched, you can see here, we're trying to find more creatives to keep the product pumping, right? Keep the product going, try to find new angles, new videos uh, on each different, on each creative, I basically changed one element. So it would have been the first three seconds, the last three seconds, um, maybe added in some social proof, just five different creatives, right? I could have went bigger on creative testing in hindsight, but I didn't. You can see some of them didn't perform that great. Some of them had better CPCs um, and stuff like that. Some of them had good ROAS and everything like that, right? But again, we're still spending around, on this specific day, we actually spent uh, around 3.4K, which was quite cool as well. I think that was our highest spending day uh, for the particular month. After that, a lot of things started to um, still perform well for the next few days. We were still testing creatives and stuff as well, but we did cut some down. And eventually, I think we ended up going broad. Um, I'm not sure if it's included in these days um, either until the 4th. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it was after that. But then we spent around 1.9K here. Again, we're still testing creatives. Uh, and then on the April the 4th, which was the last day of this exact case study, uh, we actually surf, scale, surf scaled this um, and tried to pump it quite high. And this day was actually successful. So you can see we had, I think, three ad sets which started the day uh, at around $400. I'll just put this back to $400. Uh, but what happened is when I woke up, it was performing really well. And we ended up increasing this to from 400 to 800 right? Because it was doing even really well. So 1.83 ROAS on Facebook for me in reality was about three or 3.5, right? In terms of real ROAS, because it was literally missing at this point over 50% of purchases. You know, on some days it was missing over 50% of purchases, 50% uh, to 70% some days it was, it was really bad. Um, but again, so in, what we did was cut some of the bad CBOs and basically just scaled up these good ones. So we'd surf scale these in the morning, check them at 12, go straight up to 800, see how it performs at 3 p.m., 6 p.m. And then again, if it's fine, drop it back down to 400 um, for the rest of the day. And that's basically what we was doing. I'll just leave that like it is for now. But I know this has been quite detailed. Um, hopefully you guys are enjoying this. I don't know how this is going to turn out in terms of the actual you know, format of it actually being in the course. I hope this is really useful kind of looking inside a real ad account and seeing real metrics and stuff like that. Um, but overall for the actual month, you can see if I just do from the 5th to the 4th of April, um, all of these 15 campaigns were the ones for this specific product. Um, really, really good. You can see, you can tell it's just missed out so much revenue and purchase conversion value. Um, but again, really, really good. We spent like 24K on this product. Um, and it was really, really successful, really successful. The AOV was really high. Each order was around $60. Again, towards the end, our CPC started to rise. Uh, also our CPM and everything like that. But these are basically all the CBOs um, and testing campaigns, which we did as well. Now, if I jump back into all of our campaigns, um, these are basically all of the campaigns we spent for the month. Like I say, 45K, 782. Um, there are a lot of failed products. So out of the 25 we tested, I believe there was around, I'd say four that were scalable. Um, this, the main one that we've basically covered in this case study was obviously very scalable. We had another one that was quite scalable um, to a decent amount, but because its AOV was quite cheap, it, it, it was struggling with margins wise to actually go ahead. It didn't have as much perceived value as we like or upsell um, kind of potential. So the AOV was quite low and Facebook ad costs were kind of high for it, which was why the profits on it weren't that great. Uh, and we ended up eventually cutting it. But this kind of shows you that you literally only need one product. But I do want to obviously show you guys what some of the failures look like. You know, it isn't all green and, you know, easy when it comes to Facebook ads. Even me, myself, we have a lot of failed products which don't work, right? You can see we have some products here, which again, in terms of metrics, were just awful, right? We'd launched this one, for example, um, 1.80. So I'll just click on this. Um, you can see here, first day, literally it spent around $10, $9, the click-through rates were just awful, right? 1% click-through rate, um, CPCs at 2.73. And this is where I make the decision to just cut the product in the middle of the day, 
right? I know a product like this is, is probably not going to be a winner, um, even if it stays on for another day or two, right? So I'll save my money, um, even though it's took time to launch. It doesn't matter. We have no emotional attachment to products, right? We just go ahead and cut them where necessary. And I'll show you another example of that uh, with another different product as well. Uh, if I just go down to another test, um, we'll see if we can find another one with really high CPCs as well um, that we cut something like uh, this one here, 1.39. Again, cost per link clicks, 2.99, um, 1.85, not really good. This was a bit weird because it was a bit in the middle. Some was okay, some was not. But again, we just cut it short after like $40 in spend. Maybe a little bit premature, but I just prefer to get it out um, quicker, sooner rather than later as such. Um, I'll see if I can find a product which actually looked promising as well, just in the testing phase. So something like, uh, if I keep scrolling up, uh, that was our main winning product one. Uh, something like this one, again, was quite a good one. So this was actually just duped. Um, we didn't decide to go as aggressive with CBO scaling on this product just because it was a bit hit or miss. We didn't really know whether or not to scale it um, as hard as we think we could. Again, we made the right decision because even the ABO dupes that we did to try scale it to like 40 uh, and $60 didn't work great. So uh, again, that's just kind of an example of a product that started off well with kind of um, launch and scaling. But then when it got into, you know, the second phase or first phase of, phase of scaling, it ended up just performing bad. So I'll leave it at that. I hope this case study really did help um, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Yo, what's going on guys? So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to deal with Facebook bans and best practices and, and that kind of stuff, okay? First thing I do wanna say, of course, is that bans are inevitable. They will happen to you at some point. You know, it's just a case of when and when they will happen. Um, but there is always a solution to every single problem. Right. If you have a look at this image here, this is an, an old profile that was attached to many different business managers that I had back in the day. Obviously, all of them at some point got restricted. OK, but there isn't a ban that we personally haven't in already encountered ourselves and not solved, which is obviously helpful for you guys, because we're going to share some source in here on you know how you can set things up and how you should be doing things. OK, the first thing is understanding what type of ban that you have, because depending on the band that you have will determine what you need to do next to continue to keep on advertising. So there's four types of bands at the time of recording this, right? And I'll talk you through each of them and you know what it means when you actually get that band. So the first being an ad, uh, an ad account, a band ad account, which I'm sure, you know, 90% of people have experienced at some point. This basically means that you can't run ads from that ad account. Okay. Nor can you open up another ad account inside of that business manager. So for example, if you have, you know, a business manager with, um, you know, four ad accounts, but you're able to open five ad accounts, if one of them gets restricted, you're not going to be able to open that last one, which is unfortunate. So that's one thing to bear in mind. So it's always good to maximize how many ad accounts you have inside of the business manager to start off with, because if one of them gets banned, then you're not going to be able to maximize those opportunities, right? So you can use another ad account. So if your ad account does get banned, you can use another ad account, but we'll talk about what you should do in best practices in a little later in this presentation. The next one is obviously a page ban. Now, when you get a page ban, obviously it means that you can't advertise on that page. You can use another page, um, but it just means that the page is restricted, okay? Now, a profile ban. A profile ban is basically means that the profile itself that you're advertising on can't do anything. So they can't manage any ads. If you run into, if you go into ads manager, you can't run any ads. You, your ad account's still live, so other profiles can still um, manage them, providing that they have been assigned that ad account. But um, the profile that has been restricted can't do any of that stuff. It's pretty much like a, a dead profile. You can't do anything. Also, what you can't do with dead profiles is you can't invite other people as well because you you can't appeal anything as well. So if you do have a, a, an ad account that goes down, if your profile is restricted, you can't appeal anything either. Okay. Now, the final and probably one of the worst ones is having a business manager ban. Now, a business manager ban is basically where the whole business manager is done. What that means is that the pixels inside of it, the ad accounts, um, are all completely banned, right? Now, the profiles themselves don't get banned, okay? So it's always good to, at some point, you know, if you do have a business manager ban, you want to try to remove your good profiles out of that business manager so that they're not connected to that banned business manager. Um, you know, you can get like a, a trash profile and you just have that own the business manager. And then from there, 
you know, remove all your good profiles so they're not connected to that infected asset, if that makes sense, okay? Now, first and foremost, you need to make sure that you appeal everything first. If you do have a ban that happens, you want to make sure that you appeal it in the first um, instance because Facebook will always give you the option to appeal the decision. Now, the decision, again, the, the, way pla the, fa the way the Facebook platform works is it's all algorithm based. So nine times out of 10, there are some times where you may get flagged up and may get disabled for something, even though you feel like you are not violating any policies whatsoever. And sometimes, you know, when you do appeal, you will get it back. It is pretty much a 50-50 chance, to be honest, even, even if you personally feel like you haven't violated any, you know, policies, because again, the appeal, the first appeal, most of the time is just done by a bot anyway, most of the time, because again, you got to think about how many people are actually, you know, getting banned on a daily basis. You know, it's just way too many people. So in terms of the appealing process, what you want to do is obviously you want to go into accounts quality, find out what the ban is, and then you can appeal. Now, sometimes what happens is Facebook will ask for your, you have to confirm your ID before you can appeal. If that is the case, then of course you just need to upload um, your ID before they let you get to this appeal process, right? And that generally takes around one or two days. Most of the time it's in 24 hours. If you, um, if you appeal it, uh, if you submit it, then they, then you can go ahead and appeal the decision from all of these ones. Now you'll get, um, they'll tell you, most of them, you'll always get these three points. So the, these three options, why are you requesting a review? Um, I'm not sure which policy was violated. I think that was unauthorized use of my account or other reason. I always choose another reason. Um, and then it allows you to put in some sort of text in there. Okay. Most of the time, again, um, some people that say put number one, which is like, I don't know which policy was violated, but personally from all of the appeals that I've had, I always go with number three and I'll show you what I like to type in there as well. So generally this is what I type in there. It, again, it will vary depending on obviously what thing has been um, disabled, but you want to base it kind of like on this and you can go down a sympathy route if you wanted to. Um, but usually it's like, hello, hope you're having a great day. You know, obviously sourced on Whirlpool a little bit. I believe our business manager page profile, whatever it may be, was restricted by mistake. We make sure that we follow all policies correctly. Could you please be kind enough to review this and enable it again? So we continue to use Facebook to grow our small business. Um, I wish you a wonderful day. Thanks. That's pretty much what I do. Um, I know some people who also put in things such as, you know, um, I've been hit by, you know, my, my business went down a drain in COVID, you know, I've got three families to three kids to feed. Um, I'm on my, you know, it's really causing me mental stress and really playing on the sympathy route. Again, I'm not sure entirely sure how well that actually works, but something just as simple as this, most of the time works for me. Again, it is still going to be a 50, 50, um, decision on whether or not you get it back, but, uh, this has worked for me. So that's why I put it in here. Now, in terms of building out a bulletproof structure, right, you've probably heard of things like proxies and that kind of stuff. Now, when you get to a point whereby you for, you need to purchase profiles or, or stuff like that, you'd only want to go down that route once you have exhausted all your uh, immediate options. And what I mean by immediate options is, you know, first and foremost, everyone watching this has probably got a Facebook account, right? First and foremost. And then let's say, for example, if that has been banned and the ad accounts underneath that has been banned, then the next thing that you have obviously is again, your immediate circle with your immediate circle being any sisters, any you know, brothers, any uh, parents, any grandparents, any, you know, family members or friends even that have Facebook accounts that would let you use their Facebook, Facebook account purely just for Facebook ads. I mean, you're not going to log in and start reading their messages and all that kind of jazz. You only want to be using it for Facebook ads. So if you get to that point and you have exhausted all of those options, because that's going to be the first bet, because then you're not paying for anything else because something like this buying proxies, um, can cost money, not a lot of money, by the way, it's very, very cheap. Um, but again, you want to exhaust those options first before you think about setting up any sort of, uh, bulletproof structures. Okay. So the two things that you will need if you do go down this route and you've exhausted those options is a, a virtual browser software. And the one I personally like to use is Incogniton. There are other ones out there like, um, I forgot the name of it actually, but anyway, there's, there's a few other ones out there, but this one gives you free access. You can, you can actually use this free up to, I think it's 10 profiles, which again, you rarely need anything more than 10 profiles, to be honest. Uh, I think I'm running 10 profiles, but, um, I think, no, I think it's free for uh, I will check in a minute, but I think it's either free for five or it's free for 10. Either way is free. Okay. So you can check those out. That's totally fine. 
And basically what this does, okay, Incognitron does, is, is basically a virtual browser software, software. So what that means is when you use it with proxies, it makes you appear like you are a unique user. So to show you what it is, like you can see here, anti-detect browser, uh, no more bans and restrictions. Um, and again, yeah, so yeah, you can use it for 10 profiles, 100% free. So what it does is it allows you to look like you are someone from appearing from a brand new computer, appearing from um, a different country or different state or different wherever it may be, so that Facebook thinks that you're a complete unique user. Whereas obviously if you are just using your own, um, you know, if you're just using one computer and trying to log into a US profile or, or something else, then you're just going to get restricted. Facebook's going to clock on, the algorithm's going to catch you, and you're just going to get a ban hammer in a matter of days. Whereas if you do things this way and you separate it out with proxies and those kind of things, then you're pretty much good to go. So yeah, you just get the start one, get it for free. Again, 10 browsers for free. That's totally 10 profiles, should I mean, for free. Uh, this is the one I use. And um, once you've got that, you're then going to need proxies. Okay. So Maybe wondering what the hell are proxies. And uh, again, when I first got started, I was hearing people um, at, at that point, I also, or I was kind of like exhausting my um, my inner circles profiles. But then it got to the point whereby I was like, oh, you know, shit, I now need to start to think about an actual um, bulletproof structure. And what you're going to need is proxies. Now, proxies pretty much are um, so that it's a bit, it's a bit like a VPN, should I say, but a VPN, you really don't want to use a VPN when it comes to Facebook ads. Proxies are more dedicated and it makes you look like you are actually appearing from a specific country. So for example, if you're going to get US profiles, US Facebook profiles, you're going to need US proxies. So then Facebook looks like, hey, this is, you know, Sandra from um, Kansas or, you know, Sarah from United States. She's logging in from United States from her computer. That's what it's going to look like. And then you could have another profile, which is a Dean. And that's another profile is on a different the computer has got a different a, a different uh, IP address because we're using a different proxy, if that makes sense. Now, where I like to get my proxies from is this one, uh, my private proxy group. I'll show you which ones you need to get as well. Um, and there will be discount codes down below as well so that you can, um, I don't know, there won't be discount codes, sorry, there'll be links down below uh, so you can check those out. Um, there will be affiliate links, but you know, hey, use them if you want to. So if you go down, what I like to get is these ones here, private proxies, okay? And um, again, if you've got 10 profiles, you can do this. If you're only going to have five, then again, $11 a month, you probably spend more than that on a meal out. Um, five proxies, again, you can have it in multiple locations if you wanted to, um, but these are the ones that you want to get. Let's say, for example, you just started out and you want to get these ones, okay? So you click on get started. Now, what you want to do is you want to go on use case and you want to keep it on Facebook. Uh, and then obviously you just choose your location. So United States is the one, again, is, is the one that I always like to use is um, that's it. And then you just go ahead and purchase those. You can cancel at any time. You can pay via PayPal if you want to. You can pay via credit card, whatever it may be. You just go ahead and, uh, and purchase your proxies and then you're good to go. And then all you're going to do is you just pair them up. When you get access to the uh, proxy details, you pair it up inside of Incognitum. There's ways showing you how to, how to do that. Um, and you can just set those up, okay? Now, moving on finally to some do's and don'ts when it comes to Facebook bans and handling them. We'll start with the do's and then we'll move on to the don'ts. So the first thing is you always want to have backups and that is you want to make sure that you've got backup profiles, backup business managers, backup pages, um, so that you've always got something to fall back on. If you're only relying on one business manager, one ad account, one profile, then again, it's a recipe disaster because you're, if anything does happen, and again, like I've mentioned, you don't have to violate any pro, any, um, policies to get banned, right? It's just one of those things. I've seen brands go down, um, people moaning about it on Twitter about brands going down and stuff like that. It can just happen to you and they can just be false positives because the platform itself, and most of these platforms are just ran by algorithms, unfortunately, okay? So you wanna always make sure that you have backups. Another thing is you want to make sure that you always have two admins per business manager. Now, when it comes to Facebook, you can either, the profiles can either be an admin can have admin um, access or they can have employee access. Admin access is essentially where they have access to do absolutely everything. So they can add in other people, they can assign other people inside of the profile to do certain things. They have ownership over a lot of the different stuff inside of the ad account. They're the ones who can appeal as well. So they can appeal um, any restrictions or anything like that. But you always wanna make sure that you have two inside of the business manager. 
Reason being is if one of them goes down, then of course you've got another one to, again, continue to keep on adding people in and um, appealing rejections, appealing stuff, etc. Right. So you just want to make sure you have two admins in there. Um, that's that, that's very important to have that because I've, I've had times whereby I didn't do this and, you know, the profile got restricted. And then again, your hands are tied, you're stuck, you can't do anything. Now, another thing is you want to make open as many ad accounts in a business manager as you can. I wouldn't recommend doing it like all on day one because it can be seen as a little bit fishy and your profile could get uh, restricted. So I'll do it over a space of two or three days. What will happen is if you get access to a brand new business manager, you'll only be able to create one ad account to start off with. And then once you actually make a payment, any payment on that, it could be for a single dollar or a couple of cents. Facebook will then allow you to open up another three ad accounts. And then I'm not sure what the threshold is after that. I think it's like $500 or so. Once you spend $250 to $500, you'll then be able to open. No, sorry. That, uh, you'll, open, you'll be able to open five ad accounts. That's it. So once you make a pay, uh, payment, sometimes it's three. But for most of the point, most of the time, it will then go to um, five ad accounts that you can open up right away. So again, like I mentioned previously before, if you do get a banned ad account, you want to make sure that you maximize those so that you still have the other four to play with. If you only just open up three and one goes down, then you're stuck and you've just, you know, lost access to a potential new two ad accounts. Now, another thing, of course, is you want to, um, I'll, I've read that twice there, but you always want to make sure that you use employee profiles to do all of the work inside of the BM. So like I've mentioned, uh, business managers, um, you don't want your profiles to get in restricted. So I personally like to have employee profiles and what they are is they have limited access of what they can do. They don't really have any ownership or anything like that. They're just employees, which means that they can still run ad accounts for you. They can still change ads, tweak budgets, do whatever it may be, but they don't have ownership on it over, over anything. So if they do violate any policies and that profile goes down again, they don't have that much ownership. I can quickly just swap them out and you're ready to go again. Okay. Now, final point is, of course, you want to make sure that you separate stuff out as much as possible. That means, you know, you, you don't want to have your pixel in the same pixel that you're advertising from. So because if the business manager goes down, then, you know, your, uh, then your pixel's lost. So stuff like that, you just want to uh, try and separate it out as much as possible. And, um, you know, we, we teach our students and mentees how to set up what's called a bulletproof um, Horcrux structure, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with watching um, Harry Potter, but essentially they, you know, it's where you separate things out so that if something does go down, then again, it's segregated and you can pretty much just swap things out and be ready to rock and roll again. Right. Um, so some of the don'ts is obviously you don't want to have too many rejected ads. If you have too many rejected ads in your ad account, then again, Again, this can cause the ad account to go down. So always make sure that you're, uh, if you do have them, delete them out. And, and really, again, that kind of leads into the second one is don't run aggressive ads. Facebook policies themselves are a bit wishy-washy and they can apply to so many different things. So it can be very difficult to see what you have kind of violated because anything can, is very much like a gray area. Okay. But if you think, if you personally think something is a little bit too aggressive, then my advice would be don't run it. Just kind of like change something out or change something so that it don't look uh, that aggressive. Like before and afters, you can't really do with beauty and, and health and those kind of things. Um, certain words, don't be so direct by saying the word you all of the time. Like, have you got back pain or, you know, are you suffering from X, Y, and Z? They're very aggressive type ads. Don't, you know, don't run those kind of ads. Another thing is don't move too fast on day one. Take your time, okay? A lot of people will buy a business manager, they'll try and run ads on day one. And again, Facebook has like a trust score. You, if you are completely brand new and you're trying to run something from scratch with all these different pieces that you've purchased, nine times out of 10, you're probably gonna go down. So space things out. You know, you wanna take your time, warm up stuff, only run like PPEs to start off with uh, for like, you know, a day or so, and then move into conversion ads after that just so that you're warming stuff up and showing Facebook that, again, you're building up that reputation. And first and foremost, you're getting ads approved, green light ads approved. And second of all, you have that billing history going through as well. So that, um, again, it's another green light and trust factor for Facebook. Okay. Now, another one is don't use the exact same as if they have been banned before. Some people do this and it's just a recipe for disaster. If you've run an ad, ad right, and it's been banned, Common sense would say don't run that shit again, but some people will just copy the post ID and open up a new ad account and try and run it again. It will it may last for a, a, probably a week, but at some point it will just go down again because the algorithm is way too clever, clever for that. So in that instance, what you want to make sure is that you change things up a little bit, you know, um, recreate the ad, whether that means you speed things up, 
whether that means that you chop out the first three seconds and change it to something else, whether that means that you change the music to something else, put in a banner, um, reverse the clips so that they are mirrored or something, just do something to the ads and change them up, okay? Another point which ties into this one is, of course, don't use the exact same URL as well if it's been banned before. What I mean by that is not the whole root domain. So, you know, if you've been banned on website.com, you can still use website.com. But what I would say is if you, you, you're naturally going to be advertising something like website.com products forward slash, you know, um, microphone. If that's the case, then, and that's been banned, then, you know, what I would do is don't try and run that URL straight again, or you can just duplicate it. Right. And the old traffic will still do run to it because it will just, um, create a redirect, but I would also just make sure that you duplicate it and change it to, you know, website.com products, microphone two or something along the lines of that, just so that it's changed and it's different and it looks, will look unique to Facebook. Okay. That's at least going to delay the bands anyway. And the final thing is, uh, don't use the same payment card system across all different business managers, because again, if one business manager go, does go down, then it can flag the payment. And if you're using that across all of them, then again, you run the risk of getting all of them banned as well. But they're just some of the points, some of the do's and don'ts. Um, again, it, sometimes it can feel tricky when you are navigating Facebook bans. Uh, we do teach our mentors, um, our mentees and, and students exactly how to set this up. We show you, you know, step by step how to set up Incogniton, how to also connect your proxies uh, and how to set up your structure in the best way. Um, but at least this information here was something that I personally wish that I had. Um, you know, when I was at the point of exhausting all of my options and I needed to look elsewhere into profiles and that kind of stuff. So hopefully you got some value from this video. Take care and I will see you in the next one. And finally, if you've made it onto module four, well done, this is all to do with your Shopify operations. And we're gonna be showing you exactly how we go ahead and grow our team so we can spend time on the most important tasks such as running ads and finding products, as opposed to things like adding products to your website and also doing customer service. So let's not waste some time and dive straight back in. Right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can find good solid suppliers for your products. Now, it's important that you do have a good supplier because what you don't want to do is have any sort of, just use any sort of AliExpress supplier and next thing you know, they're not sending out products in time or they are sending stuff and it's arriving damaged. So you wanna make sure that you have a good supplier. So how do you actually find a good supplier or what makes a good supplier from a bad supplier, right? So I've just done a random search. I'm, I'm inside of this, uh, you know, this category here and there's all of these different products here. Now, what I'm going to do is it's probably best if I search for a specific product. So if I just put, you know, cat, uh, cat bed, right? So that we can see different suppliers for selling the exact same product, okay? So you can see here, we've got two different suppliers selling the pretty much exactly the same products, right? Now, all of the suppliers names are underneath here. So if I just open up this one here and open up this one here, and we can look between the two, right? So looking at this one here, you can see here at the top, you'll see they have a positive feedback. Now, these guys are 96.6% .6 positive feedback which is good, okay? Which tells us that these guys have, um, first and foremost, have a good positive feedback, which means you can look at the ratings here, item as described, above average, communication above average, shipping speed above average. So this would be classed kind of as a good supplier, but one thing you want to note is of course, how long the store has been open, right? Because sometimes you'll find that you, uh, sub, sub suppliers have just literally just been opened a matter of months. And these guys were only open since um, September the 6th, 2020, which is what, um, a couple of months ago. So they're a brand new store, right? So we have to kind of like tread wary. I would probably still use these guys because of course they fulfilled a lot of orders, right? Um, but you do wanna be cautious of that. Now, if we look at the other supplier, we can see that these guys have 100% right? But they've only been open since November the um, November 20, the 3rd, uh, which is again, <laughs> literally a month ago. So I probably wouldn't go ahead and use these guys. One thing which is important is that you always want to make sure that they are above 90, because if they're anything lower than 90, 90%, then nine times out of 10, you're not going to get a good service. Most of the time for me, I like them to be 95% and above. But if they are under that and they've sold a lot of product, right, or, you know, they've, they've done a ton of orders of a specific product, then I'll go ahead and use them. Another thing that you can do is if you scroll down and have a look on customer reviews, okay, 
You'll be able to see what other people are saying. Now, the more reviews that they have, the better, right? And you're gonna be able to have a look at these and see how many one stars they reviews they have, how many four star reviews they have as well. I wouldn't look too, too deep into this, um, providing that, you know, a lot of the percentage is five stars, then, you know, again, I'd go ahead and use these guys out. Now, if we scroll down and just have a look at a, another one, just to give you uh, another example, let's say, you know, uh, these guys here for this product, right? These guys are selling the exact same products as well, actually. So let's let's have a look at these ones because it would uh, help us out. So these guys are 95%, okay? But they're relatively new as well. And if we have a look at these guys, these guys, so you can see that these ones have got 95%, right? Close to, well, 94%, but they've been in the game since 2013, right? So with these guys, even though it says a little bit of below average, etc., for this um, product, I would be comfortable using these guys because they have been in the game for 2013, which is, you know, a ton of years in this game, right? So we know that they essentially have skin inside of the game. Now, if you scroll down again as well, what we can do is look at the customer reviews again and see what they have, uh, see which countries are purchasing from and uh, and take note from there. So they're the rule, that's the rule of thumb. First and foremost, check, do double check in that they are above 90% minimum. If they're underneath that, I wouldn't, well, I'll try and find a different supplier. And then second of all, just take in note of, uh, you know, when they actually opened and how long they've been open for. Again, um, how long they've been open for isn't a deal breaker, but if you can find a another supplier who has, again, a good rating, but has been in the game a longer time, then, you know, I'd probably prefer to use that person over a supplier which is just brand new okay so hopefully that makes some sense yo what's going on guys so in this video i'm going to talk about agents and how to get a chinese agent what an agent is uh, how to get one the best place to find one and and the benefits and all that good stuff now if you're new to drop shipping um you won't need an agent out of the gate however you will need one when it comes to scaling because you can't scale using places like aliexpress because it's just a nightmare things don't you know go according to plan if you try and scale using AliExpress. So at some point you will need an agent so that you can scale further. And this video will be very helpful in showing you the process on how you can actually do that, okay? So first and foremost, what actually is an agent? Because you may have heard the term being banded around and you know if you're, if you're new, you may not know what an agent is. So essentially what an agent is or what people mean when they refer to an agent is basically just a team in China or a person in China that runs a, a warehouse and what they do basically is they buy the products on your behalf, right? And what they will do is they will store it in their warehouses for you and they will also fulfill it for you automatically by connecting to your store. And I'm gonna show you the apps that they will use and the apps that you will need so that they can you know, automatically fulfill it for you um, in this video. Now, what is the agent advantages? Well, first and foremost, you get a cheaper price because with AliExpress, when you're using AliExpress, the cost, I believe, is around about 0.8% that gets charged to the supplier. So every AliExpress supplier sender has to pay AliExpress, it's how AliExpress makes their fees, around about 0.8%, I think, anyway. So you're instantly, if you work directly with the supplier, right, you're going to be able to cut that cost out and obviously get better prices. Um, nine times out of 10, it is better than 0.8% as well, because again, they are buying in bulk um, from the manufacturers, which means that again, you will get a better price. So what does that mean? If you're getting a better price, then first and foremost, you can sometimes undercut your competition as well and offer a better price. And obviously on top of that, if you don't undercut your price, then what you can do obviously is improve, it's gonna improve your profit margins straight away without you having to you know, do any sort of tips and tricks or anything like that. You literally just decrease your cogs and uh, that's it, you've increased your profit margin overnight, okay? Second point is, of course, you're going to get quicker fulfillment. Now, if when you're using AliExpress, um, Typically what happens is, is when you make a payment, uh, AliExpress will then verify that payment and then you have to wait anything, depending on the supplier or the person that you, the store that you order from, they will take anything from, you know, three to five days sometimes to actually fulfill the product, which means actually send it out to the customer. Now, again, like I mentioned, if you're testing and just testing out concepts, then again, AliExpress is, is still fine to use. But again, at scale, this isn't something that you want to do. And utilizing an agent is going to get you faster fulfillment because again, my agent personally fulfills sometimes within 24 hours, 48 hours. And obviously customers are then gonna get that notification, that Shopify notification a hell of a lot more quicker and be like, 
you know, oh damn, these guys are actually, you know, I didn't get scammed. <laughs> you know, I'm actually getting the product and I'm getting the product quickly, which is good. Third thing is of course, you are going to get faster shipping. Now, again, depending on obviously the country that you're sending to and, and the agent that you're working with, some agents, depending on, on the volume that they're sending and the clients that they have, if they've got certain clients in, let's say, Germany, or they've got certain drop shippers that, they've, that have been using them, um, sending to the United States, they get bulk shipping rates um, from their postal senders or the, the shipping lines that they use over in China. So the more that they sell, the better prices that they can get from their, you know, their postal people, which they, they can then pass on to you. And some of the shipping lines out there, um, like Yen Express is, is one, um, UPS is another one that sometimes UPS US lines as well. There's certain lines that the Chinese suppliers can use that are going to get you faster shipping. So I personally, again, if you're shipping to United Kingdom, you can get pretty much anything from 10 days shipping, which again, isn't bad at all, especially when you're drop shipping, you know, to the States, sometimes you can get 10 to 15 days shipping. And again, the, you know, you want to make sure that you're trying to aim to get the product delivered within like two weeks or, you know, 15 the five, you know, 15 days max is, is what you're generally trying to aim for. We always talk in like business um, days as well, but that's kind of like three weeks max. You don't want to, if, you, if anything's taking anything longer than three weeks to arrive, you're just going to get way too many upset customers. The ideal golden spot is, you know, the less, the better, but you know, around about two weeks tops is, is always good. Um, and the fourth thing, of course, all of these points, right, is going to lead to first and foremost, better customer satisfaction which is obviously means you're going to get less chargebacks. It means you're going to have less issues with Facebook in terms of uh, pages going down and, and feedback scores and that kind of stuff. So it's very important that when your customers are satisfied and they are getting an actual service that they're paying for, then ultimately you can stay in the game ahead of a longer time and have a much more fruitful business when you uh, do things this way. Okay. Now the requirements, there are requirements because not everyone can just go out, especially if you're a beginner, just go out and just get an agent because you know, you don't have anything, you're not selling any products because they are purchasing stuff on your behalf, right? You need to usually be doing anything from around about 15 to 30 orders per day to work with an agent. Some of them, again, depending on who you work with, some agents don't mind, they can do it on a one by one basis. Some of them may need, you know, 30 orders. Some of them may say, okay, you only need to be doing 10 orders per day. Again, these are all questions that you need to, uh, to ask and find out. But it's always put, it's not worth getting an agent if you don't, you know, have consistent sales. You're selling, you know, one random cat product today and then you're selling one random dog product today. Y you know, you need some sort of consistency to make it worthwhile on both ends, right? So in terms of finding an agent, how do you actually find an agent? Well, for our personal mentors, uh, our mentees and students who we teach on our coaching program, we actually give you access to our agent, okay, as well, um, inside of our, our mentorship program. But there are ways how you can actually find your own agent. So there's two main ways. Um, this is how I personally found my first agent and one of them that I still work to this day. Um, and I'll show you another way as well. So first and foremost, there is the current supplier. So if you're ordering stuff from AliExpress, right, you're going to be making consistent orders through the store. Now the store is going to see those orders coming from you as the person um, or as the username on AliExpress. So they're going to know that you're making sales, right? And what you can do is you can message them and you can reach out and say, hey, you know, uh, you can see that I'm getting orders. I want to scale further um, and try and get their Skype, WeChat or WhatsApp. Now, in order to do that, if you just go onto what, uh, AliExpress here, this is just a, a dummy account. You can see I've just got this order here, which is, you know, uh, an old order. But if you just click on this and they go ahead to their actual page that you've been purchasing it from, and if you just click on message, it will take you up and open up the message center, which is here, which is obviously here. You can say, you know, hey, um, you know, I have a Shopify store. Um, what's your, don't, you don't, don't want, you don't want to directly say, um, what's your Skype, what's your, uh, WeChat and those kind of things, because it's kind of like against uh, AliExpress's policy, but you want to frame it in a, in, in a clever way. You could put like dots in there, you know, um, what's your S K space, full stop P, whatever it may be, your WeChat, WhatsApp, whatever it may be. So, uh, so that you can have contact with them outside of, uh, outside of AliExpress. Another cool thing that you can do, which I personally don't, I've done it before. If you don't want to, it, it, again, this is, this is not having like an agent, but it's kind of the similar thing that you can do is if you go to here, some of these suppliers can actually create you what's called VIP links. And if I just type in here, you know, VIP, okay, link, um, what you can do is if you reach out to the supplier, 
Okay, you can see that these have VIP links, exclusive link. Um, here's another one that says custom VIP link. And essentially what happens is, you can see this one's got 600 orders on this VIP link. If I just sort by orders, this one's have 5,000 orders on it. So whoever's using this is absolutely crushing it. Again, here, here, here. These are all products that, again, dropshippers are selling because it is um, a VIP link which means that they've reached, they've reached out to the supplier on AliExpress. The supplier has created a custom product page for this product. Okay. And they've, they've set the price at a very good price, which is a price that, um, is not rarely seen by other people. If you just go onto products, actually, um, I'm just going to, uh, orders one that says orders. Okay. Um, I'm going to assume it's probably one of these products, even though the, the, it's not there. It says customize, uh, customer, customized logo pattern. So it's probably some sort of custom t-shirt here. This guy, whoever's using this um, supplier is using this and uh, that's how they're doing things that way. So that's the first way how you can do um, find an agent, right? And that's how I'm found my personal first agent. That's how I reached out to, to them. The second one is recommendation. Okay. Now recommendation, what you can do is again, there's tons of different e-com discords out there. Um, there's Facebook groups out there as well. And all you're going to do is just like, people always recommend like agents and put you in contact with people. It's just, just put the message out there to say, Hey, does anyone know if you've got an agent, et cetera, and stuff like that. And people will be more than willing to share. One thing I would say is obviously you want to be cautious uh, with sending money to agents at first, because again, you don't know who you're sending money to. And if you are doing volume, then, you know, you could be sending amounts from, you know, anything from a thousand to $10,000 upwards, um, depending on how much volume you are doing. So you want to make sure that if you are sending that amount, um, your products are obviously getting delivered and they're getting delivered in a timely manner. So you want to make sure first and foremost, if you can, um, try and use PayPal and just do it as they're actually buying stuff because worst case scenario, I mean, you could always like do the chargeback. And you also want to kind of like micromanage at first. And when I say micromanage, it's just a case of following up with the supplier just to make sure that everything's being shipped. Um, checking the tracking links as well, having a look and making sure that stuff is actually being fulfilled and um, having a look in Shopify to see, you know, is it actually being fulfilled? Are the notifications going um, out? And second of all, of course, um, when it does, having a look at the tracking links and just making a spreadsheet and saying, okay, you know, um, this was fulfilled on the 6th. Um, it actually got arrived in how many days and you can just see on average, um, you know, how many, how, how long it's taking for stuff to arrive and just, just make a decision based on, based on that. Cause I've seen so many horror stories out there whereby people have, you know, um, got an agent or whatever it may be. And they realize that they've, they've not paid any attention and then they've gone back and looked Then all of the tracking links are either fake or nothing's going out and stuff like that. And they're literally just stuck in the mud. So you want to avoid that by doing the micromanaging to first build up the relationship. And then you can do stuff like I personally do. One of my agents is like, we just pay on invoice. So, you know, we can run up um, money. They'll send us the invoice like every two weeks or so we pay it off. It helps with cash flow, right? So that's what you can do now in terms of, um, how to actually work with an agent, right? Some agents actually have their own apps, which means that they will just, you just install an app on side, uh, inside of your Shopify store. And again, they will automatically be able to connect to your Shopify store and they will just fulfill any orders that come in that way. For those who are scared about, you know, do I want to give Chinese access to blah, blah, blah. You can literally restrict now, um, how much information you give that person that, that give, give the supplier access to. So you can restrict it to just that app. So they only have access to the app and you only have access to the orders. So they only know that part. They don't see how much revenue is coming in, even though they could probably calculate it based on your orders coming in, but all that kind of stuff, you know, anything else, any other apps, profit apps, whatever, you can just not share any of that information with them. Now, if not, if they don't, then the other app that you will be using will be one called Diane Examy. Um, and that's on a Shopify app store. I'll show you what that looks like now. That's this one here. This is one that I personally use as well. Um, again, it's just a, an ERP. Your supplier will literally just connect to this. You just give them access to this app when you're inside of giving out your, um, the different things that they need access to. Uh, and that's it. They will just literally just fulfill you through this app. And you'll, again, you'll see everything just working fairly seamlessly. Okay. 
So that is it on a little bit of a crash course uh, on how to find an agent, what they are, how to work with them and all that kind of good stuff. So um, hopefully you got some value from this video and I will see you in the next one. Yo, okay. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to build a team because at some point you will need to build a team in order to progress, right? Uh, I'm going to assume that 90% of you guys watching in this course are beginners, okay? Um, and you maybe just be a, a solo entrepreneur doing things yourself, which is great, but at some point you will need to um, you know, hire out and, and build a team. So we're going to talk about that, where to find employees, what softwares you should use, um, you know, how should you train people, etc., and stuff like that. So this is the quote that I like to uh, say to people is that if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, then go together. So, you know, you can move a hell of a lot more quicker if you are just doing things yourself. But again, you will get to a point whereby if you want to do those 10, 20, 30, 50 K days, you will have to build out a team and infrastructure for you to be able to make things move a hell of a lot more smoother, right? So the question is when to hire, because like I've mentioned, a lot of you guys are probably beginners watching this. You're probably doing things yourself. And I started out doing things myself as well. And then eventually over time you build out uh, teams, you make your first hires and stuff like that. But the question is like, when should you actually consider making your first hire? Well, first and foremost is you need to make sure that you have cash flow and you are making cash flow. You are making, you know, consistent sales, but not only that, you need to obviously be profitable. It's pointless hiring out someone if you aren't making any money whatsoever, or you don't have any of the wages to actually pay them their salaries or, you know, whatever it may be, part-time, full-time, whatever it may be. You need to make sure that you are actually profitable and you are bringing consistent profits. Now, another important thing to think about when you are considering when to hire is you have to analyze when your time is being eaten up. And this is something that I had to deal with when I was first started out dropshipping was essentially I was doing all of the customer emails myself. I'd come home from work, you know, and do spend like a, an hour or so, depending on how much there were just doing those myself replying. And it's mundane work it's boring. And I have personally haven't done it since, you know, um, probably four years now since I started, you know, um, because it is boring work and you have to analyze if you're, t if you're spending your time, that was one or two hours, even if it's 30 minutes, whatever it may be, hour, two hours, whatever it may be, if you're spending that time on replying to emails, right? What's going to happen is you are not going to be able to do other things, which are going to move the business forward, such as, you know, finding new products or testing out new ads, testing out new offers, um, scaling stuff. So if you're only just doing those boring mundane jobs that again, if you're doing customer service, it doesn't move the needle anywhere, then that's taking up your time. And you want to be able to outsource that part so that you can figure on things that are going to move the business forward. Now, another important thing is, you know, I always tell this to people is if your time, if you personally feel that your time is worth more than three, four, five dollars an hour, then why are you doing a job which you, when you can outsource it to someone for that price? Because again, a lot of you people watching this, you may be in third world countries, you may be in first world countries, but if you are someone in a first world country, then, you know, your, your minimum wage isn't what you would pay for these sorts of VAs and stuff like that. So if you personally feel like your time is worth more than that, then why on earth are you doing that job? You should definitely just outsource it and take, get it taken off your plate. So another question is where to hire. Okay. So there's two main places. The first place is obviously Upwork and the second one is onlinejobs.ph. I've used both of them. Both of them have their pros and cons, and I'll talk about the pros and cons of them both now. So starting with Upwork, right? You first and foremost have better quality people, what I generally find. So those sorts of hires would be people like who are a little bit more skilled, um, such as people like, you know, video editors, or maybe if you wanted to hire a software developer or, you know, someone to do graphic design, whatever it may be, you can get better people on Upwork for that. Another thing is obviously you can track the employee's time inside of Upwork. Upwork have this built into their actual system. So if you do make a hire directly on the platform, you can track um, you know, what they do, what they're working on, it screenshots what they're doing in intervals and other, all those kind of things. And it works just like that. Now, the cons of working with Upwork is, of course, it's more expensive wages. They are a little bit more inflated from what I see. So a basic customer service VA may be up for like five, eight dollars or something along the, along the lines of that. Whereas, you know, on online jobs, you, you can get the same kind of person doing that job for like three dollars, four dollars. OK, another unfortunate thing is that 
with Upwork, they take fees on every payment. So they not only take fees from you, well, at least last time I tried it, they take fees from you from every time you make a payment to your employee. And they'll also make uh, take a payment from the employee as well. So it's always a beneficial if you want to move away from um, using Upwork and using online jobs or something like that. And I'll show you time trackers that you can use if you don't use uh, Upwork, okay? So if you have a look at Upwork, again, it's very simple. Um, all you got to do pretty much is just, um, you know, search what it is you're actually after for. You can hire people if we just go to, you know, post a job. Very easy. You just post it. You just go through this whole thing, such as if you want short term work, long term work, fill out exactly what it is you want people to do. Um, you'll get people applying for your job. And then from there, I'll talk you through the hiring process anyway, but I just want to show you what Upwork looks like for those who may not have used it before. Okay. Now, moving on to online jobs, onlinejobs.ph is a website which is purely only for Filipino VAs, and they have pretty much everyone on there. Uh, you will find that the wages on there are a little bit cheaper from what I know, and you get to work directly with the employee that you are talking with, meaning that there's no additional fees. OK, uh, online jobs, I believe it's a monthly um, subscription, but you can make as many hires as you want within one month and then cancel your subscription. So if you wanted to get tons of people just for, you know, hire for every job that you wanted to, at least then you've got all of the people there and then cancel after a month, you can totally do that as well. Um, the only bad and downsides of onlinejobs.ph is that there are lower quality people on there and you really do have to dig for the gold. So you, if you put out something such as a, a customer service VA for Shopify, you'll get probably like hundreds of uh, people actually applying for the job and you will have to go through them and fill out, you know, find out who's the gold and who's just a time waster, okay? Now to look at online jobs, this is just one that I have um, here. Obviously, again, this is just for uh, one that I had previously before for graphic design. And you have loads of people who just come in there, you just click on their name, um, go through, see what, see what they do. The most important thing is inside of these things, when you're putting out your job, um, is making sure that you, you know, you specify exactly what it is you want from that person. Okay, so if you are going to do that and use online jobs, um, you know, I always like to put things such as make sure you reply with your uh, your portfolio or your previous experience, uh, you know, links to your previous work, whatever it may be. And also, you know, um, let me know what your contact details are, because some people don't even put those in there. But that's where to hire, right? Now, talking about the actual hiring process, this is the process that I personally like to do. And a lot of people say you want to hire slow and fire fast. Um, you know, that is one thing that you, you do want to try and do as best as possible. So, First and foremost, you have your job offer. And when you drop off, I've kind of briefly touched on this, but you want to make sure that you cover inside of there the job spec, the skills that are needed the, for the person that's actually needed as well. So if that's specific things such as um, knowing how to use DS's app or knowing how to use Klaviyo app, or if it's a video area, for example, knowing how to use Canva or knowing how to use uh, Photoshop or Premiere Pro, whatever it may be, you want to put your specific skills needed in there. They're the technical skills, but you also want to put in the skills which are personal skills, such as, you know, you need to be um, uh, hungry to, to learn more. You also need to be, for example, uh, you need to be hungry. You need to also be able to work on time. You also have to be meeting deadlines. You also have to be intuitive, whatever it may be. Your communication has to be great. So you want to specify between skills needed, which are personal and technical, and also the job role. So, you know, what are they doing on a daily basis? And, and kind of only just have one or two sentences of what that is would be. If that's just handling customer emails using G Suite or it's developing, um, you know, coming up with creatives for Facebook ads or TikTok ads, whatever it may be, put that in there. Now, once you actually put the job offer out and you get applicants in, you then need to obviously shortlist. Now, your shortlist can be very large or, or very small, depending on how the volume of replies that you actually get. Um, but you want to shortlist the people who have potential and experience. And when I say potential, um, I give this example of people who are video editors. Let's say, for example, they haven't actually done any Facebook video ads before, but they've sent you some information and they sent you some previous examples of stuff which looks cool so the editing and those kind of things are really really good but they just haven't done facebook ads as such if that's the case then they have potential because training them um we'll talk about training but you know training them is something that you can do you can always do loom videos and, and sops and and all that kind of stuff you can give them the training the most important thing is that they have the potential and they have the uh, the, the skills as well 
Moving on from that is obviously you always want to give them a trial task. This is something that I always like to do. And that's just as simple as, again, you can do this to all of your shortlist or a few of the shortlist who are the best. And basically you just give them um, you know, a, a trial task, which is like a small task, not something crazy or anything like that. Give them an SOP, which is a standard operating procedure or shoot them a loom video just to show you, show them what it is they exactly need to do and what attention they need to pay to, because this is going to separate out a lot of people. Some people will very much pay attention to detail and other people won't. And you'll be able to see who first and foremost has paid attention to all of the things, who's got it correctly and who obviously has performed the best out of all of those. Then it's obviously a case of hiring the best person out of that. From there, placing them on a probation period, which essentially is like one or two weeks probation period, whereby you can still cancel at the end of that two weeks. They can also walk away as well, but that is just to see how they perform, if they fit into the business, if their communication is great and that kind of stuff, because you don't really know how it's going to pan out until you actually work with someone on a, on a uh, sustained basis. And providing they obviously do well from there, then of course you can move forward and make uh, a permanent hire, okay? Now, first and foremost, there's some things which are like what to outsource. Now, if you are a beginner, um, and even for most people actually who run dropshipping, you don't have to have a big massive team. That's the great thing about dropshipping. You don't have to have this big massive team and and uh, you know loads of different departments. You can get complex, but obviously your wage bill um, every single month and overheads will go up. So keeping it lean is what I personally like to do. If you're a beginner, again, which 90% of you people probably are, the first thing and the needed thing is going to be your customer service and outsourcing that, right? That's gonna be the first thing you need to do. Um, moving on from that is obviously a video editor. If you wanted to, if you're already good at doing video ads, then you know feel free to just continue to do them yourself. But when you get to a point of scale and you are needing creatives all of the time, instead of you, again, delegating, putting time into uh, Premiere Pro or you know CapCut or whatever it is doing these, you want to obviously outsource that and have a video editor, uh, you know, knock those creators out for you. You just literally just give them the brief or maybe the captions and say, hey, I need it to look like X, Y, and Z. Here's an example, go ahead and do it. So they're nice to have, again, if you're a beginner. If you're upscaling, you probably need one of those. Now I've personally hired these two before, a product uploader and a product researcher, but they are really not recommended. I've fired both of them and I don't use any of them. The reason being is because you can have them, but if you're gonna just use a Filipino VA, um, Again, if you're spam testing, then video product uploader, you know, may be beneficial. But if you are someone who, which what I personally recommend and what we recommend anyway, for you to take your time and only really be testing anything from like three products to five max a week, probably three products a max, three, four products a week max, that is. Because if you are putting time into every single product that you that you test out, you're not going to have enough time to, you know, spam test three products a day. It makes no sense whatsoever. And you're just going to burn and lose money. So a product uploader, again, they're just really wasting your time. And um, they're not going to be quality. You're going to have to double check things anyway. So again, not recommended. Um, this is coming from experience of someone who's done this as well. I recommend you do it yourself, build out your product pages yourself and those kind of things. Product researcher. Again, I have had a product researcher previously before. Again, fired them because they were feeling just trash products. And um, really you can find products yourself and, and it's always good that you build up the muscle because it's like going to the gym, the better that, the more that you actually do and the repetition that you do inside of the, the business, actually going out and finding winning products and doing the product research yourself, you get better at spotting winning products or you get spotting at understanding why something actually worked. So again, not recommended to have a product researcher. Now, final one is obviously a graphic designer. If you're already good at graphics or you know, you're not doing anything which is heavy graphic intended, then again, it's just nice to have. You don't have to have one. Um, but again, if you are, are doing a lot of static ads, like having a video editor, if you've got a brand and you are doing static ads, so they're image ads, and you need to do multiple different um, creatives and changes and those kind of things, then obviously you're gonna need a graphic designer to be able to pump out those creatives on a consistent basis rather than you just sticking your head in Photoshop or Canva, right? So moving on to the softwares that you need and the softwares that I personally use, there are many different ones that you can use, right? Um, but I'll just show you some of these ones uh, and talk through them. So first and foremost, obviously G Suite. So if you are handling emails and you're using your G Suite, then if you're a beginner, it's always good to just use and stick to that. Now, 
My team personally uses Reamaze, which is an email software. And essentially what it does is it allows us to have all of our multiple stores all in one place, meaning that we can have the whole team just on one place and not multiple different G suites. Everyone can, all of the stores are just, you know, there, they just click on them, see the store inbox. They can reply. It's got like, um, you know, automated, not auto, yeah, automated things. You can also, uh, label stuff. You can also have, uh, templates, which are like canned responses, but you can do a lot of that stuff kind of like in G, G suite as well. So if you're a beginner, you can use that. And again, Reamaze isn't the only one that's out there. There are a few others. It's just a case of, um, looking and comparing them, but Reamaze is the one that I personally like to use. Um, Loom, so you would lo use Loom to record training videos for your team. Like I've mentioned, I'm using Loom right now. It's very easy just to record your screen, talk about certain something, people understand what it is you're talking about. There's clarity in everything. And again, you don't have to do any mad editing or anything like that. Send them the link and then they can watch it. They can take action. Boom, Bob's your uncle, okay? Now, the other one is obviously Trello. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Trello, but Trello essentially, again, these are all, you don't have to use all of these. You can use some of them, et cetera, but Trello is one that I, uh, I do like to use for various different things, but you can set up different boards, um, for again, another, another example of this is like notion. So people, I know I've not put notion on here, but notion is like another kind of like software that you can use. Uh, basically you just set up boards and it's easy to track. I'll, I'll show you an example of one of my boards. Um, so this is just one that I use for my short form content. Um, basically I've invited my short form video editor. I come up with a video idea, which will be on there or he will, uh, once the video is ready for review, we would move it along into, uh, this one. I would review it. If there are any changes that are needed, again, I'll move it to there along with a link with what I need changing on it. He'd make the changes if it's posted, boom. So again, you could do something like this and set it up for your product research. You know, you could have, um, product here product uploaded, video done, um, you know, tested or something along the lines of that. Right. So yeah, Trello is very, fairly cool. Um, I like it. So another one is work snaps. Now work snaps, like I've mentioned, if you remember back to Upwork and time tracking of people, of your employees, work snaps is one that you can use. You can use time doctor. There's, there's quite a few out there actually. And it's just a case of tracking the time of your employees. Um, if you've not hired them through Upwork. So you don't have to worry about that. And the final one obviously is Google drive. Everyone knows how to use Google drive. Um, I'm shooting this on a Google slides, you know, so it's just a case of creating sheets, documents, um, anything like that, any standard operating procedures, you just use Google docs. Okay. Now team communication. So there's various different ways you can communicate with your team um, and how you want to do things. I personally, most of the time still use Skype here and there, just in case, because most VAs already have Skype. You can also have Skype video calls. You can also have Skype voice calls when you need to. So, you know, we have like a weekly call with all of the team just to see what's doing, we'll see what's happening, review, et cetera, and go from there. Um, you can create groups in there as well. So if you do want to have your VAs inside of there and also have your supplier inside of there as well, so that they can communicate with each other. That's what we personally do as well. So, you know, if there's, um, you know, something that hasn't been delivered yet or whatever it may be, then the customer VAs who are handling customer service can check with the supplier. What's the issue? Does it need to be recent, et cetera, without me getting involved? Right. So that's what you want to do to try and minimize the amount of involvement that you have in, um, that kind of mundane stuff. The other one is obviously Slack. Slack is, um, a lot more advanced, uh, it's for like bigger teams, more, more complex teams. If you want to, you can also use different channels for different kind of chats if you wanted to. Um, and obviously discord, Discord's kind of like the same as Slack, but Slack's more like corporate, if that makes sense for businesses and discord's kind of like for gaming and, you know, degenerates here and here and there. Um, but you can set up a private server if you wanted to and just set up different channels uh, for different parts of the business if you wanted to. Okay. Now, one thing I need to say before I wrap this video up is the, um, the, 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 the dilemma that you may face. And that is that you are not the best person to do every job. And I was in this position myself, which was when I was first and foremost doing things, I thought that I was the best person to do it and that someone would screw it up. They would make everything go wrong, uh, you know, would go bust. And I had a fear of giving up control. However, if you want to grow, you need to lose the fear of giving up control because if not, then you will not grow. So trust me, there are people out there who can do just do the job just as good as you, if not better. 
And if you train them the correct way, there's no reason why they cannot replicate the job that you are doing. So that is it. Hopefully you got some value from this video. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, okay. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to use credit cards. Okay. And, um, you know, this is going to be very helpful because especially when I first got started, I never really understood about credit cards and you're not kind of taught anything like this on how to leverage credit cards, why they are actually a good thing, um, you know, and how you can utilize them in your business at school or at business school or anything like that. Because again, um, let's not talk about the matrix and all that kind of stuff, right? But what we're going to do is talk about, you know, why you should be using credit cards in your business. Okay. So, you know, you got to think of it this way. If you are going to spend the money anyway, right, it's always good to put it on a credit card and not a debit card for a number of reasons. And I'll talk about those in a moment in time, but you got to remember you have to spend money anyway, right? So if you, if that is spending on subscriptions, if that's spending on, you know, your subscriptions for your Shopify apps or any of the spy tools that you have, whatever it may be, or, you know, obviously a bulk of your payments are going to come for adverts, right? You're going to be spending money on adverts. You have to spend that money. So it makes no sense putting it on a debit card when you can put it on a credit card for a number of reasons. I just want you to first and foremost understand that concept because that was something that I personally didn't understand to start off with. Okay. So let's talk about the actual benefits of first and foremost. These are just the two main benefits. There are like some other ones as well. There's two hidden ones that I'll kind of talk about, but these are the main benefits of utilizing credit cards. The first one is points. So Every time you spend on a credit card, now this isn't every single credit card. I'll talk about the credit cards that I use. Again, it will vary depending on which country you are in, which will obviously de determine how, you know, what you can get access to your credit report and, and all that kind of stuff. But I'll show you the ones that I personally like to use as well that I recommend. Um, but essentially you can get points and obviously the most notorious ones on, I wouldn't say notorious, but the most, um, Frequently ones that are used and that most people know about is Amex, which is American Express. So if you put your advertising spend on these credit cards, you're going to get points. And if you're here in the UK, we only get one point um, per pound spent. Sometimes they give you offers. Like if you join, you can get 10,000 for joining. Um, if you hit a certain goal, they'll give you, you know, an extra 10,000 points. I know sometimes in the America, in the States, America, uh, American Express, you can get like 3x points so like three points for every pound that you spend for every dollar that you spend up to a certain cap right but essentially you want to put this put your spend on um on your on your amex card and you're going to get these points now what you can do those points is you can redeem those points for multiple different things uh, the most common that you get the most value from and i'm not the best at utilizing points honestly i've got like probably 2 million points and I, yeah, like I haven't used them at all, but I know a lot of people, you may hear people saying that they travel for free, quote unquote for free. And how they do that is essentially they're spending, they're putting all this business expenditure on these cards and then they are taking the points and redeeming it for flights and hotels because you get a better deal. You could upgrade to first class. You can um, get, you know, upgrade your room and, and all that kind of jazz through points. You can also do things such as like, I think you can, you know, get some sort of cashbacks. You can get gift cards and pay Amazon, whatever. There's, there's loads of different jazz that you can do, but essentially points. Okay. You're going to spend the money, get the points, use the points for whatever the hell you want to do. Now, the other thing, and the other main benefit is obviously cash flow, right? So you got to remember one thing you get, when you have a credit card, it's obviously credit, which means that you are given the money and you pay off certain time in the future. Um, so this helps with obviously cash flow right? So you get like 30 days, most of the time, 30 days to pay off the card um, in full or a minimum balance. I personally like to pay it off in, in full rather than a million, minimum balance because it can just build up. Um, but essentially you get those 30 days and, and that means that you can spend upfront, okay, and then pay off late, later once you have the funds from your processors, your fees have been deducted and all that kind of stuff. So it helps ease your cash flow. And especially if you have any sort of holds or rolling reserves or anything like that in your PayPal account or in your Stripe accounts or Shopify payments, then, you know, these are going to having that cash flow and any extra cash flow that you can have on hand is going to help you out massively. Now, there are two hidden benefits of obviously using credit card. The first one is protection. So, you know, if you do have, if you do, just, you know, you spend on something and you do get scammed, then you can always do a charge back through your credit card company provider and nine times out of ten you will get that back if you use a credit card now the other hidden benefit is of course um your credit score now credit is very important to have if you have a good credit core you credit score you can have access and leverage other people's money 
like the bank's money or your provider. Um, again, there's good debt, there's bad debt. And when you understand how debt works, right, all money pretty much is debt, like foreign currency, um, you know, the, the reserves, Federal Reserve and all that kind of stuff. We're not going to get into that. That video is not, this is not a video about that. But essentially, you know, there's good debt and bad debt. And when you learn how to have a good credit score and all those kind of things, it helps you to get access to much more larger amounts of money so you can have a lot more leveraged plays in life, right? So um, which cards to use, right? I can only really talk about the cards that I personally use because again, I'm not from America and I don't have access to things like Chase Bank and, and different credit cards like like that. But I know some people like, like Chase is Chase Bank, you can get you know credit cards using that. I think they have a points reward system as well. Um, you know, you can get a local bank one, but I don't think you get like, points from it but if you're in a first world country then nine times out of ten you can get access to american express right so the cards that i personally have myself uh, they've got different ones they've got like a, a normal card the gold card and a platinum card i personally just have the gold cards uh, i don't really see the point in having um the platinum i know some people do have them just to flex and say you know um hey i got a platinum card it's 650 annual fee um, but I personally don't use the benefits of this enough to justify me having a platinum card. The gold cards personally work fine. Um, and I, you have this, I have this one here and I use those ones. You can also have supplementary cards as well, which means that if you, you know, if you got, if you want to add on a parent, a sister, whatever it may be, you can get an extra card and it will go through that one account. So again, when you're running Facebook ads and you know, one card maybe get flagged or anything like that, you can then order another card and um, start spending on another ad account to protect yourself. Okay. Um, the other cards that I do have as well. So if I go on to, um, if I go back uh, cards and click on it, the these two here. So because obviously I've got accounts in Euro dollars, and I also have accounts where I spend dollars as well. I do have these two cards. So again, you can have the gold ones and the platinum one on here. But personally, I uh, the one that I have is not on here, but it's just a green card. It works just as fine. Um, I wonder if I can actually find it. Uh, basic card. Maybe it's personal supplementary cards. View all business cards. It might be one of these ones. Um, there it is there. So the international currency card is the one that I have. Again, you can get it in gold if you wanted to, but personally, like I mentioned, I don't really, especially when I'm spending dollars, I don't really see the leverage. Maybe I've missed something, but personally, I just have these ones. I have this one in a US dollar and I have it in a Euro as well. But again, I have card members, which are also supplementary cards. So I have about four of these US dollar ones and I have about four of these, which are Euro cards, which I can use, um, you know, for different ad accounts and stuff like that. But there are the two cards that I have. You get points for all of these different cards as well. And like I mentioned, I've got like close to 2 million points. You can rack them up. You can use them. If you're a person who likes to travel a lot, um, they come in handy. I don't think they expire, at least to my knowledge. I've had these ones for many years now. Um, but at least then you can just use them as and when. So hopefully you got some value from this and you now understand why to use credit cards and which cards to get. Um, I hope you got, you got some value from this video. Take care and I will see you in the next one. So guys, I hope you did enjoy this six hour long free Shopify course. If you did, all we literally ask is that you go ahead and leave a like and a comment and potentially share it with a friend or family member that you think it will help. And if you did want help implementing any of these strategies into your own dropshipping journey, you can go ahead and book a call directly with us using the first link in the description. I will also leave timestamps in this video so you can go ahead and click on the parts that you need. But that is all for today, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.